بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته hope uh, all the brothers and sisters are doing well uh, our guest uh, esteemed guest uh, Sheikh uh, Muhammad Imtiaz is here as well with us Alhamdulillah uh, Ustad Adnan will be joining us uh, very soon and also Dr. Imran um, he who is still at work he'll be joining us straight after his work so it's just the four of us today inshallah and uh, we'll uh, continue from our stream last Saturday so obviously that's a big topic uh, when we're dealing with uh, the, uh, the Ahmadis and their ties with the colonialist British Raj at that time. And also um, Brother Imtiaz wants to deal with uh, obedience to the Prophet as well today. So I'll pass it on to uh, Ustad Imtiaz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ashim bhai and all the viewers. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So Alhamdulillah, it's again an honor and a pleasure uh, to be part of these, mashallah, these great uh, streams. And uh, as Hashim Bhai mentioned, inshallah, uh, when Adnan Bhai will be joining very soon, we'll continue with the same subject as we have from the last stream, that how Mirza Ghulam was obedient and he was loyal to the colonizers. And inshallah, uh, in the meantime, when Brother Adnan is joining, because we want to you know, go on the topic when Adnan Bhai is here because that's his speciality. MashaAllah is a qualified historian, Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, in the meantime, uh, because the second part of the stream, which is today's stream, is that we want to show people and we basically want to ask the Ahmadiyya clergy that in which area Mirza Ghulam was obedient to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because when we read his books and what we find is he was actually disobeying and going against the Quran and Sunnah and the understanding of the scholars of this Ummah. So we really can understand that when the Ahmadi clergy, when they say that he was obedient, what it actually means. So inshallah, in our turn, we'll present our case that there's no such thing that he was obedient to Quran and Sunnah. And inshallah, then we will see that how the Ahmadiyya clergy respond to this and what they have to present as their case for the obedience of Mirza Ghulam. So let's inshallah begin. Hashim Bhai, uh, if you can please uh, display the file I just sent to you. Yeah, it'll take me some time so you can continue. So okay, inshallah, no. just, just want to say apologies for the bit of the delay today and also want to say to for everyone, all the brothers and sisters to make dua for the for our brothers and sisters in Palestine who are undergoing a terrible situation and oppression that uh, many of us can even can't even imagine. So please keep them all in your duas, uh, inshallah. And uh, we uh, we pray that Allah makes their affairs easy and gives them help from the ghaib, which is something really possible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, yeah, I love for that. So inshallah, you can continue on just by. So uh, basically, uh, brothers and sisters, I want to mention something as a principle. And that is when it comes to obeying Quran and Sunnah or obeying Prophet Muhammad the main thing is disobedience would be in which areas? Disobedience would be either in the area of worshipping, for example, prayer, fasting, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking Allah's forgiveness, these acts of ibadat, or it would be in the mamilat, in the, in the dealing, okay, how people deal with each other, and especially with the close family, with the wife or husband and the children. And what we see is that in all of these areas, we, do not, we don't see any such thing where Mirza Ghulam was obeying or having any sort of obedience. And secondly, when it comes to obeying the Quran, I would say that, for example, Quran has given us a criteria that if something is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is one necessary condition that has to be fulfilled. And that condition is that this must not have any contradictions. And obviously, there should not be any lies in that because if something contains clear lies or if something contains clear contradictions, this thing cannot be according to the Quran. So what we find is Mirza Ghulam was actually, when we go through his writings, 
in we cannot find to be honest any area in which he is not contradicting quran or where he is not lying against the quran this is the case we'll present we'll present it to you but then we'll let you decide that i was just making the allegations or is it true for example inshallah hashim bhai will be, uh, will be playing on the screen as well i just want to inshallah go through that very quickly for example first of all uh, i want to tell you something that mirza ghulam himself he said and he basically gave us a criteria okay and he said that jhoothe ke kalam mein tanaqus zarur hota hai this is ruhani khazain volume 21 page 275 he said that speech of a liar necessarily contain contradiction he also said in one place and this is again uh, this is ruhani khazain volume 22 page number 191 he said is shakhs ki halat ek makhbootul hawas insaan ki halat hai ke ek khula tanaquz apne kalam mein rakhta hai he said he is like an insane person whose speech contained explicit contradictions so according to mr gulam himself is somebody's speech is contradictory okay he is a liar and he is insane now inshallah we we'll let you decide that the the example we want to present today is this speech in this case of mr gulam ahmed is he contradicting himself or not or is it contradictory or not and obviously it's very simple criteria if we present a case in which we can show to you and you can clearly see that his speech is contradictory then according to his own standard it will prove that this he is a liar he is a insane person it is not us saying all of that because this is the criteria given by mirza ghulam himself right now let's inshallah see Hashim, is it ready to inshallah display on the screen? Yeah, which one you want to show first? Uh, the one uh, I just uh, mentioned, maybe not. You sent two. That's why. Yes. Uh, the first one or the second one? Yes, I sent you message already. Okay. It's on the so screen. So basically, brothers, these are the reference and sisters in which I just quoted that this is the criteria. given by mirza gulam ahmed that if a person is truthful his speech must be free of any contradictions right secondly if a person is not a liar his speech should be free of contradiction if a person is a is a sound minded person not a insane its speech should be free of contradiction inshallah ashim bhai please put the next page please Okay, now, inshallah, in this case, uh, basically, this topic we have addressed in the past as well. But I want to bring some new examples so you can see. For example, nobody can deny if there is one subject Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has been addressing throughout his life, and that subject is the death of Isa alayhi salam, because this was the core of all of his claims. Because his claim is based on this thing. that sayyiduna isa alay salam has passed away mazallah okay this is the foundation of his claim now let's see in this particular instance in this particular thing when he is addressing the issue of death of isa alay salam how he has been contradicting himself last time we showed to you that with regard to his grave sometime he says in kashmir sometime he says it is in balad sham or it is in galilee right now look at one this one today ruhani khazain volume 14 page 388 hazrat isa alay salam ki umar 120 baras ki hui thi muhaddisin ne is hadith ko awwal darja ki sahi mana hai aur koi jira nahi kiya gaya he says isa alay salam lived how many years 120 years and muhaddisin the scholar of hadith have accepted this as a top grade or top graded hadith okay and no criticism against this one so in this one he what is saying that sayyiduna isa alay salam he lived how many years 120 years look at statement b 
احادیث اور معتبر روایتوں سے ثابت ہے کہ ہمارے نبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا کہ مسیح کی عمر ایک سو پچیس برس کی ہوئی ہے روحانی خزائن والیوم ففٹین پیج ففٹی فائیو ان دا حدیث اینڈ ریلائبل ٹریڈیشن اٹ از پروون دیٹ آور پرافٹ محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ دیٹ مسایا عیسا ابن مریم لیوڈ ون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ٹوینٹی فائیو ایئرس پریویس ریفرنس واز ون ٹوینٹی ناؤ اے سیز ون ٹوینٹی فائیو لیٹس کیپ موونگ دین اے سیز ان روحانی خزائن والیوم ففٹین پیج نمبر فور ڈبل نائن اے سیز پھر اس کے بعد پنجاب کی طرف آئے ہو عیسا علیہ السلام اور کوہ سلیمان پہ ایک مدت تک عبادت کرتے رہے اور سکھوں کے زمانے تک ان کی یادگار کا ان کی یادگار کا کوہ سلیمان پہ کتبہ موجود تھا آخر سری نگر میں ایک سو پچیس برس کی عمر میں وفات پائی اور خانیار کے محلہ کے قریب آپ کا مقدس نظار کشمیر ان محلہ خانیار He says that, this is by the statement C. پھر اس کے بعد جو خبر آج ملی ہے یہ تو ایسی خبر ہے کہ گویا آج اس نے مسلمانوں کے لیے عید کا دن چڑھا دیا He is saying that the news he has received today, this is the day of Eid for the Muslim. What happened? اور حال یہ ہے کہ حال میں اور یہ, اور یہ کہ حال میں بامقام یروشلم پترس ہواری کا دستخطی ایک کاغذ پرانی عبرانی میں لکھا ہوا دستیاب ہوا ہے جس کو کتاب کشتی نو میں شامل کیا گیا ہے اس سے ثابت ہوتا ہے کہ حضرت مسیح سلیم کے واقعہ سے تقریباً پچاس برس کے بعد اسی زمین پہ فوت ہو گئے تھے اور کاغذ ایک عیسائی کمپنی نے اڑھائی لاکھ میں خرید لیا ہے کیونکہ یہ فیصلہ ہو گیا لسن کے فلی یہ فیصلہ ہو گیا ہے کہ وہ پترس کی تحریر ہے This is Ruhani Khazain, volume 19, page 103. He says, at the end, is tarah Isa alayhi salam, tarasi saal ki umar mein, ki ki umar tarasi saal hui. Please listen very carefully. He is saying that one of the disciples of Isa alayhi salam, his writing has been discovered, and then he is saying that it has been, because the writing was very credible, it has been purchased. by a Christian company for 250k. Please pay attention. He is saying these things more than a century ago. You can say that this was purchased in million of rupees by a Christian company. And then he says, why this was the case? Because now it, because it, this, the writing was proven. Pay attention. The writing was proven to be the writing of one of the disciples of Isa Islam. And in that writing, the disciple says that Isa alayhi salam died at the age of 83. Are you listening? 83. Okay. This is Ruhani Khazain, volume 19, page 103. One more reference. Okay. Re- with regard to this 83 year reference, I want you to listen this last point very carefully. He says that Hazrat Isa ke sab se buzurag tar hawari ki shadat hai. He says that this testimony is the testimony of the most, you can say, trustworthy and elderly disciple of Isa alayhi salam. Which testimony? The testimony that Isa alayhi salam died at the age of 83. He says this testimony is the testimony of the most reliable elderly disciple of Isa alayhi salam. And when he said it was in 1902. Okay. And this is uh, the same book, same page, Wali, uh, Rohani Khazain, volume 19, page 104. Okay. Now, I want all of you to please, you know, listen this point very carefully. Was there anything what I presented which was ambiguous? That's first question. And what, what I presented, he says, Isa Islam died at the age of 125, 120, 83. Okay, now if I, inshallah, that on the next page, is, it going to be even more confusing. Okay, but let's keep it here and look at this one. Ashimba, yes, yes. He says that on the next page, 
and look at this one now how it's going to be more confusing are you my next page please yes this one yes this one so look look for the sale he says that uh, on this next page ke uh, imam malik which is the one of the four imam and please listen this point very carefully who is imam malik the same imam malik ahmadiyya clergy and mirza gulam has has been quoting for more than a century and they are bringing a quotation from imam malik that isa salam has died right what he said according to mirza gulam ahmad look look at this one imam malik ne kaha ke isa mar gaya first of all this is not the language of a decent good muslim okay isa mar gaya subhan what is this language and then he says aur wo 33 baras ka tha jab fot hua ruhani khazain volume 8 page 294 he said imam malik rahimahullah said that jesus or isa died when he was of the, of the age of 33 okay look at the next one this next one is ruhani khazain volume 19 page 104 waqia e salib ke waqt hazrat isa ki umar 33 saal aur hazrat pitrus ki umar us waqt 30 40 saal ke darmiyan thi I quoted this reference for a reason. Okay, listen what he said. He said that at the time of the event of crucifixion, Jesus was of the age of thirty-three. Now let's look at the next reference. Or a hadith me. Ah, sorry. He says that. Ah, uh, ah, uh, yes. okay maybe i forgot to put that here but let me let me say what he said but i will bring there no problem okay the reason i quoted this one this was when i quoted the previous reference in which he said 83 in that one he is quoting the 33 when he was crucified and then is adding few more years to make it 83 basically he proved that how he he made 83 so now look at the summary now okay what we presented he says isa alayhi salam at the time of death his age was 120 his age was 125 his age was 83 and he says imam malik says his age was 33 all of these are in front of you now you tell us which one of all of these was from allah and i want to end this case with the quotation of not anybody else mirza gulam ahmed now i have to read this one because mirza gulam has mentioned this okay listen what he said ruhani khazain volume 21 page 292 it's going to be very bitter but i have to read this because it is not my opinion it is not what i am saying it is mirza gulam himself saying he said aisa aadmi जो हर रोज खुदा पे झूठ बोलता है आप ही एक बात तराशता है और फिर कहता है कि खुदा की वही है जो मुझको हुई है ऐसा बदजात इंसान तो कुत्तों सूरों और बंदरों से भी बदतर होता है फिर कब मुमकिन है कि खुदा इसकी हिमायत करे आई नो दर्ल्डिंग इज वेरी हार्श वेरी हार्ड इट इज नॉट मी इट इज द प्रॉफिट सो कॉल्ड प्रॉफिट the alleged prophet of jamaat ahmadiyya mirza gulam himself okay so don't be angry at me i'm just quoting his text okay what he said he said that a person who every day lies upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he manufactures something he fabricates something and then he says it is a revelation from allah then he says such a person such a person is worse than dogs pigs and monkeys and then he says then how is it possible that allah subhanahu wa taala will ever assist him or aid him now it is not our verdict it is the fatwa it is the verdict of mirza gulam ahmed that if somebody is saying and by, and and you know this okay we have quoted all of this in the past that when mirza gulam was writing this ruhani khazain what was his claim that he was receiving ilham and he he has the holy spirit all the time with him okay and allah will never leave him on mistakes 
remember all of those things which he has said about himself in the past in the light of that see this case that what was the age of isa alayhi salam when he died and what he said in the beginning if a person is a liar his speech will be contradictory is this speech contradictory or not you can decide and then all the fatwas all the verdicts he has given they are coming to mirza himself because there is no other option hashim bhai inshallah i'm done with this case Okay, now uh, there are few more cases, which is the second case. And like I said before, we have said in the past, as we said that Masi, ye to ye to Masi hai, jo apne vatan Galilee ja ke fourth ho gaya. Ruhani Khazain, volume three, page three five three. He said that this is Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, who died where in Galilee. Okay, then he said further. لطف تو یہ ہے کہ حضرت عیسیٰ کی بلاد شام میں قبر بھی موجود ہے اور تم یقیناً سمجھو کہ عیسیٰ ابن مریم فوت ہو گیا اور کشمیر سری نگر محلہ خانیار میں اس کی قبر ہے روحانی خزائن chapter uh, sorry volume 19 page 16 16 what he said he said that and have certainty be certain the isa ibn maryam has passed away and his grave is in kashmir mahalla khaniyar now in one place he says that his grave is in the greater syria in galilee then he says his grave is in kashmir mahalla khaniyar and in both of these books he never said that it that this is something you know i think it may be wrong or I'll, no when he was writing these books if you look at his lofty claims about himself you will be surprised that if if that is the case that allah will not leave him for a brief moment on mistake why he said this and i want to mention something very interesting once we presented this one of the ahmadi uh, uh, apologists he said that when mirza sahib said that his grave is in galilee and when he said his grave is in a kashmir this was his own research my dear viewers the prophet of allah they are not researchers if that is the case what is the difference between a prophet and a normal researcher prophets they don't conduct any research in the matter of religion okay this is a matter of religion death of isa alay salam is at the it is the cornerstone of the claim of mirza gulam ahmad and if this is the level of contradictions and lies in this area just imagine then what would be the the level of lies in the other areas because this was his main area quote and quote his main speciality okay and this is the case in that one and just by saying that he was conducting his research it is not a answer it is not a rebuttal it's basically you have put a question mark on the prophethood of mirza gulam ahmad that he was just a researcher he was saying things through his research he could be right he could be wrong then why should we listen to him why should we trust him why his research is better than other researches think about this okay let's inshallah have one more case maybe Hashim Bhai, the next one, example three. He says uh, in Rohani Khazain, volume, uh, volume 15, page 432. What he said? Mere dawe ke inkar ki wajah se koi shakhs kafir ya dajjal nahi ho sakta. He said that just because of denying or not accepting my claim. Whose claim? Mirza's claim of him being a prophet or a messiah or whatever. Okay. He says that if somebody denies my claim, this person would not become a disbeliever or an antichrist. He said this in volume 15, page 432. Now listen to the next one. Towards the end of his life, in volume 22, Hakikat ul-Wahi, okay? Volume 22 of Ruhani Khazain, page 185. What he said? He said, Dusre ye kufr, 
pay attention he is talking about someone he said that dusre ye kufar ke masih maud ko nahi manta he said such and such person this is a disbelief that this person is not accepting the claim of promised messiah one more reference same volume 22 page 167 he said har is shakhs ko jisko meri daawat pahunchi hai aur isne mujhe qabool nahi kiya musliman nahi hai can it be any clearer than this he said that any such person who has received my daawa my invitation of being a promised messiah and he or she still does not believe or accept me this person is not a muslim pay attention earlier he said that by not accepting my claim it will not make a person disbeliever then he said that if you receive my invitation my dawa my message and you reject it you are not a muslim clear contradiction right now these are the three cases from many 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 cases okay now i want to mention something very important on purpose on purpose we have not presented some of the references here on regarding these three cases you know why because we want ahmadiyya clergy to come and try to respond in their in, in their traditional way the way that they want to respond and then inshallah we'll bring those references and then we will be able to make it clear for the audience for the viewers that look how they are responding and it is not making any sense it is not solving any problem hashim bhai over to you okay jazakallah khair um ha uh, yeah so we are still waiting for uh, ustad atnan to join us uh, yeah. inshallah um i don't know do you want to open for q and a or you want to uh, ashim bhai uh, inshallah I, i let you decide for example uh, today we have because our topic is that he was going against the quran and sunna he was obedient to the colonizers but he was going against to the quran and sunna against allah and his messenger okay this was just one case inshallah we have many uh, such cases to present today for example that how he was clearly lying on quran and sunna how he, he how he it is clearly evident that he was financially dishonest he was academically dishonest in terms of misquoting other people his behavior with the family was not so nice so inshallah all of that is coming bashim bhai maybe uh, if you like maybe we can go case by case but sometimes it becomes difficult you know for example when the ahmadis they come then they will be maybe spending rest of their life you know to, to discuss and waffle around this topic and uh, not sure if we'll be able to even present rest of the things yeah i think uh, it'll be better if you uh, if we allow the Ahmadis to come in and we'll take one question at a time. Yes. So I think that's that's the best thing. Let's deal with one question, let them answer, yeah. and then we move on to the next question. Inshallah. And Inshallah. Uh, we'll we'll follow the same format where they've given two minutes. If they start yeah. waffling within the two minutes, uh, we will have to stop them, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, if they manage to answer within the two minutes, that's good. And if they Inshallah. haven't got enough time within the two minutes. they can always uh, continue in the next series of 2 minutes that they will be given yeah. but um, after the 2 minutes uh, mtas bhai will inshallah respond to that inshallah. and we discourage any of this machine gun tactics where you bombard someone with multiple questions or give yeah. multiple different points not related to the actual question yeah. and we will have to stop you Uh, as always yes one thing one thing yeah, i want to mention very important because you know many of the ahmadis they are still you know i'm not sure that if they are you know if they are seriously deluded or they just pretend to be blind for example they say that oh you just give us 2 minutes we are taking 2 minutes we give them 2 minutes as well so now it is equal for both side we just presented our case and any ahmadi who will come after this will take equal time Ashim bhai you are muted Yeah inshallah that's right So yeah uh, both the speaker and the uh, guest will be given a uh, two minute each inshallah inshallah But uh, yeah I mean it's it's always I've noticed that even with the two minutes they carry on 
discussing things which are not relevant to the actual question or even sometimes the topic. Yeah. So as uh, uh, MTS Asbhai mentioned earlier, the topic of today, even though it is uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and the colonial, uh, as a colonial prophet, to put it as a, obviously not literally, but uh, metaphorically, uh, but uh, you know what that means. Um, but that is the, um, it's it's not uh, MT Asbhai's uh, main topic today. It is a topic uh, which Adnan Bhai is going to tackle. So inshallah, as soon as he comes, we will deal with the part with the the British Raj in India and how the how Mirza Ghulam and his, uh, um, his followers actually dealt with or kind of obedient to the colonialists rather. So inshallah, we'll open the... Um, the Q and A for the Ahmadis. Uh, as always, we we stress on this point that the Muslims not join in yet. We will invite you as always at, uh, towards the end, and you guys can have your say then, uh, because these streams are mainly to deal with um, the mis uh, the missionaries. Uh, sorry, the the Ahmadis and the missionaries who come here amongst them. So, inshallah, we will give them the opportunity to present that case. Otherwise, it'll seem like it's just one-sided and uh, it's kind of a monologue. So we, we prefer to have a dialogue, a dialogue that's productive uh, and doesn't end up in waffling. So we are hoping that is the case today. So yeah, just give me a few minutes to put the link up. Uh, you can say something if you want him to ask me. Yes, Hashibai, I just wanted to mention this thing that whoever uh, Ahmadi, uh, you know, uh, apologist or scholar or, you know, wh whoever joins now, we, we have obviously many topics, but right now we have we have begun the live stream with one topic, and that is Mirza Ulam Ahmad's speech is contradictory. We have given example in the past. Today we gave three examples, and whoever will come first, we want you to engage with us on the first example, and that was regarding the age of Isa alayhi salam when he died. He said it was 125, 120, 83. Imam Malik Ahimullah, he quoted that it was 33. So we really want to know, first of all, is it contradictory or not, right? If it is contradictory, then which one of them is from Allah and which one of them is from Mirza himself? How would we distinguish? And when he said that if something is contradictory, that can not be a truthful speech. So I want you to engage on this first example of the age of Isa alayhi salam. Then inshallah we can move from there. Hashima, you are muted. So I've just pinned the link for the Ahmadis to join the Q&A. Uh, the Muslims, please do not join yet until we invite you, inshallah. So if there are any Ahmadis out there, the link is already pinned. You're welcome to join for the Q&A. So until they join, uh, Sadi Mtiaz, if you want to continue yeah. your topic, uh, you're welcome yes, to Yes, inshallah, this. brothers. I want to continue. And I want to mention, uh, I want to use this time, inshallah, before they join. Inshallah, once they join, I will stop talking. The point is this, and I want the viewers listen this point very carefully. I know it's my style, but this thing is very important, to be honest. The point is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the Qur'an muhaymin, guardian over all the previous scriptures, okay? Now, obviously we know that there were areas in which Christianity was wrong. For example, they made Isa alayhi salam son of God. They were wrong in this one, right? Likewise, they, uh, they, they adopted the belief of crucifixion and justification by faith, etc. They were wrong in this one, okay? And likewise, they are, for example, some of them, they attributed divinity to the mother of Isa alayhi salam, i.e. Maryam salamun alayha, right? Now, Quran has corrected them, and this is the key point. Quran has corrected Christianity on in all of those areas where they were mistaken, right? Now, I want you to understand and pay extra attention. Mirza Ghulam said in his books, he said that this belief, the, the belief that Isa is alive in heavens, 
this belief came in Muslims from Christians. And then he said that in one place, he said that all the four Gospels, they affirm this. In, in a, in a, and then he said in another place that two Gospels affirm, in, in any case, in any case. This is, according to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, the misconception of Christians. What is it? That Isa is alive in the heavens. Now, when Quran has corrected Christians on everything on which they were mistaken, such as Isa is the son of God, such as the crucifixion, okay, and the other things. Please quote to us one verse from the Quran in which Quran has corrected them that in the, on the topic of that Isa salam is not alive in heaven. Now, sometimes they say, oh, when they are Quran, there are 30 verses in the Quran which are on the death of Isa salam. Guess what? If the, even if the entire Quran is on the death of Isa Islam, please listen very carefully. Hashim Bhai, no, it, 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 you know, this, this is your field, Hashim Bhai. Christianity already believes that Isa Islam died. This was not a mistake. Quran does not need to educate them on the death of Isa because they already believe this. Okay, so their mistake was him ascended to heaven according to Gospel of Matthew and Luke, and then him, please listen, him being alive in the heavens. That's where they are mistaken. So don't mix, don't confuse the people by saying that when Quran clarifies his death, all is solved. No, they already believe in the death of Isa Islam. They don't need Quran for this particular case. They were mistaken about him being alive in the heavens. You need to provide us that where Quran corrected them on this particular topic. Okay, so it looks like uh, the Ahmadis are sitting out this topic. I think you scared them already. I guess, right? <laughs> Maybe they were waiting for Adnan. By Adnan is going soft on them or what? <laughs> Actually, my, just let me just uh, uh, put my charger on because my, my laptop's battery is dying. Just want to put the charger on, please. Okay, inshallah. So yeah, I mean, um, brothers and sisters, uh, please do subscribe to um, Ustad Imtiaz's channel. It is called Dialogue with Imtiaz. You'll find it on YouTube, inshallah. Um, so Imtiaz, bhai, tell us about your trip, uh, your recent trip, inshallah. Hashim, bhai, alhamdulillah, uh, our trip uh, was very successful. And by the way, alhamdulillah, we met many brothers who are, mashallah, the regular viewers in Melbourne and, in, uh, you know, of Dawa Wise channel. And many of them said salam to all the Dawah's team as well. And oh, alhamdulillah, they are many people of Allah. People are benefiting from the from the stream of Dawah wise, not only on this topic, on all the topics, alhamdulillah, all over the world. And uh, with regard to our uh, uh, trip, alhamdulillah, we had a very successful uh, engagement uh, with many of the uh, alhamdulillah mashaykh there with regard to our project, which I mentioned last time as well. Is a lighthouse a mentoring service, and inshallah, our plan is to make this a national service. And this was one of the reasons for the trip because we had a alhamdulillah a big convention of ulama uh, in in Melbourne, which was the week when we traveled. So we discussed the idea. Alhamdulillah, we made a we made a team of elders alhamdulillah from the ulama to guide us and to give us inshallah you know uh, more guidance that how should we go about this project. Alhamdulillah, we are very hopeful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make this project a global project because we need this. We need to help our youth so they can have strong Muslim identity. And inshallah, this project will serve. And this is the Sadaqa Jariya of Sapi Institute and Mr. Hamza Zawad and his team. Alhamdulillah, they are the ones who have this initiative. Alhamdulillah, we are learning from their resources. We sat with them to learn from them, inshallah, and will implement what they have taught us, inshallah. Okay, so I think the details are they available on your channel? Yeah, Just yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, Ashim, my Alhamdulillah, we are. Uh, I I want to thank the viewers. Alhamdulillah, we are very close to achieve our one thousand subscribers. Alhamdulillah, on this channel, and uh, I think uh, we are perhaps uh, forty nine, maybe left <laughs> to achieve our one thousand. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you can continue with your with your 
slides if you want. I don't think these guys are joining. No, I think I, I think uh, so. Is is there no Ahmadi in the audience uh, in in the in the chat or they don't want to join? Well, there are Ahmadis in the chats, but I don't think they have the guts to come on today. Okay, so inshallah, Ashim, why then maybe we can begin with the with the next uh, thing that is the lies. I send you the file about the lies of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, baby. We can inshallah begin that one. The other slide? Yes, yes. Okay, inshallah. This one? Yes, this one. So, uh, my dear viewers, in one sense, it is uh, the continuation of the same topic in which we are, and, and by the way, and some people may be thinking that how this topic is related with today's stream, I want to explain that because we have, today we want to compare two things, obedience of Mirza Ghulam to the British colonizers, and we will compare this one, that how obedient, how loyal he was with Quran and Sunnah. Okay, now inshallah, before Adnan Bai comes, I want to present something on this side. So, when Adnan Bai joins, then we can see that where he was more loyal and obedient to Quran and Sunnah or to the British colonizers. Okay, now look at this one. He says in a Ruhani Khazain, volume 19, page 98, Agar Quran ne mera naam ibn Maryam nahi rakha, to main juthaun. My dear brothers and sisters in humanity from Ahmadiyya and all the viewers, the matter is very simple. If there is any place in the Quran in which Quran has named Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as Isa ibn Maryam, he's a truthful. And if there's no such place, he said that I am a liar. And guess what? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We have millions of hufaz. And everyone who has read the Quran will testify, regardless of you are Ahmadi or you are a Muslim. You will testify to this thing that there is not a single verse in the Quran which names Mirza Ghulam Ahmad as Isa ibn Maryam. And what he said, if Quran has, na has not named me Isa ibn Maryam, I am a liar. So unfortunately or fortunately, we have no option but to say Mirza Ghulam was a liar. Because Quran has not named him Isa ibn Maryam. Okay, second example. He says in Rohani Khazain, volume 20, page 208. He says, Nabiyo ka is pe ittifaq tha ke masih e maud saatwe hazar ke sar pe zahir hooga. He says, it was the consensus. Ijma. Please note this word, Ijma. It was consensus of all the prophets that Messiah will come at the start of seventh millennium right it's a lie it is a lie okay and now you can maybe if you if if you you know remember what i said in my first video on my channel i said that oh ahmadiyya oh ahmadiyya clergy tell us how you establish ijma on anything i give you a simple example we have books from the earliest scholars and they have mentioned ijma on the topic that Isa alayhi salam is alive in heaven and he will descend. And then the Ahmadiyya clergy, they present one or two or three names and they claim there's no ijma. And look at them, look at them. Mirza is saying that it is the ijma of who? Of all the prophets. Ahmadiyya clergy, the platform is ready. Now you will come. First, you will tell us that what is your principle to establish Ijma, and then we'll give you ample time today to tell us and to bring the references that it is Ijma. Remember, you need to establish the Ijma on what? That Messiah will come in the beginning of seventh millennium. Okay? We'll see today that how you bring the reference for the Ijma of all the prophets on this topic. So, Ashim, my next page, please. Now, this reference we have presented in the past as well, but because it is related to today's topic. Okay, he said, Hadiths are soft on the top of the book. That the Messiah of Maud will be fulfilled. The time of the time will be fulfilled. And they will say, how is this Messiah? He has completely destroyed the religion of the religion. Rani Khazain, 
चैप्टर सेवनटीन सॉरी वॉल्यूम सेवनटीन पेज टू वन थ्री इट इज इन द फुट नोट एंड देन वन मोर रेफर ऑन द सेम टॉपिक इट इज रूहानी खजाइन वॉल्यूम सेवनटीन एंड पेज फोर जीरो फोर लेकिन जरूर था कि कुरान हदीस की वो पिशन गोइयां पूरी होती जिसमें लिखा था कुरान हदीस की पिशन गोइयां पूरी जिसमें लिखा था कि मसीह मऊद जब जाहिर होगा तो इस्लामी उलमा क्या तो दुख उठाएगा वो उसको काफिर करार देंगे इसके कत्ल के फतवे जारी करेंगे इसकी तोहन सख्त की जाएगी इसको दार इस्लाम से खारिज और दीन के तबाह करने वाला ख्याल करे किया जाएगा नाउ वेन दहमदी या कलर्जी कम टू रिस्पॉन्ड दिस वन वट दे नीड टू टेल एस they need to produce the reference from quran and from the authentic ahadith regarding what number 1 that the islamic scholarship they will mentally torture aziyat denge they will mentally torture the isa ibn maryam because we are waiting for who for isa ibn maryam so you have to tell us the hadith and the quranic ayah which says that islamic scholarship will mentally torture isa alaihi salam number 2 they will declare him a disbeliever and apostate show us the hadith and quranic ayah and number 3 they will they will say that the messiah isa ibn maryam is destroying the religion they need to show us and lastly they have to be giving a fatwa official verdict to kill isa ibn maryam Okay, inshallah, you need to produce this one. So, Ashim, by our uh, next page, please. Okay, it says that asa hi ahadis se sahiya me aaya tha, which ahadis authentic ahadis se sahiya ke Masih e Maud sadi ke sar pe aayega aur wo chhodvi sadi ka mujaddid hoga. He says that it is in the authentic ahadis that the promised Messiah for us is Sayyid Nabi Maryam. he will come at the beginning of 14th century and he will be the reviver a mujaddid of the 14th century this one is ruhani khazain volume 21 page 359 so now we have presented an other case and this was not just contradiction this was the case on clearly mirza gulam ahmed clearly lying on quran and sunnah the only way ahmadiyya clergy can prove it otherwise if they bring us the ahadees and the quranic ayat in which they can prove these claims sashim so, bhai inshallah one more case is there against mirza gulam ahmed now that's the last page yeah alhamdulillah this, uh, in this particular case this was the last page <laughs> no that was the last slide actually Yes. Yeah. You is there something else you want to present, or did you? Say Alhamdulillah, uh, we have now the uh, very strong case Hashim Bai that on his financial corruption. Do you want to continue, or somebody wants to come and respond? No, I don't think they are brave enough to come on today. So you can continue, Inshallah. Okay. Uh, sorry, are any Muslims joining in the back studio? Please leave now until we call you later. Thank you. Ashim Bai, then let me send to you this file, Inshallah, and then. you can inshallah bring that on the screen just give me 30 second it's coming to you inshallah that's fine yeah so those people who haven't subscribed to um ustad imtiaz's channel please do so uh the channel name is dialogue with imtiaz uh it'll be good for him to get at least a thousand subscribers so, so he can you know put things as notification on his um, community page and so on. Yeah, Hashim, bhai, I send you the file, inshallah, so we can present. Inshallah, alhamdulillah, we have many cases against Mirza Sa today. Inshallah, we'll go one by one. <laughs> inshallah. Yeah, I got uh, pages here. Just give me a few seconds. No problem at all, Hashim, bhai. Yeah. Please t- take your time. There is a person called Jabran waiting in the back studio, brother. We are not inviting the Muslims yet. Please join later. Appreciate your enthusiasm. It's only the Ahmed is being waiting now. Okay.
you will you be needing those two slides that you sent earlier uh you? yeah Hashima, i just sent you a, f a file just now maybe inshallah if you can put on the screens inshallah people can see what we are representing okay yeah i'm just uploading that Yeah, so any Muslims who are joining in the back studio, please uh, leave now and come back when we invite you. Right now, we are only taking the Ahmadis. So if you are a Muslim, come back later, inshallah. The real revolution. Are you an Ahmadi? If yes, can you just um, confirm that in the private chat? Okay, then you'll have to leave if you're not. All right, so I've got the slide here. Yes, inshallah. Once you're ready, inshallah, I'll begin. Yeah, it's ready. Okay, inshallah, brothers. Uh, before I start reading uh, this presentation, I want you to pay extra attention so you can understand the case. Now, what is the claim that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad he was the perfect reflection. Zille Atam. Uh, Ashimbai, is any. Is it okay, Ashimbai? My voice? Yeah, yeah, I can hear your audio. Okay. okay, okay. So I was saying that it is claimed by Mirza Ghulam and his followers that Mirza Ghulam was the perfect reflection. Zille Atam. Perfect reflection of Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and every single Muslim no matter how less knowledge he or she may have they know that there were two titles of our Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam number one a Sadiq and number two Al Amin the truthful one and a trustworthy one with regard to the truthfulness I have presented you the case already that this was the level of lying of Mirza Ghulam, not just simple lying, lying on Quran and Sunnah. And I have not presented so far, and I will inshallah very soon, where he has lied on the Islamic scholars as well. He was an academically dishonest person, I have to say. I have no other option because I have very strong evidence, and I am what I'm saying is, is based on the evidence, okay? not based on any biases and inshallah i'll present my case on that one very soon now with regard to him being truthful nobody can say that after we presented that case nobody can say that now what this very second quality al amin to be trustworthy if mirza ghulam ahmad was a perfect reflection of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he must possess these two qualities so truthfulness is definitely not there. Now I'll present to you, he was a financially dishonest person as well. Now look at this one. It's basically, uh, as you can see, uh, we got a, we, yeah. we have a Ahmadi in the back studio if you want to take them on. Ashim, maybe we can uh, do this, inshallah, then we can take him, maybe in five minutes. After five minutes, okay, go ahead. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. Yeah. So basically, uh, dear viewers, this one is a maktubat e ahmad It is a collection or compilation of the letters of Mirza Ghulam, which he was writing to different people. And this is second volume of his compilation of letters. And page number is 41 and letter number is 26. He is writing this letter to who? To the first caliph, Hakim Nuruddin. And he says to him, Aaj Nisaf. Aaj nisaf kata note paanch so rupaya pahunch gaya. Chunke mosa mein barsat hai, agar brahe mehrbani dusra tukda registry shuda khat mein irsal for maade, to inshallah kisi kadar etiyat se pahunch jave. And it, this letter was written on the 11th of July 1887. Okay, what he said? He said to Hakim Nuruddin, the first caliph, he said that today I have received Half piece, the half piece of what? Of a 500 rupee note. And then he said to him, 
it is the season it is it's a rainy season please send the other half as quick as you can so basically if it's raining and the letter comes it will become wet and the the half part of the 500 note a uh, rupee note it may be ruined or it may be destroyed so what he's saying is and what you need to understand is mirza ghulam ahmed he had a habit and the habit was he was sending uh, he, he was receiving money from the people not through the proper channel when you go to a post office you pay some charges and you can send your money it used to be the case it is still the case he wanted to save that money which you need to pay in order to send the remittances right so what he was doing is he was asking hakim nuruddin that rip the whole note into half send one half in one letter and then and, and then after some time send the other half in this way he can avoid those remittance charges which he has to pay otherwise i want you to ask your conscious okay is it financial corruption or not if somebody in today's britain britain okay if, if you are caught doing this would you not be penalized for this one think about this and somebody might say oh he just did this once for this reason i have collected multiple references this was letter number 26 look letter number 27 he says that aaj nis kata note 500 rupya bazriya registry should have pahunch gaya this was on the 26th of july when he received the other half okay and now uh, i have my next page please letter number 30 which was in october 1887 okay he says that note bhi pahunch gaye the. this time 240 rupees were sent by hakim nuruddin the first caliph to mirza ghulam he said that today i have received the rest of the part of 240 rupees okay and then same same maktubat letters compilation letter number 31 in this one he is saying that aaj nisaf kitat note 240 rupee a so this was letter number 31 30 then 31 what i'm trying to say is it was not a one off event this was the way mirza ghulam was receiving money from the people and in these cases from hakim nuruddin what was his way ripping the notes into half and receiving them in two transactions why to avoid the money the remittance charges which he has to pay otherwise so i want you to decide is it financial corruption or not all right shall we bring the guest in now uh hashim i uh i will need a uh, five minutes because i need to pray because time is short okay, yeah go pray and come back inshallah you can engage inshallah with the with them inshallah i'll come back in five minutes okay inshallah see you soon okay 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 Assalamualaikum alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. How are you, Hakwala? Uh, oh. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Good. I think you came before on our stream, did you not? No. Is it the first a, time? Yeah, I'm actually uh, I ordinary Muslim, not as learned as uh, other Ahmadis who have come before. But right. uh, I mean, I can basically, I wanted to ask some questions. Uh, right, so you're not a missionary like uh, Razi and all those guys. I mean, they are very learned people. You know the answers yeah. they gave. I mean, look at their their knowledge they have, how much learning they have done of the ahadis and the different uh, narrators, and you know, great knowledge. Well, uh, I hope that knowledge would help them on these streams because most of the time we have seen them just waffling. To, to be honest, uh, for with example, you know, the stream we did last um, last Saturday. There's an ayah in the Quran about uh, the uh, to, to believe in to obey Allah, the Messenger, and the Ulil Amr. Yes, which means the authorities amongst you, Ulil Amr minkum. Now they 
went to the extent of admitting that the monarch, you know, Queen Victoria at that time, during the Brit British Raj, they considered her to be one of the Oli Lamr. What do you say about that? I mean, I don't know how you can take the like a non-Muslim government out of that Ulul Amr part. Well, Allah I mean, says minkum. Ulul Amr minkum means from amongst you. So Allah says, uh, obey Allah, obey the messenger and the, the, the authority amongst you. It's very clear. Authority among you means authority which is on you. That could be a non-Muslim government. But the, the, the main thing is, the first is Allah. Then Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. If the government is not going against your uh, beliefs, is not against uh, Islam, uh, uh, is, uh, Islam uh, it's not against Allah or Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, then you should obey your government. So what that do you mean not against? What what exactly does it mean? Because obviously yeah, non-Muslims don't believe in Allah and the Rasul. And, and so by the way, against? sorry, what do you mean by not going against? The people in authority, I mean, Quran is specific. No, no, you said those people, as long as the non Muslims don't go against you, then they will be the only Lamb. So I'm asking you, how can you qualify this statement not going against you? Because those are your words. Like, for example, um, they don't allow you to preach, they don't allow you to uh, to practice your religion. Uh, they, they say, uh, you know, uh, they. they uh, you know, uh, put those kind of uh, prohibitions on you, and um, they they make you do things which are against Islam and uh, against Quran. And, okay. and actually, the, the the British government was very um, you know gave uh, you know religious freedom freedom. You know, right? That's, that's let me a... ask you. Let me ask you this: If Benjamin Netanyahu gives you the freedom to practice your religion, like you have a headquarters there. In Jerusalem, somewhere or nearby, would he be your Ole Lamr? Would he be your authority? Yeah, you to look up to? right. So, it's, it's uh, yeah, right now, we should look into Quran and Ahadith. We instead of you know using our minds and as Muslims, uh, you know, thinking, uh, you know, coming up trying to come up with our worldly things, we should look into Quran and Ahadith and we should see, you know. What are the remedies in, in such such situation, right? Uh, Quran never talks about we should never kill innocent people as Muslims, right? Uh, what does that got to do with my question? Nothing. I'm asking you because earlier you said you're okay as long as they allow you to practice your religion freely. So I'm asking you if Benjamin oh, Netanyahu, who is a prime minister of Israel, yes, who is oppressing the Muslims now, but the He's at the same time, you know, the, the Muslims who are in Israel, he lets them pray, lets them go about their daily life. Would he be your Holy Lamra? Would he be your authority that you will look up to and obey? If you had your own government and some uh, foreign invaders came and, you know, and, and took your country, you have the right to fight as an army against their army. And then yeah, but you don't have that. If you were in if you were in uh, Israel today, you don't have an army of yours as a Muslim. No, there is, or even as an Ahmadi. So, what are you going to do? Is he your? Um, it's a simple question, my friend. Would he be your Ulil Amr? Yes or no? I mean, you are making a hypothetical scenario. No, if, it's not a hypothetical. So, so it you're saying in, it happened in India? So you're saying where they so become you're saying the Amr. So you so think it's a similar situation? It's a non-Muslim government. In, yeah. in in Israel is a non Muslim was a non Muslim government in uh, during the British Raj. They, they, they during the British Raj, you accepted the monarch Queen Victoria as your only Lamur. But in this case, you're reluctant to answer now. Why? Because you are making a hypothetical scenario which is not clear. Even why not? Why can't we use hypothetical? It's quite logical to use because hypothetical because scenarios. You saying, okay, you are saying that there is a country. Which is accepted by Muslims. Muslims were living in it, were living in peace. Uh, and then Netanyahu is the prime minister. Is that what you're saying? Because that's not what. No, I'm going is. based on your standard. You said as long as no, they give you religious freedom, all. this was your standard. You're now I'm using all. the same standard to question this hypothetical scenario, if you want to call it, 
But now you're reluctant to answer because it has actually dismantled you, uh, you logically. You have realized this, and that's why you're hesitant to answer. Uh, anyway, I just want to welcome uh, Ustaz Adnan Rashid. Assalamu alaikum, Adnan Bhai. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah Good to have you on the stream. You okay? How is everything? Everything's good. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Which part of the world are you in? We can't keep track. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm in the westernmost part of the world. <laughs> okay, that's good, mashallah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if you were listening to the conversation with Hakwala, who is not an Ahmadi missionary, so I think it's a relief for us, in a way, to see some uh, fresh... Uh, I have a question studies. also. I need to ask one question as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Very important. If the Muslim's condition is... Uh, is in a very bad condition right now. Muslims are divided in so many sects, and it is according to the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. I, I was I was I was watching I was watching your program maybe yesterday or day before yesterday where some a Muslim came and you know complained about the condition of Muslims and that the the need to, for them to get united, right? Now you you responded that it's according to the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Now if Hazrat Muhammad peace be upon him had prophesied like that, and uh, would there not be any remedy prophesied? Do you think that the Allah Taala is not a living God now? Is 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 um what's the remedy? The Hakimul Azim, Allah Taala is Hakimul Azim. You were very easily saying that well, that's a prophe prophecy. That's why we are divided. That's how it's going to be. But wouldn't God or uh, would uh, wouldn't Allah Taala give a solution? Wouldn't it Allah yes. Taala give a remedy? He, he has he has given us a solution in the very same hadith where uh, the prophecy was made that my ummah will be divided in many different sects and then the sahaba immediately asked this question ya rasulullah what is the remedy what is the remedy and the prophet ﷺ said the people who are upon my path and your path will be safe people who will follow your example and my example will be safe so this is why the muslims who are strictly on the path of the messenger of allah and the the path of the sahaba okay they are safe they are not part of those sects and ahmadis are definitely not those people ahmadis are definitely not following the prophet and the sahaba because ahmadis came up with a new religion a new prophet okay and this new prophet came up with new ideas okay it's not that he just came and he said look everyone i'm here to confirm the Quran and Sunnah, so we stick to the Quran and Sunnah. Uh, therefore, follow only the Quran and Sunnah. No, he came up with new ideas. Okay, he started to change things. Okay, he kind of uh, changed a lot of things. Actually, if you read his writings carefully in the Urdu language, which most Ahmadis don't know, unfortunately, most young Ahmadis don't even know Urdu. Okay, they don't know how to read Mirza's writings. If they were to read Mirza's writings, they would no longer believe in such a person uh, how confusing uh, he was so the solution is in the hadith my brother is there okay um, the hadith is very clear on this is categorical so the remedy is there and when Ahmadis talk about Muslim Umar dividing in sex and uh, how is this going to unite or this Umar is going to unite but the Ahmadis are also divided in a number of different sects right there are Lahori's there are Qadiani's okay and within even the Qadianis, there are few different branches, okay? There are people who are breaking away from the Ahmadi Jamaat and forming their own uh, little uh, institutions, okay? So you are not any better if you use that card against us. And if you use the card of Khilafa against us, that you have a Khilafa, what Khilafa is it when your Khilafa is sitting in the UK, in England, okay? It depends on uh, a secular, liberal, secular country to protect his Khilafa. Okay, this Khalifa has no power. He has no influence in the world. He can't do anything. He can't change anything. He's powerless. Okay, on top of that, he's very ignorant of Islam. He can't even read the Quran properly. Okay, he doesn't know the basics of Islam. Okay, uh, he, when he speaks, even Urdu, uh, he sounds like he came from a village. Okay, so I'm not making this up. You know all these things. You know, your Jamaat knows more than anyone else the strengths and the weaknesses of your Khalifa. Okay, the guy can't even read the Quran properly. He's not even educated. And you've made it into some kind of religious guide, Khalifa, a Khalifa without power. Okay, a king without territory. So coming back to the main issue, which we have been discussing, 
ரிஜீம் uh that represented the cross by the way okay uh was mirza sent to break the cross you will say yes okay let me save time you will say yes mirza was sent as the messiah okay to break the cross okay but how did he break the cross if he gave his pledge of allegiance to the biggest representative of the cross uh, in the world queen victoria was the head of the church of england did you know that did you know that uh yeah uh i can i answer yeah you can answer yes okay so uh hazrat uh, mirza ulam ahmed al islam he broke the cross by this uh simple belief of uh, you know which we get from quran is that hazrat isa al islam has died after that you know they had no way out christians had no way out uh in that logical discussion with us and based upon you know uh, wisdom they, they have nothing left you know because if if we have a belief that uh, uh, hazrat isa al islam is sitting in the sky and we talk with christians and we say you know what happened to your intellect that you are believing in a human to be a, a god they will come back to you and say well what happened to your intellect you are th- thinking about a, a, a human living in the sky uh, so so then you know this we we can't we can't really win the argument okay I, we were I, able to win the argument by the true teaching which were brought back by uh, hazrat mirza ghulam mohammad al islam the true teachings which actually prophet mohammed peace be upon him had brought to us that is how the tisa al islam had died just like I, any other uh, I, i have a question what's what's wrong with uh, isa al islam living in the in the in the heavens in the skies alive because because then you lost you lose the beauty of islam you lose the how? beauty of the how? perfect perfection you lose the perfection how, how? how? You, you are having a belief which is contrary to your intellect which is contrary how? to, to how? the how to the how is it contrary to intellect how okay so the the intellect and 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 the wisdom and uh, i don't know what's the exact word uh, the logic right um that Islam is perfect in it. You have to understand the true yes. teaching has to be perfect in it. That tells us that religion is a true religion or not. The the perfect and that's how it impresses people. When prophet Yeah, but him, but how how is Isa alayhi salam living in the heavens alive for hundreds of years? How is that against intellect? How, how come a human being can live in a sky? how how he's how how he's eating how he's 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 uh, uh, you know okay have you read the quran i have read the quran and you know the story of the story of the people of the kahf the people of the cave yeah but how long did is, they live how is, long how long did they live without food eating that is drink? also that is also should not be taken literally okay. who said that uh there in big because and and this is something you can discuss with the uh, over um you know when our uh, missionaries come you can always discuss with them but they can t- explain you more however okay. i however, i i, Quran, I am Quran Quran has, no, you, have okay. to, you have to apply you have to apply it has to impress your intellect the per, it has to have perfection okay okay who, who has, because because it's a very important thing very important thing if uh, allah taala says that he is not going to go against his sunnah is the way he do things he's not going to against the sunnah where does he say that i i don't have the exact words but uh allah says he's ala kulli shay'in qadir find that i can find that if you want to find i can no, find no i i want you to no i look look I can before, we move on, before we move on i want you i want you to explain to me i want you to explain to me how do you interpret those categorical verses of the quran where allah tells us in the quran that the people of the cave were sleeping for uh, uh hundreds of years 
and then the, the the and the story mentions that that they went with old coins to the market are you listening <laughs> this is where you guys you you don't actually read the quran and actually contemplate on it the story categorically states that they went to the market with old coins they slept with coins and when they woke up those coins were no longer valid in the market so what metaphorical now a story what metaphorical spin are you going to put on that how long were they sleeping that their coins were no longer valid in the market they were outdated those coins or or people the shopkeepers realize that these coins are from the old times yeah so again I, I was you if you need if you need more explanation on it you can talk is it no you tell me more, more, you more tell me. You, you, you i am not, I'm not i'm not i'm not that learned person but so I, don't... I, I i i i can't i don't want to say something which uh, you know i may not be 100% sure then let's about. go to someone learned then let's go to someone yeah. learned yeah, yeah. for some reason adnan bhai the uh, but, the but mystery, can you answer my question yeah, my mystery is decided not to come today but can you answer my question some missionaries that... have boycotted i don't know if they boycotted but maybe adnan bhai i want to mention so it's not just yes. missionary uh, there are a lot of people who are very learned uh, some of them are not missionary but uh, i don't uh, but you can ask them this question but answer my simple question that if you know if muslim umma is divided in so many sects if we lost khilafat you told me a remedy but there are so many other ahadees of prophet muhammad peace be upon him which will further give more understanding of that remedy for example hashim bhai is just going what, off topic i just want to mention something on the topic hashim bhai yes go what, ahead please just one last one, thing one, one, one second one second uh, one second yeah uh, please go ahead and tell us bhai okay uh, brother first of all uh, welcome in the stream and uh, thanks for engaging with us now let me finish the whole discussion which you had in the last 15 minutes and please listen very carefully okay what i'm going to quote now it is ruhani khazain volume 8 page 68 and 69 please listen very carefully brother ye ye wahi musa mard e khuda hai jiski nisbat quran mein ishara hai ke wo zinda hai aur hum pe farz ho gaya ki hum is baat pe iman lave ke wo zinda aasmanon mein maujood hai aur murdon mein se nahi hai mirza gulam ahmad is saying it is obligation on every muslim to believe that musa alaihi salam is alive in heaven he has not passed away did you know this before you have discussed this you know with with the with the missionaries to find out what's exact context what's understanding but i can my brother you, my brother i can, I can, I can tell you, I can you tell said before okay I no 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 you. not yet not yet you said before that how can what he is eating how can somebody be alive in the heaven it is against this against that let me I say one give you sure. more references i can give you i just gave you one i can give you more it is obligation on you as a ahmadi muslim to believe according to mirza gulam ahmad that isa musa alaihi salam has not died he is alive in the heaven do you do you believe this or not uh spiritual spiritually the prophets he did not say spiritually them, every listen. prophet is alive spiritually please listen very carefully yeah. okay yeah. when it comes to spiritually every prophet is alive isa is alive spiritually as well yes plus no. plus mirza no. says no 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 plus mirza says wo murdo mein se nahi hai yes wo yes. murdo mein se nahi hai so okay. let me let me answer you briefly okay mohammed amtia uh, sahib you do a lot of work but unnecessary work to be honest with you you just take take snippets from here and there and then you uh, uh, add your brother insight. simple thing is let let me complete simple thing is you know prophets are guided by allah taala okay as guided by allah taala accordingly they will uh, spread that information or that knowledge to the uh, to the uh, humanity now it may happen that when uh, god in revealed he may be fall, he will be following the beliefs of that time right and then as as god points him as allah taala points him and then he allah taala 
helped him to uh, wahi then the, the perfection comes back look look no problem perfection. no problem yeah, tell us no problem. no problem brother brother hakwala you are not considering that before you move before you move, that's before you move on to make scandals you are trying to make scandal you are not concentrating that how perfect only perfect teaching is through jama islam ahmadiyya okay i, I, I can look, challenge let, let's no other religion which has any perfection left in it in that okay religion. Let's cut Haq to the chase. Haq wala. Haq wala. Haq wala. Haq wala. Haq wala. Oh, bhai, haq wala. Oh, bhai, haq wala. Please listen one more reference and shall, we'll, we'll let you go then. He said, Ruhani Khazain, volume 7, page 2 to 1. Please note down and go home and read. He says, Balke kali mulla ki hayat to nasse Quran se sabit hai. Kya Quran e kareem mein Allah azza wa jal ka farman hai? کہ فلا تکن فی مریات من لقائی تو نہیں پڑھتا اور نہیں جانتا کہ یہ آیت موسیٰ کے بارے میں اتری ہے پر اس پس یہ موسیٰ کی زندگی پہ ایک واضح دلیل ہے کیونکہ وہ رسول سے ملے اور مردے زندوں سے نہیں ملتے اور اس قسم کی آیات عیسیٰ علیہ السلام کی شان میں نہیں آئی ہیں How can I give you more He's, he's comparing عیسیٰ علیہ السلام and موسیٰ He says that this ayah is about the hayat of Isa alayhi salam. He is alive in heaven. And he is saying it is a nas of the Quran. The dalil, the clear evidence. Brother Haqwala, just give me one answer very briefly. Do you believe Musa alayhi salam is alive in the heaven? Please tell me just this thing. He, he is asking you guys. He is asking you guys that you believe Hazrat Isa alayhi salam has. Why okay, is not Wait. honest? What about Hazrat Musa? Believe wait, that Hazrat wait. Musa is also also in the sky. That's what he's doing, Hazrat Isa. Okay, Allah, okay, okay, okay. So his so question is: what, what, One second. What, yeah. One second. One second. Please answer the question. Intaz Bhai you. asked a very direct question. Mirza is categorically saying that Musa alayhi salam is alive in the heavens. Okay. Do you believe that? So the the, the statement he read, he is asking you guys. That why no. not believe that Musa no. is also alive in the sky? No, brother. The uh, uh, okay, you know sometimes, sometimes it feels to me, it 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 appears to me that you guys are deliberately misguided, deliberately misguided. Okay, you know your religion is indefensible. The writings of Mirza are indefensible. They are so confusing and contradictory. You know that deep inside. That's why you don't give straight answers. That's why you are playing games, always hopping around the question. It's a very straight question. We just read a black and white categorical statement from Mirza, where he's saying, Musa salam, is alive in the heavens and he's giving evidence from the Quran. Do you believe Mirza or do you not believe him? Full stop. Simple question. The sentence, he, uh, statement he read, based upon that I'm answering. He's Brother, he, he is saying Musa is alive in the heavens. Do you believe that? He didn't say that. He, he met, after that, he asked the Muslims. Didn't he ask in the in his statement? Forget about asking. Forget Forget about... Read it again. Maybe he didn't hear it properly. Read it Ashim, okay. I want to read it again. Maybe he was not listening. So, Brother yeah. Hakwala, look, we want good for you. We are not your enemies. The Please listen. I quote in again. He'll give me the benefit of doubt. You didn't hear. Yeah, brother, the... please let me let me read one more time, then you can respond. I okay? listen very carefully. Ah, yes, yes. And you guys also listen carefully. He's asking the other Muslims. Yeah, so let's let him brother, read and then we will read. all listen. Don't worry. Let me read. And let me read. And let me read. I'm not, I'm an Muslim. I believe in him. He's asking the non Ahmadi Muslims this question. Yeah, let us all listen. No problem. MTS Hakwala, let me read again. Okay. He said, Ruhani Khazain. Volume 8, page 68 and 69. Ye wohi Musa marde khuda hai, jis ki nisbat Quran mein ishara hai, ke woh zinda hai, aur hum pe faraz ho gaya, ki hum is baat per iman lawe, ke woh zinda asmanon mein, asman mein mojood hai, aur murdon mein se nahi hai. He says, this is the man, Moses, about whom it is indication in the Quran that he is alive. And it is obligation upon us. Hum pe is baat pe imal. Hum pe. Hum pe. Okay. It is obligation upon us to believe that he is alive in heaven and he is not from the dead. Second reference was 
वॉल्यूम सेवन पेज टू टू वन बल्कि कली मुल्ला की हयात तो न से कुरान से साबित है ब्रदर लिसन अगेन केयरफुली कली मुल्ला की हयात तो न से कुरान से साबित है तो क्या तू कुरान करीम में अल्लाह का ये फरमान नहीं पढ़ता आया कि तू उसकी मुलाकात के बारे में शक ना कर सूर्य सजदा ही सेज आया ट्वेंटी फोर क्या तू नहीं पढ़ता और नहीं जानता लिसन क्या तू नहीं पढ़ता और नहीं जानता कि ये आयत मूसा के बारे में उतरी है बस ये वही मूसा की बस ये मूसा की जिंदगी पे एक वाज दलील है क्योंकि वो वो आप सदम से मिले और मुर्दे जिंदों से नहीं मिलते और इस किस्म की आयात इस असलाम की शान में तू नहीं पाएगा हाल बत्ता उनकी वफात का जिक्र मुतफरक मकाम पे आया है बस तदब्बर कर तदब्बर कर हक वाला तदब्बर कर that kalimullah because musa's title was kalimullah the one who, who spoke with allah he says that his life is proven from the quranic aya and then he quoted the aya according to him surah sajda aya 24 and then he says that don't you read this aya don't you know about this aya that this aya is regarding musa alaihi salam and this aya is a clear evidence on the life of musa alaihi salam because he met with muslim on uh, and, and the dead people listen dead people they do not meet with the alive and the ayat or the verses of this nature you do not find them for isa alaihi salam however there are few ayat which are about the death of isa alaihi salam and then he says that why don't you think and reflect allah likes or allah loves those people who think and reflect he compared Isa alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. He said that with regard to Isa. Wrong translation, un- unfortunately. Okay, you translate. Do you know it. Urdu? Do you know? No, 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 but no problem. You translate it. I sent Hashim. You, you, you said you said the Dabur car, right? And he Sorry? mentioned he mentioned that it, you haven't heard statements like that about Hazrat Isa alayhi salam. And then he further said the Dabur car. and then he further uh, goes on and says that nothing uh, statements like that hadn't come for hazrat isa alaihi salam which means that he is giving you answers the people who believe in isa to be alive in sky he is asking them that it is coming on the screen it is coming on the screen you, you, you are believing that isa alaihi salam in the sky more statements in that favor had come for hazrat musa alaihi salam so why no he did not say this in the sky so actually he is trying to tell you listen, guys listen, that don't believe before hakwala you don't believe it must mean spiritual life you should if you are taking spiritual life there same way apply same thing to hazrat hakwala 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 may allah make you hakwala okay uh may allah subhanahu wa taala amen 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 may allah make you hakwala Ameen. why are you deliberately Ameen. ignoring the question mirza mirza i'm going to let's see if you are truly a hakwala let's you really see if you are truly a hakwala, hakwala wait, 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 wait 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 hakwala means hakwala means the one who the one who follows the truth and upholds the truth that's what your name is your your name on your channel i can see it is hakwala hakwala means the one who upholds the truth yes let's see how much truth you can uphold mirza said musa is alive is that correct he is giving you again you brother hakwala sahab he is bringing a statement right why 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 is so, why is it so difficult for you to answer a very simple straight question mirza is categorically writing for whatever reason for whatever purpose for whatever end he is writing musa is alive he is not murda he is not dead musa is alive in the heavens is mirza saying this or not in the context we have to understand he uh, is, look 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 word was there word was okay. there wait, but we wait, have wait, to go wait. through the context and to understand and the, what the statement mohammed imtiaz had brought hakwala hakwala yes. hakwala before we get to the context why you keep asking before, the before we get to the context your context i know what your context is i know let me explain something to you 
we are asking a specific question. Is Mirza writing in the Urdu language that Musa Kalimullah is alive in the heavens? Then he further also states that there are also Hello, hello, about... hello, 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 hello. Wait, wait. I'm not going to let you do this. But I'm not going to let you do this. You why are you so slippery, you people, man? It's unbelievable. Why are no, you so you, slippery? Why, why are you, are you so manipulative? Me? I'm asking a direct it's question. You are manipulating wait, me. Wait, wait. You are I'm, asking, to I'm not going to I'm not gonna move forward. I will not move forward until you answer the question directly. Is Mirza saying, I, and, and you know why you're not answering the question? Because it, it it's is... a very manipulative it, question you are asking. No, it's not a manipulative it's question. Not, it's, it's not a good deed. It's not Hello. a wise thing to do. Look, look I, what is written. Look what in is the writing written. of Mirza, what do you mean manipulative? If anyone's manipulating, it's him. You have to keep things easy. You have to keep things simple. Don't play ma manipulation games and all it that. Is very simple. Simple. It Listen, is a simple. Everyone okay, understood let except me, you. Let me translate the Arabic. If you want let more understanding, at least you want translation. You can talk with our more learned people. Uh, they don't want to come to me. Go to so all you're on your own. But based upon Imtia's statement, what I understood, I honestly told you. He exactly said that. Imtiaz, Muhammad Imtiaz Sahib said that. It's not just one statement. You're picking up now half cooked things, uh, 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 Dan Rashid, and you're trying to make up things. That's not a good thing to do that's not what muslims should do okay let's move on guys i think we're not going to get an answer from yeah. uh, so, Hakwala, let me ask you this do you believe do you believe in any Hakwala, just just one second do you believe in any miracles at all sorry do you believe in any miracles at all absolutely miracles happen every day which miracle do you believe in even which even one do you believe in I, I from the quran yes. which miracle do you believe in even those learned people who came to your streams to me, no, I'm asking you, man. Forget about them. I'm asking yeah. you. You said you believe in miracles. Name me one miracle from the Quran that you believe in. Uh, even even the way he saved uh, Allah, Allah saved Hazrat uh, Musa al Islam. Saved Musa al Islam. Yeah. How did he save Musa? And Hazrat Nuh al Islam. How okay. how he was he 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 was prophesied that they, that there will be a flood. Okay. Right, and then he he made the the, the ship. But it do was, you believe? Do you yeah. believe in the parting of the sea? Do you believe in the parting of the sea? This Musa is the parting of the sea. Mutshabihat. You have to understand. Allah Taala is talking in Mutshabihat, but at the same time, what could have happened that when the Hazrat Musa Islam could have entered the sea, it would have calmed down, and Hazrat Musa Islam was. So he doesn't believe in miracles, guys. Then, I tell you another miracle. Let me give you another miracle. Let you me know what miracle Quran. is? Give us something from the wait, Quran. Wait, 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 wait. First of Let all, guys, guys, ask yeah. him what he understands from the word miracle. What is what is miracle? The the miracle, the word miracle, uh, uh, like I'm an English teacher or something. In English, guys, what is miracle? Okay, can we on. can we move on? Can we move on? No, no, it's okay. Adnan is fine. Just give. What do you understand by the term miracle? Marjiza. Uh, the miracle is something like, for example, Hazrat Muhammad, peace be upon him, showed to his uh, companions that moon has divided into two. And Allah Ta'ala told split, him, split now two. it could have been some, sorry? It's split into two. Yeah. Split, split, split into two. Okay. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, him showed uh, to the, his companions that, uh, look, it, it has split into two and it actually showed, was uh, seen as split into two, right? Now, that was Allah Ta'ala's ilham telling to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. And then actually at the ilham? same time... Did you just say ilham? Uh, I mean, uh, 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 wahi or, or Allah Ta'ala talking to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him <laughs> and telling him that's happening. And that actually happened. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Earlier you said we have to go by what is logical. Is it logical for this moon to be split into two? And, 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 and wait, wait. And it, why it, can't, wait, it was it wait. was maybe it was some scientific uh, thing happened there with due to so how, how is it a miracle? Then? It is a miracle it's if miracle. you can explain Allah, it. Allah, 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 telling, Allah 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 telling to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him that it's going to happen. And listen, it happened. listen. Yeah. I don't miracle think you know the meaning of miracle. Hakwala, Hakwala. Okay, you tell me this thing. Mute, mute him for a second. So you tell me this thing. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him prophesied about airplanes. Me, me, listen, listen to your man, bhai. Wait a minute, Hakwala. Yeah. Hakwala, you're clearly not you're clearly not aware of what miracle is. Miracle by nature, by nature is 
a supernatural event. Supernatural means beyond science or beyond the explanation of science. Science has nothing to say on the supernatural. So when you start using science, 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 you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You don't know what miracle is. Miracle by nature is an event, is an occurrence that breaks the laws of nature. Are you, are you with me? Don't speak yet. Don't speak yet. Let me explain what miracle is. Miracle by nature, miracle by nature is an event that breaks the law of nature. In other words, Musa throwing his wooden staff and it turning into a snake. Okay, that was the laws of nature broken. Musa parting the sea was physical. It was physically, the sea was physically parted. That means the laws of nature were broken. The prophet splitting the moon in front of his companions and his people. Okay, this means the law of nature were broken. So what the hell are you talking about? You know, when you put a metaphorical spin on every single thing, when you get stuck, okay, and you start denying the miracle, and then you start claiming miracle where it supports you, okay? Uh, it and and what what about all the miracles of Isa alayhi salam in the Quran? Him him creating birds, making birds from clay and blowing life into them. If it was not a miracle, if it was not a supernatural event, why would Allah mention it specifically, specially as an event? What's so special about creating birds of clay? Unless they become alive. So, do you understand what a miracle is now? And the Quran has multiple references to such miracles. You guys, you the Qadianis, the Ahmadis, are in denial of the Quran and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallam, to save one charlatan called Mirza. Okay? Yeah. Um, Imtiaz, by over to you before we come to Haqqala. Yeah. Yeah. One second. One second. Haqqala. So, so Haqqala, Haqqala, look at this one. Because... Uh, Today in this stream, in this today's stream, we are comparing two things. Last time we gave plenty of evidence, inshallah, more coming very soon, that how Mirza Ghulam was obedient and loyal to the colonizers. But on the other hand, when it comes to Quran and Sunnah, he was not only that he was not loyal, he was going against and he was disobeying. Now look at the, this one. In this particular example, we discussed before, okay, Prophet Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that by Allah, Akwala, listen very carefully. He said, by Allah, Isa ibn Maryam will descend amongst you. And Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said, Khuda ki haqqi haqqi qasam, Isa ibn Maryam fought ho gaya. It is in Ruhani Khazain, volume 3, page 513. Volume 3, page 513. So our prophet is saying that Khudaki Kasam, by Allah, Isa ibn Maryam will descend amongst you. And Mirza Ghulam is saying that by Allah, Isa ibn Maryam has passed away. That is what, look how he is clearly going against. And now, when it comes to Musa alayhi salam, he is affirming, and I have five references. I gave only two of them. I have five more, okay? Three, I said three more. In which he said that Musa alayhi salam is alive in heaven. So with regard to the one, what ahadiths are saying that he is he, he, he is in the heaven, he will descend, he goes against that. And he is okay to affirm that he, Musa is alive in the heaven. Don't you see this clear problem here, brother? What else you want us to explain? And by the way, the topic of miracle, it is a very good topic. But my request to you, Hakwala, is please address the problem which we are already discussing before the miracle topic came in. Because the point was, you said when you came in, that it is something, you know, against the logic or whatever that somebody is alive in the heaven. And when we presented the reference from Mirza Ghulam, and he said that Musa is alive in the heaven. Now, they, they, they made one of two reasons. Maybe you were not aware of this. We don't know. Wallahu alam. Or maybe you are, if you are aware of this and you are still insisting on what you said earlier, that how can somebody be alive in the heaven? You should repent now. You should repent now. Okay. This is the point, brother. Okay. Uh, can I, uh, I wanted to ask my question, uh, but I can respond to medical thing which the man had brought, brought up. I can answer that. But after that, please allow me to ask my question. 
okay first uh, answer of the question miracle sorry the what miracle you need to answer our question miracle, do you believe that musa is do you believe that musa is alive in the heaven that's i we already talked about it no no I what did you say no, no, no look brother look brother hatwala do you believe do yes. you believe that musa is alive in the heaven simple question i already answered that what no you didn't i want to, I want to ask medical, i want to answer medical thing okay no 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 what is do you believe that musa is alive in the heaven again you are making me ask, ask uh, repeating the same thing again i already you know why you doing this you know why you doing this you're stuck you you adnan bhai adnan bhai he said he said i already answered give the answer again yes oh my god oh yes simple indeed thing is, simple indeed. thing is, i said i said first of all you should talk with somebody uh, uh, more learned than me so what's your question. answer you said you gave an answer what's your answer and uh, let me complete now okay so, so listen about, yeah uh, you, do you hakwala 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 my has, answer up to my hakwala, knowledge one second hakwala hakwala yeah. hakwala has anyone ever told you that you're slippery sorry or you you're slimy has anyone ever told you that you're slippery and slimy or is it just because when it comes to your religion you become slippery and slimy otherwise you might be a fine person you might be a very decent person in your life you might be a very kind person but when it comes to your batil your false religion you become slippery and slimy very because it's, it because what one second because it's indefensible you can't answer a simple question what do you believe is musa alive in the heavens or not I don't believe. I don't have imperfect beliefs as you guys. You Listen, Hakwala, stop, stop playing games. Do you believe Musa is alive in the heavens or not? Mirza said he is. I already told you that the statement which Muhammad Imtiaz brought up, it clearly shows that he was asking guys like you. Do you believe Mirza is alive? Uh, sorry, Musa, Musa alayhi salam is alive <laughs> in the heavens, according to no, we don't, Mirza. We don't. No, no, not not physically, not not bodily. Mirza is saying physically. No, he, Mirza is saying he's not Murda. Mirza again, is saying he's not Murda. Again, he asked okay, the let me let me read in the Arabic language what Mirza wrote, and then your own translation. Mirza says, "Bal bal hayatu kalim Allah, uh, kalim Allah, bal hayatu kalim Allah, thabitun bi nasi al Quran al Karim, ala takrau fil Quran ma qala Allah." Taala, Azza wa Jal. He's saying, "Balke Kalimullah ki hayat to nasse Quran, Quranic Karim se sabit hai." He's saying the life of Musa alayhi salam, Kalimullah, is proven from the Quran, and he quotes the verse from the Quran, and then he goes on to say that, "Do not doubt it." He's talking to you, my friend, the Ahmadi, the Qadiani. He's talking to you. Don't doubt it. Don't doubt it. You know. So what I mean, the fact that you are not answering a simple, straight question, you know why you're not answering it? Let me make it easy for people. You're not answering it because it lands you in a quagmire. It lands you in a pit. Okay, because you can easily believe in the life of Musa alayhi salam, but you deny the life of Isa alayhi salam, for which we have plenty of evidence. There are so many hadiths from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You want us to reject them? To believe Mirza, who came like what a uh, hundred years ago, and he's telling us no, reject all those categorical reports from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that Allah. state that Isa alayhi salam is la alive with Allah in the heavens. So you want us to believe that Musa is alive in the heavens, but Isa is not because it goes against your intellect. So you got caught. You got caught in your own trap. Okay, and the reason why you're not giving a direct answer is. Because you know you're trapped, you know you can't get out of it, and we're not here to trap you. We are simply here to reach out to those innocent, innocent gullible Ahmadis, to 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 show them that you guys, you your beliefs are inconsistent with your own writings. You believe in certain things, and then the writings of Mirza themselves they dismantle those beliefs. Okay, on the one hand, you argue that Isa cannot be alive in the heavens; it's against logic. It's against logic, okay? But then we bring something from Mirza's writings to show you that Musa is alive in the heavens, according to Mirza. You stop playing. You start playing games. You don't. You go around the statement. You don't give a straight answer. 
this is the this is the context that yeah. everyone needs to focus on inshallah so i'm i'm going to ask you again look stop wasting your time stop yeah, wasting your time i can look into i can i can look into it more uh, and get more yeah. you are you are you, you are i i was already saying it i'm not that learned on this i i can look into it but what you are saying you are trying to manipulate is not a good good, good you way. said you gave an answer so don't try to play games now. want to talk about this talk with you did not say i will go and find out and research on it you said i gave an answer so you you either lied or you don't even know what you're talking about sorry no i i understand that we did mohammed ibn tas statement he brought up i think i just maybe let him go He's just wasting our time now no yeah. can i ask a question can i ask one question no we don't want to talk to you because there's no conversation with you you're not being you're not being honest you're not being hakwala your name is hakwala ironically you know you're playing games with hak the hak is very clear the hak is that mirza wrote musa alay salam is alive in the heavens and you are so and manipulative you are so manipulative that you are even spinning mirza's writings now you're trying to put a metaphorical habit. you're trying to put a metaphorical habit. spin on mirza you you are still stuck there you are not able to move on you know why i'm stuck there you know why there's a there's a there's a reason there's a point the point I is that so earlier times. no no wait earlier you were arguing it is against logic Yes. That Isa Isa is alive yeah, in the heavens. Is, no, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. You were mocking us. Wait, you were mocking us. And many of your uh, your Kadiani missionaries on Twitter and elsewhere have been mocking us. That oh, you guys, you believe in uh, uh, an Isa who who's, who has been living for two thousand years in the heavens. You know, they they have they have the audacity to say this to us. They've been saying this. But when we pull out Mirza's own writings, your prophet, he's saying Musa has been alive for longer. Okay. Can, can okay. Can wait. 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 You know you, how? You, how? Oh, you, you, you bring Ahmadis wait, and this, wait, this thing to wait, wait. And to, to you know say bad stuff against them. Is that what you do? Is that your listen? Your, listen. Your, no, no, it's not bad stuff. He's no, using no, critical no. analysis to analyze your answers and then respond to you. How many times he has to repeat his analysis? <laughs> because you keep lying every he, time. He, you he just, spin. Just, you should be called spin wala. Because you you bring us here to bad mouth us. Oh, sorry, sorry, we need to change his name. Don't lie, then. Don't lie. We need to one, change his one name. One minute you are saying I answered the question. Next minute you are saying, "Oh, I'm going to research and then find out." I mean, make we up your mind. We never lie. We never lie. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me. Let, let's hakwala, hakwala, hakwala. Yeah. Let's save time. Let's save time. I'm going to ask you a question. Do you okay. still stand by your earlier statement that uh, life of Isa alayhi salam in the heavens is irrational? Absolutely. Okay, good, 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 good. Now we now we're getting somewhere. Good. Life now, of, no, no, wait, 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 yeah. wait. Likewise, <laughs> likewise, life of Musa alayhi salam in the heavens is it equally irrational? Any any human being cannot be live physically live. Based okay. On the okay. Of You're not answering my question. Yeah. Just like you answered on Isa. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So life of Musa and Isa. You're not able to understand my answer. Wait, 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 brother. Well, brother, wait. Life of Musa alayhi salam in the heavens. It is equally irrational. Correct. The the physical life, yeah. No, no. Life, life of Isa alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam. Both of them are equally irrational. Equally a bodily life, yes. Okay, okay. So when Mirza says that he is not dead, Mirza is not talking about spiritual death, because Mirza is talking specifically about Musa alayhi salam meeting with the Prophet physically. This meeting was physical. Okay, Mirza is saying that Musa alayhi salam physically met the uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, therefore he is not dead. He is physically not dead, so now because you're stuck, you're now throwing Mirza under the bus as well, and his quote or what he wrote, you're throwing him under the bus as well because you're stuck. So don't do that. Be sincere. Say, you know what? This is a good question. Uh, either I'm going to take my words back that it is not irrational to believe that Isa alayhi salam is alive in the heavens, or I have to go and check the contradiction. Between what Mirza is writing and what the Qadianis believe in, because Qadianis have been saying this for a long time that it is irrational to believe in a man alive in the heavens for two thousand years. But Mirza is saying physically Musa is alive in the heavens for more than two thousand years. 
almost 3,000 years because Musa alayhi salam's time was about 1,500 years before Isa alayhi salam, give and take few centuries or one or two centuries because we cannot be fully sure about the chronology of Musa alayhi salam. Okay, but clearly he's, he's alive for longer. Okay, yes, Imtiaz Bhai, over to you. I just want to because you know, uh, brother Hakwala, uh, brother, we are not we are not trying to put any trap, brother. We uksim billah. This is not our intention. Let me tell you something. What Mirza said about using uh, your reason, your rationality. Please listen very carefully. This is uh, volume three, page five five two. He said, "Agar Quran o Hadis ke mukabale mein ek jahan akli dalail ka dekho, to har giz kabool na karo." Yakinan samjo ke akal ne lagzish khai hai. He said that if something comes from Quran and Sunnah, do not reject it just because of your intellect and reasoning. And may and be sure that if if you are going to use your reason to reject Quran and Sunnah, that it means that your reason has gone in error. Okay. Ruhani Can I answer? Can I answer? Brother, you don't need to answer anything. I'm just giving you ask that what Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, what Mirza Ghulam, because I earlier you said, yeah. earlier you said, you were using okay, your rationality. Our Prophet is saying, our Prophet is saying that by Allah, Isa ibn Maryam will descend amongst you. And you use your reason and your jamaah use the reason to reject that. And Mirza is telling you, don't do this. It's your miniature understanding. That that's the problem. When it comes to come to the sincere research, for some reason you guys condense your brains and start thinking like a, like a, a somebody who's 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 a kid. And I don't know you do it in your worldly life as well like this or not. You you can't survive like that in worldly life. Simple thing is that you may not have understood properly take it that way if you find something I think you're projecting your own weakness on us maybe you need to improve your not really. you need to improve I your I let him go yeah i know okay, okay can, I ask, can i ask my question you want to give him a chance to ask a question yeah one, go one, ahead one of these one of these i want to put on okay, first, okay. First al -masheta. <laughs> sorry please go ahead yeah what's your question go ahead Okay, so I, I put this hadith in in, uh, uh, in the chat. So I was talking about that if the if it was prophesied that you know the Muslims will be divided into so many sects and they will lose Khilafat, what's going to happen? I just pasted this hadith in 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 the chat and the translation of of that, and that's a remedy. Okay, so Allah Taala is a living God. He will, so before he you do that, give us the reference of the hadith. It is. Uh, Ashim, I might ask him that yes, what is the point he wants to prove okay. from the hadith. Okay, so yeah, I'll give you translation. It, it will so clear. You will get. You, get you did not give the number. You just said Musta Ahmed. Where's the Where's the reference? Uh, I don't have. Uh, Ashim, I might just ask him that what is the point he wants to prove from the hadith. Yeah, what's your point? Yeah. Okay. The give point us, is, give us your question. What's your okay. question? Okay. So, so in this hadith, it is mentioned that prophethood shall remain among you as long as Allah wills. He will bring about its end and follow follow it with khilafat on the percepts of prophethood for as long as He wills, and then then bring brings about its end. King kingship shall then follow. Kingship then follow to remain as long as Allah wills, and then come to an end. There shall then be monarchical de uh, despotism, which shall remain as long as Allah wills and come to an end upon his decree. There will then emerge khilafat on the percepts of prophethood. This is, this is the remedy. The uh, khilafat will emerge again on the percepts. Okay, okay, okay. Now, we know the hadith. The prophet, prophet was prophesied. The yeah, yeah. We, we, prophesied. we know the hadith. What, wait, wait, wait. Hakwala. Yeah. Uh, we know the hadith. What's your point? What's your my, point? What? My my point is that the remedy is to bring Ummah back to unity, and that can happen through Khilafat. What? Okay, which which Khilafat? That can only happen to, on the percepts of which? that can only happen on, on uh, Khilafat al Haja Nabuwa on the percepts oh, of Nabuwa. Yes, yes, yes. Agreed, agreed. But which Khilafat? Khilafat. 
Kadiani Khilafat or not? No, but you tell me where is the remedy? If the I tell you the remedy. Bad, I tell you the remedy. So Give bad, me the two minutes. Everything according to prophecy of Prophet Mount Peace. Listen, Chronic you okay, no, okay, fine. Let's let's say let's cut to let's cut to the chase. Remedy. Okay, you, brother, your, you, yes, you made your point. You made your point. You made your point. Your remedy is Mirza Masroor, Mirza, Mirza Masroor, the, the British Caliph. And about, and uh, wait, 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 last wait, wait, brother. Wait, your remedy, which you are proposing to us, is the Khilafat of Mirza Masroor of Beza Futu, modern London. Wait, wait, brother, be quiet, please. Okay, okay, a man who is living in London, okay, at uh, the mercy of the British uh, government, secular, liberal British government, without any power, without any influence, has nothing uh, in the Muslim world. He has he has done no work for the Muslim world. He has not represented... Okay, where is this Khalifa when Muslims need him? Where is this Khalifa? Okay, Imtaz Bhai, over to you. Okay. Can oh, Hakwala, last statement, please? Obviously, Hakwala, last you said statement, that... But they didn't let me complete. Just last statement. Okay, please, and, please. And, yeah, and look at the look at the sign of Allah. All the Muslims, even whatever they do, they are not able to establish Khilafah themselves. Why? Because it will, it will only happen through on the precepts of prophethood. Khilafah al-Haja Nabuwa. A very important thing. Okay, we, you're done we now. Really khilafah, but we are not able to set it up ourselves. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. over okay. to you. Thank you, you Hakwala. Obviously, uh, everybody can see he did not ask us any question, but guess what? He only digged his grave more deeper. You know why? Because in this hadith, there is nothing of because even if we, for the sake of argument, okay, if we accept their claim that now their khilafah is according to this hadith, guess what? It means that prophethood has come to an end according to this hadith. Because after prophethood, there is no more age. Okay. So this hadith, brother, it has finished all of your discussions, debate, and literature, which you are confusing your message that prophethood is continued. Zilli Nabi can come this and that. Why? Because after the Khilafah in this hadith, there is no more age. Yeah, it backfired on you, mister. Exactly. Okay. And because you did not ask us any question, you want to give us the advice. Okay, we respect your emotion, but please keep the advice with you. We don't want to accept Mr. Musroor. But, but, Muhammad, I'm and, No, no, wait, 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 wait. I just want to. That's my question. Hakwala. We are not able to set up Khilafat. Why only Islam Ahmadiyya has Khilafat? <laughs> okay, wait, Hakwala. Hakwala. No, no, wait, 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 wait. No, one second, one second. Hakwala. Hakwala. There is, there is, there is something very important here, Hakwala Saab. Okay, you presented a hadith to us, the Sunnis, in support of your Khilafat. Okay, you presented this hadith from Musnad Ahmad to claim that your Khilafat is Alam in Hajin Nubuwa. Alam in Hajin Nubuwa, that's what you claimed. Okay, clearly, everyone can see that. But in the same hadith, in the same hadith, your entire religion is dismantled. Because what, what does the hadith do? It gives you sequences, one after another. First thing will, will be first, then will come the second thing, then that will end, then will come the third thing, then that will end, then will come the fourth thing, which is what you are claiming, Khilafah, Allah min Hajin Nubuwa, which is your Mirza Masroor's Khilafah, right? So, obviously, each and every single event has to end for the next one to come about. Okay, so first thing is mentioned is the prophethood. Prophethood ended, then came Khilafa. Khilafa ended, then came Mulukiya, which is kingship. Kingship ended, then came your Khilafa to Alam Minhajin uh, Nabuwa, which is the Khilafa of Mirza Masroor. Now, if kingship doesn't end, Khilafa cannot come. Okay, so therefore, by the virtue of this hadith alone, Nabuwa ended with Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa then came Khilafa, then came kingship, then came your Khilafa. So Mirza is a false prophet, therefore Mirza is a liar who claimed to be a prophet after the ending of prophethood. There you go, that's your hadith which completely dismantles your religion. Okay, okay. and on Thank that you. note, I think, I we, think should... Uh, we should let you go now. Yeah, no, we should move on. I didn't understand, by the way. 
what no, okay. problem repeat go and watch, watch it again, again. Yeah. watch yeah. watch the program again it's, it's recorded don't worry yeah, yeah. Okay. okay so and take care thank you for your time this the next time. on it allah hafiz Okay, Hashim Bhai, uh, before Shara, you take the next person, I just want to mention something very quickly because we need to educate the other common Ahmadis. So uh, I want to request all the common Ahmadis, please listen to your conscience, okay? When all when we have the ample evidence from Quran and Sunnah that Isa alayhi salam is alive in the heaven and he will descend in the later days, okay? Ghulam Ahmad and, his, and, and you, all of you guys, you say, oh, how come, how come? It is irrational. And guess what? You have no problem to believe that Musa is alive in the heaven. And Musa was way before the Isa alayhi salam. That's why, and by the way, because Hakwala wants to have some homework, okay? Let me give him more homework. Inshallah, he can be more, inshallah, learning when he come in the future. Ruhani Khazain, volume 3, page number 52. Mirza said, Bible or Hamari Ahadith or, or Ikhbar ki kitabo ki ruh se jin nabiyon ka Listen everybody carefully. Jin nabiyon ka is wujud ansari ke saath asman pe jana tasavvar kiya gaya hai. Wo ek nabi hai, Yuhanna. Iska naam Elia aur Idris bhi hai. Guess what? Mirza is saying in no ambiguous term that Yuhanna or, and by the way, this Yuhanna is a, is, is a lie of Mirza, okay? It's Elijah or Elia, okay? He's lying that he was John. No, he was not John, okay? By the way, the, the point was this. He is saying that Elijah or, John, or, or Idris, he is alive in the heaven with his physical body. Vujude Ansari. There is no, it cannot be clear than this one. Vujude Ansari ke saath. With his body, with his physical body, he is in the heaven. Guess what? Because all of these things, okay, they are not challenging Mirza's core beliefs. He is okay with that. But when it comes to Isa alayhi salam, it destroys his entire foundation. That's why he can never accept the, what, what the whole ummah has believed. That Isa is alive in the heaven and he will descend. He can never accept that. But he is okay to believe Idris is alive. Musa is alive. Is he obeying Quran and Sunnah? Or is he going directly against Quran and Sunnah? He was an enemy of Quran and Sunnah, not a follower. And you know, here, there's a very interesting thing that you have to note. Mirza confused Yohanna, which is uh, Yahya alayhi salam, or John the Baptist, with Elijah. Not because of Quran and Sunnah. This is because of the Bible, because of the text of the Gospel of Matthew. So Mirza, so Mirza basically is attributing something to the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, It actually comes from the Gospel of Matthew where John the Baptist is called Elijah, okay, where he's called Elijah. So this is, this is absolutely... No, no, Adnan, by, Adnan by guess what? Guess what? Yeah. This hmm. is a biblical dilemma because the gospel of John in the first chapter, John said, I am not Elijah. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Now, this is, this is a biblical disaster, okay, which he is taking and using to prove his point. This was uh, the level of academics of Ghulam Muhammad. Every absolutely. person... Who knows Christianity, he knows. This is one of the dilemma Christianity is dealing till today. Because John says, I am not Elijah. Okay. And Jesus said, he is Elijah. Okay. This is a contradiction. Okay. They have to deal with that. And Mirza is using a contradiction of the Bible to you prove his point. Subhanallah. Exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. So this is a direct contradiction. This is a direct. In the Gospel of Matthew, it is claimed that he is Elijah. And in the Gospel of John, he denies it when he's asked this question. Okay. Are you that prophet? He says, no. Are you Elijah? He says, no. Okay. So there are three questions that are asked from uh, Yahya alayhi salam or John the Baptist. So Mirza, guys, Ahmadis, if you are listening and if you're listening to all of this, please wake up. You know, we are not a bunch of stubborn bigots that we reject Mirza even uh, as, a, as a decent man, let alone a prophet, we have grounds. We have grounds, solid grounds. This was clearly a false prophet who made blunders upon blunders, contradictions upon contradictions, and lies upon lies. How much more do you want? We've done like non, non-stop, we have done like seven, eight streams, long streams, and we've had conversations with your missionaries and your activists, and they are, they are repeatedly, repeatedly, as you can see, they are completely falling. They're falling. Okay. 
So may Allah guide Anar you guys. By something, yeah. Anar by something very interesting. And hmm. everybody can read that. Hmm. Ruhani Khazain, volume 18, from page 239 to two, page 243. Hmm. One of the murid of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, guess what? He claimed to be a prophet. Okay. And he started to use, his name was Charag. Subhanallah, Charag. Okay. He started to use the, listen, he started to use the Bible to prove his claim. Okay. Look what Mirza said to him and wallahi, it applies to Mirza himself. He said to him, Har shaks janta hai. He is saying to Charag, Har shaks janta hai ke Quran-e Sharif ne kabhi dawa nahi kiya ke wo injil ya tawrath mein sula karega. Balke in kitabon ko muharrif, mubaddil aur nakis aur natamam karar diya. Or or taj or or taaje khas al yawma akmal tu lakum dinu kum Quran ne apne sar pe rakha aur hamara iman hai ke ye sab kitabe Injil Torah Quran Sharif ke mukabale mein kuch bhi nahi hai ye naqis hai ye muharrif hai ye mubaddil hai aur tamam balai Quran mein Subhan Allah he saying that it is our belief that all the previous books the Torah and the Gospel they are all are, have been altered. They cannot be relied upon. You know why? Because his murid was relying upon those books and he was very angry. He said to him, if you do not publish your, 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 your resignation, look look at the wording, your astifa. If you do not publish your resignation from the claim of prophethood, you are out of my jamaat. Why? He was using the Bible to prove his claim and Mirza did not allow him. And guess what? Mirza used the Bible to prove his claim. Not only Mirza, the, the, these Qadiani missionaries also used the Bible to claim Mirza was a prophet. Like I had this conversation in the park with this Irish uh, Qadiani called Ibrahim Noonan. He was using the Gospel of Matthew to prove uh, the, the, the emergence of Mirza and Qadian, which is directly uh, in the east of Damascus, right? So he was repeatedly using the Gospel of Matthew and I was trying to explain to him that these books are altered. Okay, you cannot, you cannot use them as authority over the Quran. And guess what? Mirza confirms that. Mirza actually confirms that. Hmm. Yeah, by, I want all the viewers, please note down this reference. Volume 18, page 239. Mirza has given a categorical criteria that nobody is allowed to use the previous books in order to go against the Quran or, or to prove something, to prove something. He said that Quran has to be used Quran is the Muhammad, but the but the irony is the unfortunate, or maybe the reality is that Mirza's core beliefs, and everybody knows, you know what? Because when people ask Mirza that, that the hadith say that Isa will descend from the heaven, and you did not come from the heaven. Okay, he used Bible. He said that look, this was the belief of the previous people that Allah that the, the, the Idris or Elia or Elijah will descend from the heaven, but this was not true. He used, this was his core argument. Everybody listen very carefully. The core argument of Mirza was that people of the book, they were mistaken. They were thinking that Elijah will descend from the heaven, but Isa corrected them by telling them that no, 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 now John is the Elijah. He used the Bible, okay? And guess what? Wallahi, there's no such thing in the Quran which he was using. He only used the Bible. And guess what? According to this principle, Mirza has committed, to be honest, a blasphemy because he used previous books to go against the Quran. And he was not allowing all of this to who? To Charag. Because Charag was claiming to be a prophet. And Mirza could not be another prophet. No way. This is the reason he closed every door of prophethood after him. And this is the thing Bashir Ahmad, Bashiruddin Mahmood, they said that no way a prophet can come. Kat an nahi aa sakta. Why? So Razi has, so Razi has no chance. Their father. <laughs> so Razi has no chance to claim uh, Zil, Zilli or Buruzi prophethood after Mirza. Razi or Ahmad or Dr. Yahya or... Uh, those uh, Tamim, what's his name? Tamim from Jordan. These guys, Bajare, they have no hope to be Abdul prophets. Abdullah Jamba, Abdullah Ghafar Jamba from the Jamaat Ahmadiyya has already claimed to be a prophet and they have rejected him. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. So their own, their own uh, problems are coming back to bite them. Something they have uh, themselves initiated at the door they have opened 
is now coming to bite them. Okay, and and that's it. This is a self-inflicting wound on the Qadiani Jamaat. They not only separated themselves from the rest of the Ummah, they basically they are breaking apart from within. And Alhamdulillah, you know the good thing is our streams are really impacting a lot of uh, Qadiani Ahmadi youngsters who are watching these streams in the English language, and they are changing. They are realizing that this is indeed a cult that they have been following and their parents have been following. A lot more people like a doctor is hard and his family inshallah they will be changing inshallah they will be accepting the truth and people like bashir and other hundreds of people who just you know where i am right now uh, uh you know i met many uh ex ahmadis ex ahmadis i met in person they came to see me and they said you know what we really thank you for the work you guys are doing it's absolutely amazing it's it's strengthening our belief as well and it's it's, it's shaking shattering a lot of other people uh, the Ahmadis and their, their you know, uh, die-hard support for this Jamaat, this cult, they are now changing, alhamdulillah, and they are having second thoughts. And, you know, we need to continue with this work so that we can, inshallah, reach out to more and more people and once and for all deal with this cult and its beliefs so that people can always come back to our streams and watch them again and again, inshallah. Okay, so is there anyone we can bring in, Brother Hashim, and going back to the main topic of the stream, uh, Mirza? Yeah, I think we should... Uh... We should start with the main topic uh, on the, oh, the links yeah. with the colonialism. Yeah. Because uh, it looks like the Murabis have uh, run out of uh, gas. Okay. You know, I, I honestly feel sorry for the masses uh, amongst the Ahmadis. These people who are actually corrupt, they are keeping you away from the Jannah. You know? So don't fall for the traps. The reason they do not answer clear questions, it's it itself shows you that they... I've got something to hide. Because if you are in the court of law and you are asked a clear question, you don't respond, then that goes against you. Yes. It is not in your favor. If you were truthful, then you will give a question, uh, you will answer the question truthfully and straightforward. You wouldn't spin, you know, or waffle your way out of it. So inshallah, I think um, these collaborators who have invented their own religion and who are in cahoots with the uh, people like, uh, you know, the monarchs, the English colonialists and other colonialists. I mean, it's just it's sad, to be honest. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, inshallah, Adnan Bhai, you can start with your topic on the on the Raj. Absolutely. So, so the, again, the point is Mirza was collaborating and working for the colonial government of India, okay, which was one of the most oppressive, tyrannical uh, uh, and racist governments to have existed and then he claimed from revelation from revelation that he has to he has to serve this racist genocidal uh, uh, oppressive government of india okay uh, as a virtue he was paying lavish tributes he even himself wrote okay if that's why if you can pull out that quote where he yeah. said that i have written so many pamphlets so many articles and so many uh, ishtaharat that you can build like you can have like uh, hundreds of thousands of pages he said something yeah. like that, like that. Yeah. now imagine a prophet of allah writing works to defend the colonial government of india that killed a hundred million people within 40 years from 1880 to 1920 as we were discussing last week this is not a light thing this is not something small okay where is your consciousness i'm asking the ahmadis okay where is your consciousness where is your conscience where is your conscience okay how about asking yourself this question can this prophet be a true prophet of allah okay if we told you that musa salam was working for pharaoh okay by the way by the way i can guarantee you I can guarantee you as a historian, every Ahmadi and Qadiani listening to me right now, that Pharaoh did not kill as many people as the British Empire in India. I repeat my statement with utmost confidence. You know, the whole population of the world at the time of Pharaoh was not 100 million. Are you listening, Hashim Bhai and Imtiaz Bhai? The yes, entire yes. population of the world at the time of Pharaoh was not a hundred million. It was, I don't think it was more than 10 million at the time. 
the entire population, human population of the world during the ancient Egyptian period was not more than 10 million people. Okay. So imagine a government and establishment killing a hundred million people within 40 years in one country alone. Okay. Imagine. So who is the biggest, who is the bigger criminal? Who is the bigger criminal? Firaun or the British colonial rule in India. Imagine if Musa alayhi salam came and he said, guess what guys from Banu Israel, people from Banu Israel who have been enslaved for 400 years, my revelation tells me that I have to now serve Firaun. I have to write all these books and pamphlets running into hundreds of thousands of pages by his own admission that I have to serve this establishment. I have to be loyal to it. And my religion is now O oh, Banu Israel, my religion is two parts. Obedience to Allah and obedience to Firaun. Okay. <laughs> imagine, imagine Musa alayhi salam saying this to Banu Israel. As challenging, as difficult as Banu Israel were as a people, they would have immediately rejected Musa alayhi salam. They would have said, you're a false prophet. You're an agent. You're an agent. You have been planted by Firaun to brainwash us. Okay, so that we can continue in our slavery. 400 years of slavery. The British did the same thing in India. They were enslaving the Indians. They were exploiting their resources. Okay, they had, they had built train railroads so that they can take all these resources to the coasts and into the ships and to Britain. Okay, at that time, this was a company. This was a trading company, the East India Company for the first 100 years and the remaining 90 years in India Direct, direct rule of Britain, the colonial establishment of Britain. Okay. They killed more people than Firaun did. Okay. Imagine a prophet of Allah coming to his people saying, My religion has two parts. Okay. One is to obey Allah, the other is to obey the colonial government. Okay. To be loyal to the colonial government. Okay. Now imagine that. Imagine Allah revealing that to a prophet. This alone, this alone indicts Mirza as a false prophet, as a liar, as an agent of the colonial establishment. Okay. He was launched. He was launched. And when I say he was launched, Mirza himself said in his own writing that I am a Khud Kashta Poda. My family is Khud Kashta Poda. That means self planted seed. Self-planted seed. He's talking to the British colonial establishment in India, telling them that my family was planted by you. Am I making this up? Am I making this up, guys? I quoted all of these things in the last stream, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do that again so that people who are watching this stream they come to realize what we're dealing with here. Mirza himself wrote specifically, categorically, that my family, my father, my brother, who served you like slaves. And myself, our family was planted by you, the British colonial establishment. Therefore, look upon me, my family and my followers favorably. Look upon me, my family and my followers favorably. This is what Mirza wrote in his writings. Come on, guys, the Ahmadis and the Qadianis, where is your sense? We're trying to wake you up. We're trying to reach out to you. Okay. Okay, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you guys. Seriously, we could not put it more clearly to you. May Allah guide you, our Ahmadi brothers and sisters. Amen. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Imran. Welcome, salam, welcome, sir, brothers. How are you doing? Okay. Apologies for my lateness, just got back from work. So, alhamdulillah. Have you been listening to the stream? A little bit, mashallah, on my way drive up, mashallah. Just a plethora of information, mashallah. Uh, yeah. and, and for some reason, uh, you know, Brother Imtiaz, he's scared of all the Qadiyani um, <laughs> Murabis. Alhamdulillah. I think, I think it's very telling, isn't it, mashallah? When they saw all those books behind him, you know, they just ran away. <laughs> I think it's his smile that does the most damage, mashallah. Yeah. Imran, <laughs> alhamdulillah, I would say that it is the haq which, is, which has the power. Wallahi, mashallah. if anybody was saying this because Islam is the, has the power of the truth, alhamdulillah. So it is not any individual, Wallahi, it is the power of the truth, alhamdulillah. 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 And, right, and, 
So let, yeah, let people ahead. in. Let people in. Let Muslims in. If there are Muslims there, let them in. If there yeah. are ex-Ahmadis, if there are ex-Ahmadis, if they want to join, we'll continue with the conversation. Uh, if the missionaries come in, we will let them join. We will let them ask questions and uh, address these points. No problem. Inshallah. Inshallah. And so we, are, uh, we are letting the Muslims in. I just want to mention, to mention, just same want same to mention one thing because sometimes what happens is that obviously, Alhamdulillah, today we have two topics. We want to compare Mirza's loyalty to Quran and Sunnah as compared to his loyalty to the British colonizers. So Alhamdulillah, today we, are, we, have, we have made Alhamdulillah a very strong case, as Adnan Bhai already mentioned, on this path in the last stream. Inshallah, we have more to come, by the way. Inshallah, the, the, the Trump card is still to come, Inshallah. Okay. Now, today, Inshallah, we are showing them that he was dis, uh, dishonest in terms of his finances. I quoted already. And Wallahi, he was, he was academically dishonest as well. I'm going to bring a conclusive proof, inshallah, that he was a dishonest academic as well. He was misquoting people to prove his point. So what we want to ask Ahmadiyya clergy, tell us, when you say that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, he was doing the perfect obedience of Allah and his messenger, what this statement actually mean? For example, bring to us the salah, the prayer of Mirza. And we have, inshallah, the proofs ready that how he was praying. And tell us about his zakat. He owns a lot of money. I have the proof ready, inshallah, because they are saying because his, his money was under the threshold. That's why he did not. No, that's not true. I have the proof. He, he has a lot of money, but we have proof. He never paid zakat. He never go for umrah. He never went for hajj. He was not regularly in, in terms of going to the masjid for your salah. And not only this, in terms of his fasting, no problem. Maybe he was a sick person, he had excuse, but there's no fasting, there's no zakat, there's no prayer, there's no hajj. What is left in that? Okay. And after that, he was financially corrupt. He was lying on Quran and Sunnah. And he was lying on the scholars. And he was, uh, I mean, he was not having a good behavior with his own family. Because the hadith says, Hayrukum. Khairukum li ahlihi wa ana khairukum li ahli that the best amongst you is the one who is good with one's family and I am the one who is best with his family. When we look at Mirza, who can deny that he almost abandoned his wife, the, 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 the first wife, even before he divorced her, he abandoned her for many years. He never, he, he, he said himself. That he never came close to her. He did not fulfill the right of being a husband for his wife. Okay, he was a very rich person. We have the evidence, and his son, he was he has to go far away from the home to work for a very small job. He was not basically supporting his own family. And we know the letters, and we know when he divorced his own wife, he, he basically pushed his son to divorce his wife as well. So, what I'm trying to say is, dear viewers. If this claim has any concrete substance that Mirza was obeying Allah's messenger, today is the time we want Ahmadiyya clergy to come forward and tell us in which area he was obeying. Because when it comes to obedience, we have two areas. Okay, Hukukullah, the rights of Allah, and Hukukul Ibad, rights of the people. And we have evidence. In none of these two areas, he ever have any sign of obedience. Then in which area he was obeying? Please tell us. We don't have any activities, so we're going to invite uh, the Muslims to join the panel. So if there are any Muslims out there who, want, who would like to join the panel for the Q&A, uh, please uh, click on the link that is pinned already. And those people who are waiting in the back studio, please switch on your camera for verification. If not, you will not be permitted to join the panel. <laughs> right, shall we bring them one by one? Uh, Muslim Ali, do um, you want to keep your camera on or you want to switch it off? It's entirely up to you. And all Ahmadis, non Ahmadis, or ex Ahmadis are welcome to join yeah. so that we can continue with the conversation, inshallah. 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 
right, so I'll join. Have you, have you had anyone from the Ahmadi community come on so far? Yeah, we had one. Okay. Not not a missionary though. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I just wanted to make a small point that I noticed. These Ahmadis, they always um, speak about the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and I was thinking that this point they're making doesn't make sense because there are new things that happen every single day for example the stream that happened today is not the same thing as the stream that happened last saturday that means allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed two separate things that this stream independently of this stream and there are two different things so if we say the sunnah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he doesn't do something different, then how come different things happen every single day? So it's not it's not too different and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would create general universe laws, but at the same time create um let Isa alayhi salam stay in heaven. There's no dif difference between that and what happens every day in our daily lives as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, is that it, or you want to say something else? Um, no, that's it. I just wanted to make that point. That's it. Okay, just okay. Okay, Mali. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, alaykum brother Adnan, uh, wish your uh, ziara was makhul, inshallah. I, I watch with a lot of envy you are in Medina, and subhanallah, that's uh, so amazing. Especially the one you've done with your son from the Haram. Yeah. Uh, I I like to add a few points. Actually, uh, um, I'm going to come to the topic. Uh, I'm on, I'm only going to take a few minutes, only two or three. Doctor Yahya had come on the stream on the topic, and he had said something. I wanted to respond to that if I can. Mm -hmm. He had mentioned that how come uh, they they believe that there is a Rasul, and then there's a Chisti Rasulullah and all of that. <clears throat> and he said that somehow we have cornered ourselves into a minority. Um, I'm sure he's listening and I want to tell him that we don't feel this way because Islam is about truth and uh, the amal will be weighed, not counted. So uh, it matters what you believe, how many of you believe. Uh, Islam has never been in that race of majority and minority. If the entire world's population believes that there is a Rasul and that's wrong and one person is on Tawheed, that one person is heavier on them. Because the deen is not that weak that we will run polls and see how many are on the other side just to feel that we are weak. In fact, all of you are wrong. When you say these things, you are committing shirk and you don't even know it. And you mm. come here and justify by saying, oh, the other guys are saying it too. Mm. I mean, how many people around the world do not believe in Allah at all? I mean, 7 mm. billion of us, only 1.6 billion are Muslims. So mm. does that mean we are wrong and they are all right? Their analogy reflects on what they actually truly believe the Ahmadi is. They mm. play the victim card. I've been watching Razi. Brother, you're in Medina. Uh, Ibn Taymiyyah, brother, I mean, all of that, and just just try to dodge the points. I actually can do a fairly good imitation of him, but I'm just going to be respectful. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, no answer ever given. Uh, he starts, uh, I, I remember very particularly one incident where he was responding to Farid, who was not even on the stream, and not answering the question what was on the table. And, and he says, I want to answer to Farid. Well, Farid is not here. So, well, okay, but you are interrupting me. I'm losing my time. You see, you keep interrupting. You keep pulling the people, saying antagonizing things, so they respond and then make rebuttals and keep avoiding the question. Never one question was answered. Mm -hmm. uh, another point I want to go back and answer to one individual who had, who had come over here, I forget his name. He was very arrogant. There's one thing I noted about them. And this, again, Allah has said in the Quran, there are people who will, who's in Surah Baqarah, who, who will try to please you, who will look very good, but Allah knows what's in their heart and they are the most corrupt. And this charade that they put on, the brother thing and all that, we know what's behind that. When you cannot respect Allah and his prophet, there's no way you're respecting us. You use Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to justify Mirza. I mean, yeah. how on earth? You know how the Sahaba used to address Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Ya Rasulullah, my parents be sacrificed on you. I mean, you love your parents the most. And then you say, I'm going to sacrifice my parents for you, Ya Rasulullah. And then you come here and you use Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life to prove this this psycho guy is, is actually is legit. It's not right. He said another thing. He said, we are more organized. We are in 200 countries. It was a great conversation if he was an app. If he was selling a mobile app, it would be a very, very nice thing to say. We are in 200 countries and growing. 
this isn't how it's supposed to be. You, you're not supposed to count how many people you've converted. The third thing was Razi. He came here after the uh, after the debate with uh, Brother Yemeni, and he starts saying how I defeated him, destroyed him. I was waiting to hear from him. Alhamdulillah, truth prevailed. It was more about him winning, his his, his, his cast winning, his, his thing winning. So this, this entire narrative these guys are building is basically to promote the cult, and that's how they are. I'm, 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 I'm just going to reflect on one more point here that it's not unusual for subcontinent people to have these weird things. Uh, even now, I mean, uh, in Hindu religion, you can find some parallels where people are claiming to be Vishnu and so on and so forth. They, they progressively get worse and worse. Hmm. And I'm, I'm sure if Mirza had lived any longer, he would have probably claimed to be Adam Adha Salam or even higher. Hmm. So, I mean, you can see his disease progressing. I mean, at one time, he, he don't want to have anything Then he want to be, you know, that, that whole thing about Mary, uh, 10 months pregnant, uh, metaphorically, obviously. So they have like bruzi and all those crazy words that they use all the time. So I'm, I'm just coming to the point that he was deeply influenced by Hinduism. Uh, if, if we dig deep into his theologies and his uh, philosophies, you'll find that there's a lot of motivation from Hinduism. The entire brother Adnan had pointed out in a few uh, streams back that the reincarnation concept came from Hinduism, and uh, and it wasn't it wasn't a Muslim thing. And he he came up with this, and he was also deeply motivated. And still today, the the, the Jamaat is using the tactics of the British Raj. I mean, uh, you can see the influence very deeply into them, and you can see everything that they do is basically built on that. And he was he was a deeply motivational uh, uh, person for his group, but he was unable to do that to the larger crowd. So he that's what, what they come up with say. When the prophets came, that's what happened to them. No, not 200 years later. It happened to them initially. Mm. Like maybe in the first 30 days, 100 days. But 200 years later, nobody hated on them. I mean, even the Yahud today have accepted Prophet ﷺ. They don't want to acknowledge it, but they accept him. The thing is, they, they keep saying that we do this because Yahud have done it. The Yahud have done it for a purpose. Yahud was on a book. You are not on any book. You're using our book. Mm. Please call yourself. I think we've lost you there, uh, but uh, just 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 to pick on the point you left at, um, uh, you know, the writings of Mirza to them are as good as the Quran and Sunnah. By the way, okay, they they they, you know, whatever Mirza wrote, okay, they they see those writings as 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 good as Quran and Sunnah. They they obviously because Mirza was speaking from revelation, and if it's revelation. Then a revelation is from Allah, and it's from if it's from Allah, then it's uh, is it's as good as the Quran. Okay, so what Mirza wrote to them is as good as the Quran because Mirza said, "I am writing from revelation." Okay, so yeah, Imtiaz, way over to you. I I so, want I want right? before Imtiaz yeah, comes yeah, in uh, yeah, with respect, yeah, uh, Imtiaz, yeah. I really all admire all your good. knowledge in this area. I have two questions for you in specific terms. You have studied the scriptures, and I have just gone over very briefly on it. We we'll lost you again. Yeah, your connection is uh, not okay. good. Uh, am, yeah. I, am I clear now? Am I clear? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just my question was: Have you ever seen any prophet write about himself? Like, I was six years old. My father appointed me a Farsi teacher, and I and so on. Now, he he keeps um, glamorizing on his own life, and and that's one part of his revelation. Second is that the thing is: Have you ever seen in any book uh, verbatim copy? Of the previous book, because we have Torah and Injil, but Quran does not copy from that. But his revelations, Subhanallah, are as Brother Mansur the other day was reading, is appalling to hear. It's you know, in <laughs> fil Khadian or something like that. I mean, I mean, I mean, if he was in any university, he would be thrown out for plagiarism blatantly. Listen, so please, uh, when, like when, when when Amr bin As went to see Musaylim al Kadab. And, okay, and, and, and Musaylimah said, you know, just like Muhammad had revelation, I also have revelation. So Amr bin As, he said, he asked him to read. And then he read those, that surah, okay, Al-Feel, Mal-Feel, Wa ma Adraka Mal-Feel. <laughs> okay, it was, it was a very funny surah he came up with. And Amr bin As told him, you have read this in front of me, but don't read it in public because people <laughs> will stone you. Oh, okay, really? so, so it's just like that. Every liar who comes to claim prophethood will have something to copy. They, they will copy from something. And every imposter does that. And Mirza was no different.
to Musaylama and others who, who try to do this. If that's why you want to come in. Yeah, Adnan, I just want to mention one thing, uh, which is uh, again one of the lies spread by the Ahmadiyya clergy because the title with the claim for Ghulam Ahmad, they call he was Sultanul Kalm. Okay, he was the king of the pen. Okay, look, Alhamdulillah, we are not sitting in our bedrooms. Okay, we are sitting on a public platform. Alhamdulillah, people are watching from all over the world. I am I sitting in my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, but inshallah, we are live, inshallah. Yeah, so absolutely. I, I, I challenge all the clergy, please come on this platform, produce one page. Just one page from the entire writings of Mirza on any subject. If we cannot produce a 10,000 times better page on that topic from our scholars, okay, we'll say that you have won the battle. Please come on this platform. There is not a single, and inshallah, the atom bomb, inshallah, is ready here. The intellectual atom bomb, inshallah. I'm going to expose today. And when I will come to that point, there will be PG-18. Okay, because kids cannot handle that stuff. Okay, I will expose today that what kind of Sultanul <coughs> Kalam Mirza was. Okay, number one. Number two, I am still waiting. Here is my claim. Mirza was a dishonest academic. He was intellectually, academically dishonest. He was changing the, uh, the, the text of the books of other people. Why? Just to prove his point. I am sitting here, inshallah, as long as I have to sit and I challenge all the Ahmadiyya. Okay, please come on the platform and ask me to produce the evidence. I want you to come here, okay? Because what happened is now they are watching all the stream, okay? They are waiting for any of the points where they can come and at least say something and then they want to have the whole stream about that point. It will not happen today. Okay. Today we are going to expose Mirza's writings that what kind of Sultanul Kalam he was. Okay. Because Razi claims in many of his, you know, videos that he wrote some sort of tafsir of Suratul Fatiha, which was amazing. Razi, please bring that today. Quote the ayah that this ayah of Suratul Fatiha, look at this tafsir, inshallah. All of these are books of tafsir, inshallah, here. We'll see today that how we, how you can even dare to say that Mirza ever did any. He was <laughs> plagiarizing. He was taking things from other people's writing without even acknowledging that. And this is called academic dishonesty. Okay, if Mirza was writing it today, the, people would do a case against him. Okay, to use their writings. Okay, for the copyright uh, claim. So what I'm trying to say is that Mirza Ghulam. He has never produced a single argument, a single, not 10, a single argument against Christianity or against Hinduism, which can be shown. The look, this look at the strength of the argument, it destroyed them. Wallahi, never. I would say that Sheikh Ahmad Didad Rahimahullah and Zakir Nakra, may, may Allah preserve him, they have done a way better because their work is published. People can see. Thousands of people coming to Islam to, yeah. by the soundness of the argument. And guess what? When Mirza was producing the argument, his own people were leaving his religion. That's the comparison. This was the kind of argument he has. Now, I want to read one reference because the topic is how he was loyal to the Britons, okay? The colonizers, not today's Britain. Okay, now look at this one. It is uh, Ruhani Fazain. Volume number 13 and page number 343. Look at what he said. He said that Main zor se kehta hun ke, main zor se kehta ke, uh, government ki khidmat ka elan, uh, gor, uh, sorry main zor se kehta hun aur main dawe se government ki khidmat mein elan karta hun ke ba etbar e mazhabi usool ke मुसलमानों के तमाम फिरकों में से गवर्नमेंट का अव्वल दर्जा का वफादार और जानिसार यही नया फिरका है यही नया फिरका है एंड देन ही सेज जिसके उसूलों में कोई बात भी गवर्नमेंट के लिए खतरनाक नहीं है अल्लाह लुक एट व्हाट ही इज सेइंग ही इज सेइंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल अ प्रॉफिट ऑफ अल्लाह इज नॉट गोइंग टू कम टू मेक अ फिरका ओके and Mirza Ghulam Ahmad is acknowledging, and when he put his application, by the way, he mentioned his Jamaat as a firqa. Okay, and the Ahmadis are saying to us about the firq and all of that. 
brothers, a prophet or Isa alayhi salam is not going to create a new firqa. Okay. Isa, the whole ummah is waiting to be united under the banner of Mahdi and Isa alayhi salam. Okay. And this single thing is enough proof that Mirza was a liar. And then he says that there is no other Muslim firqa which is more loyal to the Britain colonizers and more uh, obedient to the British colonizer and more John Isar. Look at this one, John Isar. He's, he's saying that we are going, we are willing to sacrifice our lives. For who? Not for Allah and his messenger. No, no, no. For the Britons. Wallah, he's, 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 he's a Messiah. Messiah is saying, and by the way, at that time, at that time, by and large, Britons were Christians, by and large. Adam, I'm right, Adnan, by? 100%. 100%. He is saying, yeah. he is saying, he is saying to the Christians that I am going to sacrifice my life for you. Subhanallah, is he a Messiah? And he he came to he came to undo the cross, and the biggest representative of the cross in the world in the 19th century was the British Empire. Yeah. It was the British Empire that took the missionaries to Africa. Yeah. It was the British Empire that brought the missionaries to India. It yeah. was the British Empire that brought the missionaries to many other parts of the world, remote areas, including Australia. <laughs> it was the British Empire that was bringing these missionaries to some Southeast Asia, you know, Pacific Islands. It was the British Empire that represented the cross. Okay. And Mirza, instead of breaking that cross, okay, what is he doing? He's cementing the cross. He's saying, my new firqa, my new cult, in other words, he's actually himself calling it firqa. He's calling his own jamaat, his own followers, firqa. Firqa, which means like uh, a cult or a group or, or a group. Okay, my new group is more loyal to the British colonial establishment and uh, 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 than all other Muslims. And he's saying there is no threat to this tyrannical, genocidal, oppressive, racist power from this new group there is no threat that's why you know i don't you know when i see the ahmadis and the qadianis uh, singing praise of uh, uh, you know uh, of colonialism and even some of the the wrong foreign policies of western governments and even israel the actions of israel when I see them, when I see the Qadianis and Ahmadis standing next to these people, these oppressive powers and the oppressive policies, it doesn't surprise me because it's part of their religion. The whole world, the whole world is standing on one side on the issue of Gaza and what uh, Israel is doing in Gaza, bombing civilians specifically. The whole world, the whole world is on one side. And then we have Qadianis, some of them on Twitter. Okay, they are basically justifying the crimes of the state of Israel. Some of them are making statements. And in fact, when we post something on Twitter and social media to raise awareness, you will see them in the comment section commenting, challenging us. Challenging us. Okay, instead of supporting us in virtue and good, they are standing against us. They are standing against the rest of the Ummah. As if not only that this firqa or this group is not only uh, against the Quran and Sunnah uh, on issues we have already discussing, but even politically, even politically, they pose a challenge to the rest of the Muslim Ummah. They stand on the other side of the fence always, like they did in uh, colonial Britain, uh, sorry, colonial India. In colonial India, the Qadianis were standing with the colonial establishment of India against all Indians, all Indians, Hindus, Muslims, and Christians. And Christians, Indians did not want Britain to rule over them. Qadianis were the only people who wanted Britain to remain in India for a thousand years. Okay, why? And you know, Adnan, Adnan hmm. bhai, because you mentioned this point that he was supposed to destroy the cross, okay, to finish the cross. And I'm going to quote Imran by maybe you, you can take a note of this one. If Ahmadis come, maybe you can ask them this question. Because one of the biggest problem, the biggest problem Christianity has, they started to attribute divinity. 
and they started to say that Jesus is son of God. This was their major misconception till today. And Alhamdulillah, Quran clarified that. Okay, now, this Messiah is saying, this is uh, in the collection of his Ilham. It's called Tazkira. It is the old edition. And this is page number 345. He said, this is the Ilham of Mirza, quote to quote. He said, Anta minni bi manzilatin awladi. Allah is saying to, allegedly, Allah is saying to Mirza that you are to me in the status of my awlad, my children. And then he said, Anta minni wa ana minka. Allah is saying to Mirza, allegedly, that you are from me and I am from you. Now, obviously, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is divine. Okay. If Mirza is from Allah, who is he? Okay. So basically the concept of divinity of Christ, which is the major disagreement between these two faiths, Christianity and Islam. And which this, Quran is, this, is Christian, like, this is Christian, this is Christian writing. Yeah, okay? exactly. He's, he's writing like a Christian from the first and the second century. Exactly. Where, so he yeah. is, he, the, this Messiah, he was supposed to clarify for the people in which they were mistaken. But guess what? He is, he is further solidifying their claim and giving them more evidence to stay on their falsehood. So what type of Messiah he was? Absolutely. Absolutely. He was clearly not a Messiah. Okay, He was trying to uh, basically uh, mostly please the government, the colonial government of India. And he was asking for protection and favors from that colonial government of India. Okay, So anyone who has any sense of honor and dignity, anyone who has any sense of justice for the indigenous people of the lands that were colonized by colonial powers, okay, will see through the, 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 the sham and the facade of this cult, okay, and the, uh, and the teachers, okay. This is why we have to talk more about this so that not only that the Ahmadis who are following this cult wake up, but those people they are preaching to also are made aware of the, the, the works and the workings of this particular group of people. who and, and missionaries, you know, we know that they know that Mirza was a liar. We know this. We know this, that they know Mirza was a liar. That's why they play so many games with the statements and don't answer direct questions. You know, when someone asks me a question about Islam, I'm at Speaker's Corner, okay? And someone asks me a direct question about Islam. And if I start to avoid that question and go around the world, okay? For example, one of the most difficult questions that comes to us very often is, why did the Prophet marry Aisha at nine years, eight, at nine, nine years old, right? Mm -hmm. We answer that question directly. You've seen our conversations. Why did the Prophet fought his, uh, why did he fight his wars? We answer the question directly. Okay. Why did the Prophet, Sallam, for example, made, 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 why did he make a statement? We answer the question directly. We don't run away from questions. We don't go around the bush like Christian missionaries do. Christian missionaries, you talk to them about the Trinity, they'll go around the world. Christian missionaries, you talk to them about the divinity of Jesus Christ like Hashem and Mansoor have been doing for years. You watch their discussions and the debates. You will see the Christian missionaries going around the world to avoid the question, a very direct, simple question. Just like that, Qadianis and the missionaries, uh, you know, they will go around the world. They will not answer direct questions. You know, when this happens, there's something psychological going on, something in the back of their heads, in the back of their minds. Maybe they don't realize. They know they are upon falsehood. But you they know, lie to themselves. They yeah. lie to themselves. They lie to themselves yeah. thinking that they are defending the truth. But they know they are upon falsehood. This is why they go around the world. We, we don't know, feel that. Yeah. yeah. You know, Nanvai, look, mm. if the common Ahmadis, if they mm. want to stay blind, it is their choice. We cannot yeah. obviously force them. But yeah. if, any, if, if any Ahmadi is listening, I'm going to give you something in less than a minute. And they will serve for you enough of a criteria to see if he was a liar or truthful. Adnan, before you came in, we quoted one reference. And this is Ruhani Khazain, volume 19, page 98. Mirza said, Agar Quran ne mera naam ibn Maryam nahi rakha, to Now everybody knows 
Quran never said that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad's name is Ibn Maryam. Quran never said it. So the case is finished. The case is closed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This is, this is, I mean, look, these are some of the cases and the absurdities. Uh, achha, Quran ne chalo, if, you, if Quran has named you uh, Ibn Maryam, for example, uh, first thing we have to ask is, it's a basic question. Was Mirza born of Maryam? Because this is a very clear biological reference. Okay, Here, Ibn is not a spiritual reference. It's not a spiritual reference. It's a physical reference to Maryam alayhi salam. Ibn Maryam means the one who was born of the womb of Maryam. Surah Maryam describes the birth of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam is the one who came from Maryam alayhi salam. He is the one who was born. So when Mirza claims to be Ibn Maryam, he is actually without realizing, claiming a biological relationship with Maryam. That he is a biological son of Maryam alayhi salam, which he was not. His mother was Chirag Bibi. Okay? And his father was Ghulam Murtaza. Okay? So, so this, is, this is very, very clear that this man was a liar, a psychopathic, okay? a sociopathic liar. Okay, he was so such such a liar that he himself had had deluded himself thinking that he's not lying. Okay, because his lies, he's claiming to be Christian as well. He said, "I am the Otar, the reincarnation of Christian." Okay, so I am even he's claiming to be Christian as well. Okay, and you know what? No wonder the Qadiani. Sorry, that's that's Krishna for those people who haven't got it. Yeah. Yeah, Krishna is basically an idol. Hindus worship. He's a Hindu god. He's a Hindu god. He's a Hindu. If you ask the Hare Krishnas, he's their supreme god. And exactly, and there is no evidence that he ever existed. There is no evidence that he ever existed. This is a mythical figure the Hindus have come to believe in, and they have made up this story uh, because we have no evidence. We have no reasons to believe that these stories are true. Right, but he claims he he gives him a physical uh, reality. He goes, I am. The reincarnation of Christian. That, that's why in Lahore, I posted the evidence on my Twitter. In Lahore, okay, Qadiani Jamaat celebrated the birthday of Christian together with, with Hindus. And they invited a Hindu professor to deliver a lecture from the Hindu perspective on the virtues of Christian. And guess what? As Brother Hashim pointed out, Hindus worship him as God. Hindus worship him as God. So Qadiani, knowing well that Hindus worship Krishan, put himself as a reincarnation uh, forward to Hindus so that they can start worshipping him. Otherwise, what would be the purpose? What would be the, what, If he's the reincarnation, I mean, Qadiani's come back to be fair with them. They say, no, 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 no. This was a misapplication. This was just like the Christians turned Jesus into a God. The Hindus turned Krishan into a God while he was not God. So Kadiani, Mirza Kadiani wasn't claiming to be God. He was simply claiming to be a reincarnation. But this guy is clearly a sociopath. He's a psychopath. Okay? He's claiming to be so many different things. He claimed to be the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? He claimed to be Krishan. He claimed to be uh, Jesus or the, the promised Messiah. He claimed to be the Mahdi. Okay? He claimed to be a lot of things. You know, uh, uh, because uh, this topic, Adnan, because you mentioned this point that how, you know, for example, like I just quoted before that he says that if Quran has not named me as Ibn Maryam, I'm a liar. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to quote just one more example because, you know, some of the things, they are like mathematically, you know, a common Ahmadis, they can investigate them maybe in, in half an hour and they can, if they want to accept the truth, it's up to them. I quote just one more example which is so conclusive, so clear-cut. And this one is Ruhani Khazain, volume 3, page 140. So look what he said. He said that, uh, He said that, He said that, He said that, which, which ilham? Inna anzalnahu kareebam min al -qadiyan. Allah gave, allegedly, Allah sent a revelation to him that we have sent this close to the Qadiyan. Okay, kareebam min al -qadiyan. And then he says, Jis roz wo ilham e muzkura mujhe, uh, mujhe yaad aya, jis me Qadiyan me nazil honne ka zikr tha, is roz kashfi torpe. Now, this is not the opinion of Mirza. 
please listen very carefully kashfi tor it is the something is being revealed to him kashfi tor pe mujhe dikhaya gaya ke mere bade bhai sahib marhoom mirza ghulam qadir मेरे करीब बैठ के आवाजें बुलंद कुरान शरीफ पढ़ रहे थे और पढ़ते पढ़ते उन्होंने इन फिकरात को पढ़ा इन ना अनजल ना हु करीब मिनल कादियान तो मैंने सुन के तजुब किया कि क्या कादियान का जिक्र भी कुरान में है तब उन्होंने कहा कि देखो ये लिखा हुआ है तब मैंने नजर डाल के जो देखा तो मालूम हुआ कि फिल हकीकत नाट मेटाफरिकली फिल हकीकत ओके फिल हकीकत कुरान शरीफ के दाएं सफे पे शायद निसफ के करीब मैंने ये इल्हामी इबारत लिखी हुई मौजूद पाई तब मैंने अपने दिल में कहा कि हाँ वाकई तौर पे कुरान में वाकई तौर पे कादयान का नाम कुरान शरीफ में दर्ज है मैंने कहा कि तीन शहरों का नाम एजाज के साथ कुरान शरीफ में दर्ज है मक्का मदीना और कादयान नो दिस इज नॉट हिज ओपिनियन नॉट इजतहादी गलती not error of interpretation he is giving you it is being revealed to him okay now everybody has quran in their home every ahmadi has quran in the home please go to your murabbis take your quran with you ask him that on which page close to the half of the page this thing is mentioned inna anzalnahu qareeb min al qadiyan it is not there obviously then it is a conclusive proof that the ilham or revelation mirza was receiving was from shaitan yes it's clear proof yes what else you want yes and i and, and and you know what i wouldn't be surprised if if mirza was having visions of shaitan uh, putting all this information oh, sorry upon by there are lots of people waiting in the back so okay, let let's me go. let me say assalamu alaikum to muslim ali and then take another okay uh, assalamu alaikum i just wanted to add one small point if you allow me uh, hmm. we only take about a second I, I I just wanted to say that uh, I have watched all the debates and uh, also been following Dr. Sarah and so on. I have come to the conclusion uh, many years ago. A good friend of mine is a mathematician. Gave us a problem. It's very quick. Uh, he said that three ants they are lined up together one by one. On the right hand side, ant says there are two to my left, and the center says one on my right, one on my left. The far left says there are one on my right, one on my left. We spent like uh, maybe thirty minutes trying to figure it out, and we couldn't. the answer was the third ant is lying the the moral of the story was if if one person is lying no matter how much scientific knowledge you put into it you will waste your time and mirza was lying and i hope these people understand that no amount of bruzy justification or or metaphorical will will save them they know once he has said something it has to be justified they will use allah or rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam auzubillah and and they keep doing this Uh, even Ibn Taymiyyah or anyone, if if they can find a Christian reference, they will try to bring it in and say, "See, it works for us." So I leave with that. And thank you. You're doing an amazing job, and uh, may Allah bless you. And thank you so much, and uh, for giving me the time as well. Salam alaikum. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you so much. That was a good point about the ants. All uh, right. Who do we have next? Mirza Asim. So he's he's a he's not a he's not a Qadi, and he's he's a Muslim. It's just that his name starts with Mirza. <laughs> yeah, we have many Mirzas uh, who are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Actually, you know, Mirza Qadiani put all Mirzas in a very situation, difficult situation, using his name anyway. But Asim, can you hear me? If you are speaking, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Oh, okay. Assalamu alaikum to everyone. Alaikum assalam. Yeah. So thank you for your advice, Brother Hashim, <laughs> that you gave me in the chat. Uh, uh, but yeah. So can can I put those points here? Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're free to. Okay, okay. So since since uh, the Ahmadis are not the here, point, the point he's uh, referring to in the private chat is that he called himself a devil's advocate. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. many Muslims use this phrase without realizing the devil is adubu mubin. He's our mm -hmm. greatest enemy. Allah says. So please mm -hmm. do not ally with him with this terminology. It's yeah. not from the Muslim. This is from the kafir. Yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. I I have basically. I know you. You did it um, without intending that, but okay, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, just trying to discourage you. people who use this phrase "devil's advocate." Yeah, it it actually came from the Christians, uh, "advocatus diaboli." You know, they used it as a term to argue, uh, you know, hypothetically for yeah. the for the devil. You know, when they were trying to prove their religion right. But anyway, continue, inshallah. Yeah. Okay. So, brother Imtiaz, you were mentioning uh, one statement by Mr. Ghulam Ahmad. 
that um, he was saying that I am from Allah and Allah is from me, something like that. If I if I uh, if I'm correct. So, but if we see like similar statements are there in the different Sufi traditions, like in the books. For example, I I mean I don't want to quote the book because it's a very famous book by one of the you know uh, Jamaat, which is very very uh, popular in in the world, uh, the Sufi Sufi Jamaat. So I don't want to quote. Quote it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. That's a point you want to discuss. Quote it. Yeah, so Fadail Amal, like, is, is is one of the very famous book, which is basically okay. by the. Can you specify exactly what it says in there? So this, like, like uh, in in Urdu, it's it's mentioned there, like, "Main tujh me se hoon aur tu mujh me se hai, ham dono ek dusre me se hai aur shrik dar shrik." Something like that. Not exactly the statement I I remember, but it is it is uh, exactly on the same lines. That, and who, that who said it? Who said those words? Uh, it is it is written in 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 Fadail I, so, no, I mean, who, who I quoted think, this? The the Fadail Amal is written by um, I think it is Molana uh, Zakaria. Uh, I think which, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which 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 page? I mean, look. First of all, uh, not by, Let me let, let me let me say something with regard okay. to what brother has mentioned. Brother Asif, first of all, Jazakallah Khair for coming. Brother May Allah bless you and reward you, brother. Brother, look. It's very simple. Hmm. Obviously, according to now, I'm going to give you the answer which we are going to give to the Ahmadi Jamaat, okay? okay? Because they believe that the true teachings of Quran and Sunnah they have disappeared, right? And now mm -hmm. Allah sent Mirza to revive the true teachings of Islam. When the Qadianis, when Mirza, when all of they are holding on to all of these books from the Sufia, it shows a problem. The problem is. He was not receiving any way from Allah. He was just using things from here and there to prove his point, right? So basically, I would first of all the the policy of this uh, this this platform is we are not going to say anything against against any of our Muslim scholars, their books, okay? Because they have the right to explain what is written in their books, and inshallah, if you have this question. You have every right to go to the scholars of that Jamaat or uh, their scholarship. They explain for you. In this platform, we are exposing Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. Now look at this one. When we quote our scholars that it is Ijma, it is consensus that Isa salam is alive in the heaven and he will descend in the later days. What they reply? No, 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 no. Come to the Quran. Don't quote the scholars. They may be wrong. This is what they say. Okay. And in this case, when they have to establish something for which they are unable to find any evidence from Quran and Sunnah, then they go to the Sufiya, their books, this and that. It shows that how poor they are in terms of establishing their point. Because the job of Ghulam Ahmad was, because according to them, according to them, regardless of whichever Jamaat, we are all misguided. Okay, we are all upon misguidance. And he came to correct us. He did not come to quote from our books. Okay. And this thing he was quoting to prove his point of bruise and zeal and whatnot. But the main, the principal answer, brother, is whichever scholar of any of, of the Muslim Ummah they have said anything, they never believe in any zilli and buruzi prophet after Nabi Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the key point. Because whatever they are quoting. And they are taking them out of con. For example, they quote Ibn Arbi. Okay, they quote Ibn Arbi said in, in, in Fatuhate Makkiya, such and such. Today I have reference ready for them. Come and quote now Ibn Arbi. So, my brother, what happens is they always give this, you know, uh, 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 this impression that there are other people, the other scholars, they agree with them. But when you go and read the books of those scholars, what you discover is that they are lying. And same is the case here as well. We even don't want to know that what is the interpretation of this text that you just quoted from the Fazali Amal. But I can tell you one thing. I can tell you one thing with full confidence. There is not a single person from Jamaatul Tabligh who believe in any Zilli Buzi prophet. Yeah. And that uh, is the main point. Yeah, but brother Imtaz, you are actually right. But the problem is like, uh, okay, maybe it's a, it's a long debate because I also studied a couple of things on this topic. But uh, studies means I I, I listened uh, to, to a couple of scholars. So basically, they say say that like uh, the Sufi tradition is is something they say this is be between Khasul Khawas. 
so they they don't want to open this so the the crime they attach with mirza gulam ahmed is he actually uh, opened this uh, you know discussion to awamun nas uh, but in actually uh, the sufias believe in this tradition of the of of the prophets coming in 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 uh, in, in in our umma so again like uh, as you said like maybe we shouldn't go uh, I think you are no, 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 all over brother, the place brother brother, yeah, I want to, brother, yeah. brother please Mr. Asim, yeah. please, please. Yeah. I want to correct the records. Yeah. Our brothers, Prajmatu Tablig, they are the ones who have this book, Fazale Amal. They are our brothers. Alhamdulillah. They do not believe in any such thing, Zilli, Buruzi, Prophet, or what not. However, if this this particular text or any text which you want to understand that why this text is there, what it means, you have every right to approach to them. and they will explain to you but in principle i can give you a principle answer alhamdulillah we are in contact with the scholars from tablighi jamaat as well they do not believe in any zilli buruzi or any kind of prophethood okay then your question is valid that how to explain this text your question is valid okay they will explain for you and they have done by the way and if after this stream if you go and try to find that how to explain they have explained it already but the principle is what mirza was trying to deduce from their books it was a lie upon those scholars it was lie on their books because they never ever preached believed or propagated a zilli or a buruzi prophet okay okay thank you uh, uh one one more question like it's not a question so you in the last uh, last stream you mentioned like one uh, ex qadiani uh, brother he He accepted Islam. So, just to boost our iman, can you explain a bit, uh, like his uh, his status within the Ahmadi community, like how uh, big his status? Uh, don't don't reveal the details if if you don't want to. But just just for 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 our iman boosting, if you can. My brother, first of all, when it comes to the status in terms of religion, worldly mm. status does not matter, brother. Okay, even if. if a person is having no worldly status okay allah so I, i give you simple example my brother okay abu zar ghaffari radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he was from one of the sahaba he was a very poor sahabi okay and he is been given that his zuhud his taqwa his fakr is like the zuhud and taqwa of a prophet so what i'm trying to say brother is when it comes to worldly status it does not matter what matters is what matters is Okay, what was the evidence which convinced them that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was a liar? That's the main question. Okay, Alhamdulillah. The uh, the answer is these streams have revealed Alhamdulillah since since beginning the last two and a half months that Mirza Ghulam Ahmad has no foundation for his claim, and this was something which convinced them because they made this choice that we don't want to stay in in, in this darkness and to be staying. to pretend to be we are not listening alhamdulillah when they started to listen when they did a bit of research they discovered the truth so i would say with all respect my brother worldly status do not matter you know the hadith my brother that the poor people of this umma they will enter into jannah before the rich people right so brother when it comes to our deen and jannah and haq then what matters is evidence alhamdulillah they looked at the evidence it convinced them and they left ahmadiyya no definitely you are right but when a, a person with a high status enters into islam for example uh, um, umar bin khattab when he entered into islam so basically muslim felt very powerful so that's why i, I was asking like what is the worldly status because i mean generally you are right but sometimes it's very very good uh, to know like uh, I I know one person from Germany, Sheikh Rahil. I guess he he accepted Islam from the community, and he was he was in the key position there in the Jamaat. So that basically boosted iman of so many Muslims. So that's why I'm asking. But if you don't want to reveal that, okay, that's not. Brother, when the person is ready, they will reveal it themselves. I agree with you. You have a good you have a good point to make. I I am not. What I'm trying to say is that in these matters, especially with these cults, you know what matters is the evidence. And well, like like I said before, brother. if somebody wants to stay in ignorance they have all the right okay we, we can't force them but guess what if they want to really truly investigate it will not take more than half an hour to know that mirza kulam ahmad was a liar 
okay yeah thank you very much that's it i wanted to say and and ask thanks a lot all right thank you thank, you, thank you very much brother thank you thanks for coming to take a moment to just re re-emphasize a point the brother adnan made that all the points being spoken about that the, 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 when we say Ahmadis are not being truthful and honest, not looking at the references correct, this is specifically for the missionaries and the Murabis. So we know that there are very sincere, you know, straightforward, you know, people who are dear to their faith, who are the, the average Ahmadi in the community who may not have come across this information that Brother MTRs and Brother Adnan have provided over these weeks. And really, it's to you that we, uh, we appeal that you look at this information and you decide for yourself. Is this person someone who is uh, going to fulfill the criteria of being a prophet in any way whatsoever? And the answer is, is clear. I think there's no doubt about that. And just to emphasize, if you need help, because we know that there is a lot of control, we know that there are people who find it very difficult to step away from this. If you need help, please contact Dowerwise. They'll be able to put you in touch with people who have gone through similar journeys to help you to extract yourself from this cult so that you can come to true Islam, inshallah. So you're not on your own. We know what you're thinking and feeling because the information is over. Even me listening to this information, I find it overwhelming that how can anybody accept this? We know that the evidence is overwhelming and you're not alone. And there are brothers who are here to help. Uh, we can get you in touch with whoever you need to be, inshallah. 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 So take the next uh, guest. Mohsin, I'm bringing you in. Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, and uh, a very nice stream. Uh, it's unfortunate the Qadianis did not join, but um, there is a point uh, which been consistently been raised that you know they are uh, colonial sympathizers. They they will accept Ul al Amr as kafirs also. And uh, recently, like you know, in uh, in I would not say in direct terms. The thing has been pointed out, or maybe I missed it, that you know they are supporting Israel indirectly because they have the biggest uh, mosque in Haifa and uh, whatever. There, every major ceremony in Israel is held where you know other religious denominations are invited. They're also you know their representatives all there, but their Mirza Masroor, he recently uh, you know in a khutbah he said this the following thing. Which is, uh, it's an absolutely, you know, damning condemnation. And uh, no Muslim after should have a doubt that what does Jamaat say. And this is coming from the mouth of the Khalifa. Uh, Azur uh, says, uh, also mentioned the conflict that is taking place between Israel and Palestine. And at this time, as imbalanced and disproportionate in every sense. The Palestinians should mend their ways. Bow, bow before God and beg for his help and implore for his mercy and recognize the Imam of the present day. I mean, the thing is indirectly and a lot of Qadianis are running around and say that whenever there's a conflict or wherever there is a catastrophe um, in the Muslim world, it is because Allah is punishing us because we do not accept Mirza Ghulam Muhammad as a prophet. They, they say it in no ambiguous terms. They say, they openly say it. And uh, this is the worldview they hold. So, you know, I mean, uh, and this, I'm sure the statement I made is quite imp imp uh, explicit that that's what he's implying. Okay, accepting the Imam and no statement for the Israelis that okay, zalim hai, these people are oppressors and so and so forth. That they are uh, so, and it's like if the Palestinians wanted, uh, they could have easily left the land. They could have, uh, you know, uh, uh, accepted as refugees the Israel pro conflict or wouldn't solve, but they are staying as a resistance, and he is calling the and he is put framing it in a way that as if it's a azab of Allah which is coming over there. So this is the statement they have. After this, how can you know? I mean, what legitimacy they have uh, left? Yeah, I, I still can't get my head around how they convince themselves. Yes. That a non-Muslim can be early Amr in that uh, surah in, in, in the Quran. You know, it, it's crazy. It's mind-boggling. And uh, well, one final comment I just wanted to make is uh, just this is a bit off-topic, but uh, just you know, given the context, because obviously 
uh, any muslim with even a mustard seed of iman cannot uh, sit upright or without pain with you know with the sort of genocide which taking place so with that i just want to say that see uh, uh, any all the muslim listening and even the hadith was also mentioned by that but the qadiani uh, who was uh, you, you, we were having a conversation with that you know then there is uh, there will be uh, khilafa uh, sorry it was uh, nabuwa will be there then there will be uh, khilafa the rashda then uh, then there will be malukiyat and then there will be colonialism and then again the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and minaj nabuwa will come back so this is a glad tidings for the muslim that in the future our uh, you know inshallah we will be coming back to that it is meant to, it is it's a destiny but it's not going to that allah taala is just going to you know like really send it down from heaven we have to work for it and we have to have the desire that we establish our own political social economic system and if we had that we won't be having such you know like our brothers would not be butchered this way if we had that critical mass in a say in the world i i feel, uh, if given their 2 billion and the marshal of the resources we have in the muslim world in terms of agriculture to uh you know i mean uh, in terms of uh, energy and the human capital we have and if we had the st- if we could have really web- like you know uh if we could really tap into the potential i couldn't see a non muslim even touch a human hair on any muslim let alone butcher you know so effortlessly so conveniently so uh, just uh, if you could add a point to this man by you want to add something I know I, I I agree that anyone who at this stage is going to make statements that are um not in support of the Palestinians is essentially a genocide and a massacre that's going on and then claim to be somebody who is uh, following in the footsteps of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and for his ummah then I have no no words for this sort of individual um and this is for me if, if any Ahmadiyas out there who's seeing this it should be the nail in the coffin for accepting the the so called imam of the age as anyone of any authority because when you see the oppressed being massacred and you speak against them rather than for them then you're not uh, you're not upon the truth subhanallah absolutely i mean if they if they did it for somebody who killed 100 million you know regardless of whether they were muslims or non muslims that it stops shows that you know even if hitler was there they will call him a ulul amr you know it's just that bad unfortunately so whether it's benjamin netanyahu or you know queen victoria or hmm. hitler as long as they let them pray you know carry on their ahmadiyya activities then hmm. they will call him you know someone from authority amongst you and this is clearly clearly wrong from all and every angle Oh, I see Bashir Bhai is in the back. Assalamu alaikum Bashir Bhai. Welcome to the panel. Oh, uh, welcome salam. Um how's it going brothers? Assalamu alaikum brother. You well? Doing all right. Doing all right. Uh continue. Sorry to have interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm going to add uh, Omar next. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh am I audible? Yes. Uh, I apologize for any background noise. No, yeah, so uh, I just want to add one more point. I think uh, yeah. this haven't Sorry, brought Omar, up. Uh, Omar, by just one second, just want to invite uh, Dr. Izhar Khan to the panel. Salam alaikum, Dr. Sab. You are muted. Wa alaikum salam. How are you guys? Salam alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Um, I've been watching. Thank you, Jazakallah. And I've been watching uh, <clears throat> most of uh, today's live stream. It's interesting. I just will make a couple of points if you allow me. Yeah, Omar, is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go on, doctor. Yeah. So essentially, um, I also went through those references that um, Imtiaz by earlier produced, particularly about uh, the. Uh, contradictions and the contradictory ages the um, that are given in various writings of Mirza Ghulam Ahmad uh, about uh, Hazrat Isa's age at death um and i also was aware of the 
uh, his writing about Hazrat Musa being alive. In fact, if I'm not wrong, in one place he writes that not only is Hazrat Musa al alive, but every year he comes with 10,000 followers and performs the Hajj. I will be able to get that uh, reference, hopefully. Uh, and I, I think uh, Imtiaz Bhai probably is aware of that. The fact that the Ahmadis are so conspicuous by their absence tonight is very revealing. And I know that the Ahmadis have been given, because some of my family is still Ahmadi, uh, they have been sent an email to watch, um, what's his name, Razi's channel is called The True Islam, I think. Because I think its ratings are pretty low. And Ahmadis are flocking to your channel, Alhamdulillah. And I really would again, as I have always done, and it's like beating an old drum, for my Ahmadi friends, brothers and sisters and family to kindly read and not to have a preconceived idea if they watch this live stream. <laughs> I have, alhamdulillah, got to know Imtiaz Bhai and I can vouch for his honesty, uh, his sincerity and his purity of heart. And uh, I, again, each time I speak to him or contact him, I ask him to pray for my family. So uh, I'm really grateful for that. With regards to the, there was a chap called Huck Wala, I think, or I can say, apologies yeah. if I've got the name wrong. Uh, I felt sorry for him. I think what he was trying to say was, and it actually did not cut the mustard. What he was trying to say was that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed has tried to tell us that look, if you believe Isa is alive, you will also have to believe that Musa is alive. That's not the case when you read it, even in its proper context. And it's something that's like a hidden gem within the text, gem in terms of making us aware of the contradictory nature of the Ahmadi religious doctrine. And the fact that Murabis aren't here tonight is almost certainly because they have been told not to engage which may uh, is the likelihood, as I said, almost certainly, I don't want to be accused of uh, being a liar, but that's the only logical conclusion I can come to because I was hoping that they would come and enlighten us about these contradictions. And lastly, I too, when I was engaging with Murabbis, when I was still in Ahmadi, I sincerely engaged with them. They used to have a, like an ad called Ask a Murabbi and I contacted two of the Murabis, and unfortunately they were not able to satisfy my questions and give me proper answers. Then one Murabi once phoned me about another matter and he wasn't aware, he's a, he's a kind of known to the family, he wasn't aware that I was contemplating leaving the Jamaat. So he said, don't worry, I'll, I'll phone and find out. So I think he probably made some inquiries about me and then uh, I, I never heard from him, just like I have not had any answer from the letter I wrote to Mirza Saab. So, is our, wife, uh, is, our, is our wife, if you want to note this reference, it is Ruhani Khazain, volume 17, page 101. So, Mirza said that, ek, so volume 17 is our wife and page 101. Mirza said okay. that, a hadith bhi gawa hai, ke Musa har saal 10,000 Exactly. Mashallah, your resourcefulness is just fantastic. Um, but I had read it sometime, a long time ago. We used to have a family WhatsApp group in which there were a lot of Ahmadis. And uh, as we were discussing these things, they just dropped one by one. They left the group in disgust. But, you know, I never have abused anyone in my life. There was nothing uh, derogatory that I said about that, and I still don't. In fact, I've just had a very interesting discussion with a man who's contemplating leaving Ahmadiyat. I can't divulge his identity, but he's in America. And he told me that, um, um, I said, well, why are you still in the Jamaat? He said, well, he had published something. <laughs> and um, initially, the Jamaat hailed him as a great guy because, you know, the Jamaat always likes to advertise uh, successful people. Um, and those, he's also a successful person. 
but in it, there was uh, he had written something that questioned the veracity of Mirza Saab's claim, and that was it. They fell on him like a ton of bricks, <laughs> as they often do. So um, I told him that, you know, it's up to you and Allah to decide what you want to do. And lastly, uh, I think Brother Mohsen, who I f always find is very enlightening and he is very sensible um, and reasonable. He mentioned the Israeli thing and that worries me a lot. For example, he's correct that Mirza, Saab had, Mirza Masur Saab had said that if these people recognize the Imam of the time, then they will get, uh, you know, they will be helped. And it is only in one occasion, he said, it is only through the prayers of Ahmadis that the Palestinians can. They've got a certain thing about the Palestinians. And is that, that is why, very I, unfortunate. Is that why, uh, before, I, I just want to say something on this point, if you, if you allow me, is it okay? Exactly, of course. Okay, now, uh, brothers, if, if Ahmadi uh, so-called caliph is saying that they have to accept the Imam or Khalifa, let me give him the right advice. He should give a plan, a pathway to the people of Palestine. That if you accept me as a caliph, this is what I have a plan or a roadmap for the liberation of Jerusalem and for the liberation of Baitul Maqdas. And then we can see, because everybody can say anything. Okay. So I would, I would invite the Ahmadiyya community that if your caliph is genuine in this thing, he must give them a roadmap. Okay, if you accept me, this will happen. And then we'll see that what he says. Yes, exactly. And one of the, uh, there is no roadmap. There is, he's got no plan. Uh, <laughs> he lives in Surrey and uh, uh, in the suburbs of London. <laughs> and he lives a very lavish lifestyle. I can tell you that. The um, point, I, uh, the other point about this I was going to make is there is a very prominent Ahmadi. Our brothers and sisters should be aware of him. His name is Lord Tariq of Wimbledon. Now, Lord Tariq of Wimbledon is not just an ordinary Ahmadi. He hosts and or used to host the flagship Ahmadi MTA program called Faith Matters, in which people ask questions. This Lord Ahmad also is, these are non-elected people appointed to the House of Lords. And he um, has um, recently tweeted full support of Israel, okay, even though it's from a government standpoint, but he is a minister, he didn't have to do that, but he has done that. Not only that, in 2017, he made a visit to Israel, where much to my shock and chagrin, he posed with a woman called Ailid Shakid. Now, if you don't know about Ailid Shakid, you can Google her. She's a notorious Zionist who has been on record as saying that all mothers of Palestinians should be killed because they uh, breed snakes, i.e. Palestinians. So she's a nasty piece of work. And I would not go near her with a barge pole, but this man has posed with her. And there's a photograph available. You can just Google it. Just Google Lord Tariq's visit to Israel. And there's an Israeli flag. And then lastly, at the Peace Symposium, I think it was 2019 or 20, they invited the South African, at that time, the uh, ambassador in London of Israel was invited and he was fated in their big uh, uh, place called Beit al -Futu. So the uh, Israeli connection is very disturbing. Uh, and uh, the uh, as far as the absence of the Ahmadis, I think they have got the message that they're on a hiding to nothing here. And uh, may your good work continue. And um, me and a number of my family members uh, eagerly await and watch your programs. And thank you, Imtiaz Bhai, for all the information and the accurate references. And, and yes, you're right. That was a hadith he said or created. I couldn't find any hadith. Could you? Actually, you know, uh... We do have the hadith regarding the, it's called the Hayat Barzakhiya, you know. It is like life of, for example, Prophet said that I saw Musa al-Islam praying in his grave. Okay, Alhamdulillah, when a hadith is authentic, our ulama have accepted. We have no reason to reject that because we believe in the miracles, we believe in the unseen. So they are a hadith, Izhar Bai. 
विच आर अबाउट द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द अनसीन सच एज मूसा प्रेंग इन हिज ग्रेव ओके Yeah, yeah, it's a barzakh exactly. And when it comes to hayat barzakhia, we cannot have basically take something from the hayat barzakhia from the unseen realm and then try to implement that on the seen realm. That's the problem they have. So they, 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 they are ahadith. Hamdulillah, we believe in them. We have no shame to say Hamdulillah. We believe all of the ahadith and akaid. But what Mirza Ghulam Ahmad said, that has no basis. And what is that? That he said. That Khuda ki kasam, Isa fought ho gaye hain. That is problematic statement because our Prophet has said Khuda ki kasam, Isa ibn Maryam tum me nazil honge. That by Allah, the Jesus son of Mary will descend amongst you. In this one, Mirza went directly against Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So that is a subject here. Obviously, the, in fact, I give one example. For example, on the night of Mehraj is our way. Prophet saw some people in Jannah, sorry, in, in Jahannam. Okay. Obviously, Kiyama has not occurred yet. No. Judgment has not occurred yet. But he saw people in Jahannam. What it means? That's called the realm of the unseen. So this is something which we believe, we affirm. What we good, do not go into the detail. Why? Because Mirza has said to everybody, "Do not use your reason to reject what is established from Quran and Sunnah." In this case, we are okay with this, this statement, but his own people they rejecting him. You know, Imtiaz Bai, thank you. Uh, you mentioned that hadith of Azza wa Jalla Sallam having experienced what's happening in Jannah and Jahannam. You know where the Ahmadis use that? No. You know that well. No. Uh, Mirza Sahab in one of his books, I think it is Tazkara, because you know uh, we'll go back to that obsession with Muhammadi Begum. Yeah, 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 yeah. And in one of his dreams, he has written this. Even if I have a dream like that, I would never l- write it. But he has written, and no Ahmadi can deny that. That um, and it is again after the watershed hour. Uh, uh, that I saw Muhammadi Begum naked yeah, with her yeah. hair, head shaved off. Yeah. And then um, what then happens is that when I asked a Murabi, um, you know, what about this? You know, even if you have had such a dream about a woman that you know, would you publish it? And you know the answer they gave? It was really a pathetic answer. They said Azu Sallam had a dream in which he had a tour of Jannat and Jahannam, and he saw naked people in Jahannam. Subhanallah. Astaghfirullah and Subhanallah. But this is the kind of the standard pocket book. I think this comes from the Ahmadiyya pocket book. They, please, my dear Ahmadiyya brothers and sisters, read your books. I would suggest to all Ahmadiyya brothers and sisters, here's some homework for you. Take up Hakikatul Wahi. It's available. It's available, and what you could do is you should uh, read the bit about Sadullah. And I was splitting my sides. I was laughing when I was reading it because the man seemed obsessed with male progeny, and poor Sadullah, who was a Molana, he had a son, and he kept prophesying that you know your son will never get married. Uski mangni nahi hogi, shadi nahi hogi. So it's this kind of you know unnecessary and uh, you know, sort of you typical know, punjabi why, type yeah. pindu type you know thing. you know Izhar why because you mentioned maybe some of some of the common ahmadis they might want to research this this is ilham of 14th of august 1892 14th because the tazkira is in order so 14th of august 1982 this is what the ilham or dream whatever mirza he says that uh, i saw in my dream last night that muhammadi begum concerning whom a prophecy has been made was sitting with some people in a village in a village rest house and perhaps her head was shaven and she was naked and she looked very repulsive i said to her three times i said to her three times the interpretation uh, the interpretation of your head being shaven is that your husband will die We all know. We all know he that he never died, happen. mate. He yeah. never died. Okay. Nope. He died when he has to die. 
and then he said that, yeah that, then he said that i place both of my hand and remember people in this time she is naked okay and he play he said i place both of my hands over her head again uh, stated the same interpretation during my dream the same time and now listen very carefully the same night muhammadi's mother saw in a dream that my marriage with muhammadi begum had been performed and my wife had a document in her hand which specified that the dowry of the marriage was 1000 rupees some sweets were sent for the muhammadi begum was seen standing near me in, in my dream now obviously now it is a proof because people listen very carefully dreams of the prophet are wahi right and this dream has two things that according to the prophecy of mirza gulam ahmed sultan beg has died number one number two obviously after his death he has married to muhammadi begum every human being who knows anything about mirza he knows that these two things did not happen ever now it is a conclusive proof again and other proof that the ilham or the dream of mirza were from shaitan what else we can say we can say in your dreams <laughs> <laughs> dream that of a marriage never happened not even in his dreams anyway jazakallah and i'll have to take your leave and all right dr sir thank, thank you very much bye bye jazakallah always a pleasure assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum assalam All right, Amal, thank you for your patience. Yeah, so I just want to add one more point here. Actually, this point I think has not been mentioned here. Uh, I come from a freedom fighter family. So my one of my grandfathers, they were in the British regiment at the time, and uh, my grandmother who passed away uh, six years back, she used to get pension from the Indian government. So when I came to know that this uh, Mirza Ahmed. has praised the british government because he was a freedom fighter then he uh, rebelled against them he was working with them because uh, one thing they say about they gave us religious freedom but 1857 mutiny happened because they were giving them guns uh, the bullet cartridges were greased with the pork fat so what kind of religious freedom is that that you are forcing your own sepoys to pull the gun cartridges with your teeth which are greased by pork fat so is this kind of religious freedom they are talking about so 1857 mutiny is happened and it sparked because of that reason we all learned that in uh, in school why 1857 mutiny happened hindus and muslims both combined together they fought against the british and the main reason for spark was the uh, pork uh, pork fat greased bullet cartridges and my i as i come from the freedom fighter this uh, you know uh, what do you say uh, it is shameful to say that they gave us religious freedom and uh, and this thing so that's what i wanted to mention here okay thank you very much um, i think it was pork and cow fat so the pork will offend the muslims and cow will offend the hindus yes yes correct so this is the religious freedom they gave us Yeah. they they literally killed millions of uh, indians there and they say they gave us religious freedom yeah i i don't understand their point now they must be completely deluded or blind you know yes how, how can they not see the obvious yeah exactly okay right. that's what i wanted to mention and uh, thank you everyone i, I would uh, say on behalf of all all the audience please uh, don't stop these streams we we love to watch these debates All right. Thank you for your patience as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Jazakallah khair. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Imran bhai, if you have uh, any comment, for example, uh, with regard to what we just mentioned, you know, Mirza's kind of you know behavior. I mean, because a lot of the comments, because there are a lot of Ahmadis in the comments who are commenting, and they keep ref- that one of the things that comes up often is talk about the. the Quran and the hadith they, they they will avoid the topic of Lamar Zahab and himself but irrelevant about whether or not you believe uh, Isa Islam died or not irrelevant to that you still have to look at the individual you're claiming is a prophet 
you still have to yeah. assess that individual. If you, exactly. if you believe, even if you hold this idea that there is someone, if you falsely hold this <laughs> idea that someone else will come, you need to assess that person on every single, you know, whether you're talking about factual information, whether you're talking about prophecies, whether you're talking about referring to the statements of the Prophet, peace be upon him, whether you're talking about uh, his akhlaq with the people around him, with the women around him, subhanAllah. Uh, all of these things, this person is falling short of. So when you bring all of these things, uh, it really, it's it's irrelevant. What 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 you say about ref referring to whether or not Isa Islam died, it's irrelevant because this person still does not fulfill the criteria of someone you would accept. There is yeah. nothing about him, you know, with all respect, there is nothing about him that would even want you to be closely, in, you know, interacting with him, let alone accepting him as a prophet. Yeah. You would protect your family from such an individual. You know, you don't know what, how they're looking at the women and what they're saying. <laughs> I just, uh, I just, it, the mind boggles. Literally, the mind boggles. What, what would make you do this? And I think the only response is, is that uh, either, either you're there's a vested interest. You're worried that you're going to lose something about your, um, you know, your your livelihood, your work. You feel you're feeling threatened, or that you're. Um, or that you're paid very highly and you think that you know that this is the only way to carry on because i'm sure that people understand this is not from the truth i mean i they're, they're very i know some very very intelligent uh, ahmadis who are who have spoken to many many times i just don't understand why they don't see this really subhanallah mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it's the information provided today plus with the other streams it's just been overwhelming subhanallah but the Bashir, what are your thoughts? Because I know that you have uh, you 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 everything that's presented you've come across before. Alhamdulillah. So, what are your thoughts, Mashallah, on this? Uh, <laughs> what what brother's saying? Yeah, well, it's a process of brainwashing. You know, um, human beings are very feeble. You know, unfortunately, you know, um, some people will drive past the store and there's a sign that says "Sale." Uh, bro, uh, yeah, he's not. Even... Yeah, so. Um, I think human beings are vulnerable, you know, if 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 they see the same commercial over and over again for the same shoes, they're going to want those shoes. So this is how the human mind works. And, you know, in business, we, we also cover marketing and we cover what piques someone's interest. You know, if you keep putting an ad in front of them over and over again. So remember, these Akadianis have been to these uh, brainwashing sessions since they were six, seven years old, you know, so their entire premise is false, you know, and. I always wanted proof and evidence, you know, um, and I wanted to read it for myself because I, I, I never really trusted people like that. So I just went about it. And when the information was available, I read it and I, I was shocked. I mean, for me, it was the biggest shock in the world, you know, because because I got to go against everything my, my parents have been, been um, telling me. And I'm like, well, you, you guys have been taken advantage of, specifically my father. My father never read the Quran in his life until he converted to Ahmadiyya in Pakistan. So he was like 15. I mean, can you imagine? There's people in Pakistan who had never read the Quran and they were like 15, you know, and then here comes an Amadi with all of these in things that are not even true. And then he says, okay, come to this brainwashing session. It's a three day retreat, <laughs> you know, and we're, we're going to, we're going to isolate you. And we're, all we're going to do is talk about brotherhood. And they got a bunch of underlying points. Like the Khalifa is going to do this and do that. And brother, in Brunei, Muslims already have multiple Hilafats right now. The, the, the Saudi kings are a Hilafat. The, uh, the country of Brunei is, uh, you know, they, they, they might call it a sultan, you know, but it's similar. It's, it's, it's a similar thrust. Um, Indonesia, I think it's 98% Muslim, you know, um, or like 97% Muslim. Malaysia, you know, um, so Muslims are doing, I mean, in the UAE, one of the most richest, safest places in the world, you know, even Saudi. So they, you know, but um, I had a question. What did they say to uh, um, Israel? Because Israel gives religious freedom. So what? what they, asked them at the start, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what was his answer? Or did, what, did he come so they, I asked him, uh, is Benjamin Netanyahu going to be a Ulul Amr? Because he gives you religious freedom. And the guy, the guy wouldn't answer, you know, how they are. They just yeah. run about. Yeah, and, and they accept uh, Queen Victoria, who killed in in whose during whose Raj. You know they killed. Yeah, so her. so the, let me tell you something that's that that's um, intertwined in all this. The reason they left India, the reason they abandoned Gadian was because the Indian government 
would not allow them religious freedom to, to do the league. So remember, in the Amadea context, uh, re religious freedom is not just being able to pray. It's being able to convert people. They have a different definition of religious freedom, which, as you know, that's not it. You know, religious freedom is just the ability to pray whenever you need to and, and et cetera, not not go out and give pamphlets to people who don't want the pamphlets. And now you're starting a fight. And now you said that there was a lot of harm or something. And now it's a bigger fight. You know, you know, so so that's why they you know, Gandhi and the Indians, even to this day, you can't ask a Hindu woman for her address or her phone number in India. They don't allow it, you know, so that's why they left. That's what they're all about, because without getting more converts, their business is going to fail. It's basically the, the Christian missionary model that, that, that they use and they've been using all around the world, uh, building um, hospitals in Africa. So, you know, there, there's another guy I, I've been talking to on Twitter. Uh, he doesn't know anything about Amadeus. He converted, doesn't know a lick, probably never read a book. But he says it changed my life. It helped me get a job. It helped me do this and do that. And it's like, well, bro, Christianity has helped many Christians too. You know, I, I think the entire um, um, island of Tuvalu, if you, if you guys know where this all Christian, you know, um, have you guys read it how uh, uh, Hawaii was stolen from the natives? They sent in the missionaries. You know, it's a common tactic. You send in the missionaries, they'll convert the people. Once the people are Christian, they'll shut up and listen. So those are my thoughts uh, thus far, guys. You know, that analogy you gave at the beginning about marketing and it brainwashes people. But the, the issue here is, uh, you know, if you see a good product, like let's say you use the, the shoe analogy, you know, if you show, let's say the shoe is nice and shiny, but even after we have shown them that the shoe, when you turn it around and you see there are holes in the sole, and they still continue believing that is a good shoe, it really defeats the purpose of advertising and marketing, even for a brainwashed people, you know, like things are so blatant. It's <laughs> like lies after lies after lies. It's just mind boggling, honestly. Well, I'll, I'll give you an, I'll give you a better one. Uh, McDonald's commercials. It's literally killing you. <laughs> 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 or even if you remember 40 years ago, smoking, they used to smoke in commercials. It was, it's like this will kill you and here and people still buy it. So. Yeah, that's that's just greed, I think, I suppose, sometimes, yeah. But, uh, yeah, just like, I, I'm going I to think, you know, Hashim Bhai, I just want to, because obviously Bashir Bhai knows this subject way better than uh, any one of us because he's been part of, you know, uh, all of this, uh, you know, cult in the past. Alhamdulillah, Allah has guided him. So, Imran Bhai, uh, many people who contacted me in this previous uh, few weeks, they said that, uh, first of all, the knowledge of the Ahmadiyya, the common Ahmadiyya community with regard to actual Islam is close to nothing. For example, they don't know anything about the Quran, about the Ahadith, about the Tafsir, about how to understand Hadith. Because they've been, first of all, one thing is instilled in the hearts and minds of common Ahmadis that all of the Muslims, they hate you. The Mullahs, the Maulavis, they hate you. You know, it's the same thing. For example, it is the it, it is the, for example as the 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 rabbi Tobia Singer says that when a Christian child is raised from a, from from very early age that Jesus loves you, you know? so they are grown with this mentality so they are emotionally charged you know they cannot think rationally so this is same here on a other extent or other on other uh, you can say end of the spectrum that the hatred of other Muslims and the hatred of their scholarship is instilled in their hearts and minds and they've been preached this hatred that look never you know talk to them never listen to them and they are given a very selective version of the islam which is only to have to do with mirza ghulam's you know quote unquote truthfulness and etc now that is one thing because they are distant from the muslim number two uh they are for example some of the people who uh, allah guides and they left Ahmadiyya, then they are bombarded with the propaganda. Oh, which sect you will go? Which masjid you will go? Nobody will accept you. And the common Ahmadis, they don't know that you don't need to go any sect, any jamaat. Go to any masjid of the, Muslim, of the Muslim. You know, pray in any masjid. Nobody will check your ID card as they do in the cult. Okay? You go to any masjid, talk to any of the scholars. And I, I tell something very simple. 
any Ahmadi who wants to understand and experience the truth without even knowing anything about, uh, about the argumentation, go to any of the masajid. Wallahi, experience the iman, the brotherhood, you know, the sweetness of salah, the sweetness of the community, it will change your heart, inshallah. Because the true iman, it has a, it is a halawa, sweetness, you know, the brotherhood of true believer, it has a sweetness in it itself. You don't even need to go and do the intellectual research. It will immediately, because Allah has created human being on fitra, on natural disposition. And inshallah, when you enter into the masjid, your fitra inshallah will kick in. And you will start realizing that, look, this is the true Islam. This is, I have never experienced. But they've been told this, oh, which, you don't need to join any party, any sect. Alhamdulillah, the spectrum of Islam is very, is very broad. Okay, go to any masjid. I think you hit the nail on the head. The the isolation, I think, is the key. Exactly. Wallah, we, exactly. we see we see this in the same with the very 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 right wing people. They're yeah. told that Islam, they want Muslims want to kill you, and and actually, yeah. when you interact with them, they're surprised by your manners yeah. and by the way you talk and the things you tell them. They I didn't know any of this, and so we see lots of people when they start to interact with the Muslims, they. They see another side of Islam and they come into it. Yeah. So if somebody's telling you these people hate you, and we do not hate any of the, the Ahmadi, even the missionaries, we do not hate them. No. This is just an interaction for the truth to come forward. Yes, it yeah. can be robust. And definitely the for uh, Ahmadi brothers and sisters who are you know in the Jamaat, who are part of the, the mass, is, we, this, is, this is an exercise in affection. Because we want the, for you what we want for ourselves. We want you to come to Islam. We want Jannah for you ultimately. So this is a this is a labor of love, and it and it feels maybe not like this, but this is the intention. So if anyone is telling you that the Sunnis hate you or the Muslims hate you, don't listen to them. This is not true. Subhanallah. Jazakallah khair, brother. That was very profound. Oh yeah. So yeah, we just want to tell you, you might not get the chanda, but you'll get the Jannah. <laughs> Inshallah. Right, I'm going to bring in uh, Ibn Hazm, our Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How is everybody? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. The studio is full today. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's okay. Alhamdulillah. You okay? Welcome back, brother, in tears. Habiban, alhamdulillah, Sheikhana, alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, barakallah, fiq. Couldn't be better. Alhamdulillah. Right, so I'm going to bring in uh, the next uh, guest. <coughs> Brother Muhammad, are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, you know, assalamu alaikum to Brother Imtiaz, Hashim Bai, uh, Bashir Bai, Imran Bai, and uh, uh, Ibn Hazan. Uh, I think uh, you people did a great job uh, in uh, answering all the Ahmadi claims, uh, but uh, you know, the topic is British colonial prophet, right? So I think we should also target the think tanks of the British mindset behind all of this, uh, which is that, you know, for centuries, this part, the Western Christians, they tried to, you know, weaken the ideology of Muslims in terms of monotheism, which they failed, uh, you know, which they failed for centuries. So British were like in the think tanks, <laughs> you can almost imagine them, that they were like, so we have failed in defeating Muslims, uh, in weakening their ideology on monotheism. So let's now try to target it on prophethood, on final prophethood. So th this mindset propelled, you know, the launching of Mirza. I think this is the uh, uh, context behind all of this. So they failed on monotheism, so they tried to target on final prophethood, which they also failed. <laughs> Because, uh, you know, uh, they always have this mindset. British always have this mindset of, you know, uh, not just in religious elements. To this day, we see the remnants of colonialism, the remnants of neocolonialism, where they use states like Israel as buffer states against Muslims, right? Uh, th uh, then afterwards, uh, United States of America came in, and now they are using Israel as a buffer state against Muslims. And uh, similar with Afghanistan, they used it against Russia. Uh, so they have this concept, not in just in terms of 
uh, uh, religion but also to this day we see in politics right so i think it is very important to expose the british mindset and the american colonialist mindset which is to this day uh, creating problems against the muslim world and i think we as muslims need to unite uh, you know not just religiously but also politically this palestine issue is a very important issue and i think it is tied in with all these you know ideologies and all these you know uh, uh, colonialism right yeah it's a direct re result from colonialism the state of israel yeah. yes yeah that's the only point i wanted to highlight because you know the context is uh, brilliant is yeah okay brother mohammed i just allah khair assalamualaikum wa alaikum assalam anybody want to say something on that or shall i call the next guest uh, ashim bhai can i just uh, uh, read one thing here ashim bhai yeah sorry guys yeah 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 so basically uh, this is uh, khutbat e mahmud basically the second caliph muslim maud it is his uh, sermons and uh, volume number is 8 and page 456 and 457 so why i'm quoting this one because uh, as it was said uh, earlier uh, by somebody that you know quote to us quran and sunna and this and that now listen what their actual belief is about quran and sunna it will be eye opening he says that i read in urdu first ab koi quran nahi سوائے اس قرآن کے جو مسیح معود نے پیش کیا اور کوئی حدیث نہیں سوائے اس حدیث کے جو حضرت مسیح معود کی روشنی میں نظر آئے اور کوئی نبی نہیں سوائے اس کے جو مسیح معود کی روشنی میں دکھائی دے اور رسول اللہ کا وجود اسی ذریعے سے نظر آئے گا حضرت مسیح معود کی روشنی میں دیکھا جائے گا اگر کوئی چاہے کہ آپ سے علیحدہ ہو کر کچھ دیکھ سکے تو اسے کچھ نظر نہیں آئے گا what he said is this sheikh this is this is very important sheikh uh, ibn hazm he said that now there is no quran except the quran which is presented by muslim uh, masih maud the promised messiah there is no hadith except the hadith which you can see in the light of promised messiah now there is no prophet except the prophet which you can see in the light of promised messiah and then he says that now prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam his wujud even his presence will be seen in the light of promised messiah without him you cannot see anything so basically when we are quoting mirza gulam ahmed and their literature this is their principle that now the quran is what is coming from mirza gulam ahmed and what is that inna anzalnahu qariban min al qadiyan this is your quran brothers okay and, and and the point is do not get angry on us if this ayah is revealed on mirza allegedly the inna anzalnahu qariban min al qadiyan now this is your quran because he said the muslim maud said the second caliph said now the quran is what you can see in the light of mirza gulam ahmed so you need to know your principle the problem is when these uh, clergy and apologists when they come or quote to us quran either they don't know this this principle or they are lying we don't know you know you know uh, brother and tears just to add something what i have noticed and uh, today uh, for the last week i've been discussing it with a friend of mine sheikh ismail jazaallah khair what we have noticed exactly that there is qadianis and there is qadianism and these two are not alike because if you see all the ones that do come on the show on the stream what they say when we say to them qadiani say this or he did that oh no it's as if they disbelieve it so it's either that they are ashamed of what they hear or they don't they don't want to hear it now if they are ashamed that means that they are not qadianis so they should reject it and come to the true islam and if they believe in it then they should just come and say yes you see uh, he was straightforward he never he has never hidden his uh, kind of uh, allegiance 
to the British uh, Raj. He's <laughs> always made it so clear. Uh, I mean, I had some papers, but I left them in the masjid. Uh, uh, but I had my friend Sheikh Ismail to send me some, uh, to, to take some copies and send me. And I, I just want to read something that uh, his son said in uh, the uh, Al Fadl, which is their uh, paper or their magazine, uh, 22, uh, 7th of December, 1918. He says, the Muslim ulama accuse, uh, accuse, uh, uh, sorry, the Muslim ulama accuse uh, uh, Ghulam Qadiani, uh, sorry, the Muslim ulama accuse us of cooperation with the English and taunt us at, uh, sorry, because it's so small, uh, at, uh, at our pleasure in their victories. We ask, why should we not rejoice? Our Imam said, this is Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, I am the Mahdi and the British government is my sword. Is my sword. Then he goes further to say, we rejoice at this victory and we wish to see the glare and the lightning of this sword in Iraq and in Syria and everywhere he the Imam has said verily Allah Jalla wa ala, has sent down angels to lend support and help to this government and this is Al Fadl 22 7th of December 1918 uh, he also, you know, like uh, he came and he nullified jihad, but he nullified it for the Muslims, but not to his followers. And the reason why in here, at another place, he wrote, hundreds of Qadianis joined the British army to conquer Iraq and share their blood. That means they are fighting for the British government who against the Muslims, against the Muslims, because for us, for them are kofar anyway, on the ways uh, and sharing their blood on the way. This is Al-Fadl, August the 8th, 1923. Allahu Akbar. Yeah, I mean, these these two are references in, in Al-Fadl. I have got, I wanted to ask brother, I don't know if you have got it, brother Imtiaz or brother Adnan. It is, you know, when some of his followers, they they were beaten up and he has written a petition to, uh, to uh, the, the, the uh, I think to the House of Lords or somewhere. I have got it here, but it's too small for me to kind of uh, read it. You see? Sheikh, yeah, if you, we, we would like to. If you, if you can you know send it to me, please. Sheikh, please send I'll it to send me. It. I'll send yeah. it. I'll send okay. it. We, we would you like know to. Which one? It's yeah. the one where he. Yeah, the, one, the, one, the, one you, the one you find, want to find the reference for. I yeah, would like I to comment to you now. very quickly. I would like to comment on this very important uh, stuff you quoted, Sheikh. Okay. This stuff is so devastating. For anyone who understands the history of the First World War, sorry, uh, the First World War and the Second World War, Britain was systematically dismantling the Muslim political power in the Middle East, okay, during the First World War. Yeah. Britain was a British Empire, I would say, I must say, British colonial uh, establishment was busy dismantling the Muslim power, Muslim political presence in the Middle East. This is why the Middle East was broken up. Ottomans were defeated and the British Empire was at the heart of it. And now here, the Qadiani uh, Muslim Ma'ud or God-appointed reformer, God-appointed reformer, who was promised by Allah, okay, that he will be sent. He's saying that we are proud of this jihad 
this jihad fi sabil al istamar you know istamar basically is yeah. basically colonialism okay yeah. jihad in the path of colonialism colonialism is virtuous it is uh, the the best deed and we are proud of it but jihad against colonialism was haram mirza as a prophet was sent to uh, ban jihad against colonial powers that were racist genocidal tyrannical oppressive xenophobic unjust as we established in the last stream you know one of the ahmadi uh, missionaries ahmad he came and he confirmed all of these things one by one that the, the british colonial rule in india was evil genocidal tyrannical unjust and oppressive if that's the case then fighting such a power was a sin according to this new prophet okay but fighting for them to spread their oppression and dismantle islam in the middle east is virtue amazingly oh, yeah. and then on the other hand we have real heroes like there was a pashtun tribe they were they are called the afridis they went to iraq with the british uh, army when they realized that the people they are fighting are muslims they refused to fight and they came back on foot from iraq to their territories they refused okay they said we will not fight our muslim brothers okay we will not we will not help this colonial power to dismantle our muslim brothers and on the other hand these qadianis okay this new religion this colonial religion it is actually a colonial religion that to this day remains a colonial religion hence their ties with israel and all other oppressive powers oppressing the muslims okay i'm talking about the political uh, entity of uh, the qadianis if there is such a thing if there is such a thing like the caliph and his establishment i'm not talking about the masses i'm not i want to clarify very quickly here i'm not talking about the innocent ahmadi people okay who have no idea what the jamaat and its establishment is up to they don't know what the jamaat is doing okay politically speaking and the ties they are making with the indian government and the israeli government despite all the islamophobia and hatred for muslims in islam uh, okay so it still remains to this day a colonial uh, tool a colonial puppet organization again i'm talking about the the establishment the ahmadi political establishment not the people they don't know what's happening they don't know what the the jamaat is doing okay so you know it's, it doesn't surprise me because he himself said it that it is my religion allah has revealed to me that i have to protect defend and praise the colonial government of india despite the fact that it is the greatest christian entity in the world promoting christianity you know why africa became christian sub saharan africa because of british colonialism okay mirza was supposed to undo it mirza was promised by allah okay the messiah okay was promised that he will come back and undo the cross what he does he actually cements the cross by cementing not only cementing but fighting for them sending men to fight for a racist tyrannical bigoted genocidal power and guess what it didn't stop with the the first world war what you what you are quoting from sheikh basically it is about the first world war 1918 yeah. to 19 um uh 1914 to 1918 they this is talking about the first world war okay but no, it didn't stop finished. it's a, it's a, it's a, sorry brother yeah, it yeah. was the end it was you see the war sto- uh, finished before i uh, quoted it, december the 7th yes, 18 and then i quote yeah uh, 18 and then i quoted august the 8 uh 23 yes so you yes. know that's when they went to iraq and they def- uh, they divided it and then the size people all came after that and uh, exactly so, exactly so, so this is this is well after but yes. as you said as you said he learned from his own father you remember his own father he sent 50 of his soldiers on horses to fight in in uh, in the rise up in uh, in 19 the, the, in 18 the war of independence yeah the war of, of 1857 yeah the war of independence we call it the war yeah. of independence yeah. the oh, british they called it a mutiny they called yeah. it the, the the great mutiny 1857 they call it the great rebellion they call it the great mutiny the indian mutiny yeah. okay the indians call yeah. it uh, the war yeah. the war of independence uh, 
Sheikh, what was the, the date? Sheikh, what was the date of this Iraq thing? Was it uh, uh, the, the 20, uh, It was the 8th of August, 1923. Al-Fazl. Yes, Al actually, yeah. I, have sent, I have sent to Hashim Bai the scan of Al-Fazl, and this have uh, this is uh, the date is basically here. Uh, uh, it is 31st of August, 1923, I believe, because it's very difficult to read. But I have sent Hashim Bai to the actual scan of the Al-Fazl as well. Yes. So this is the, uh, the actual, the, the primary text. Okay. So, uh, and, so and do you know, brother, brother in tears, the, the petition, please, the petition. The petition also. He, he's asking you it's to put important. up the petition also. Okay. So now look, what what is <laughs> what is the point here? The point is that this establishment called the Ahmadi Jamaat, okay, and again, we are not talking about the people. We're talking about the Jamaat and <coughs> the, the political leadership of this Jamaat. Okay, the Khalifa and his close associates. We're talking about that partic particular bunch. Okay, they have been collaborating with the colonial powers. They have been collaborating with the oppressors. Okay, to this day, their stance on the state of Israel and its actions in Gaza you know, it's absolutely disgusting. It's abhorrent. If you look at the tweets of this, yeah, yeah. In, in if, no, Al it's in Haifa. Yeah, and yeah. That's, it's their center, and they have got. That's where they print all their Arabic yeah. uh, literature, and they send it to the Arab countries. It's from there. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not specifically talking about that. I'm not talking about the headquarters in Israel. I'm not talking oh, yeah. about that. I'm talking about what they are doing now. Some of the representatives are tweeting on Twitter in favor of Israel, despite all the atrocities, all the killings of innocent people and civilians. OK, we don't condone the killings of any civilians, black, white, blue, Jew, Muslim, Christian. We don't condone the killings of any civilians at any time, anywhere in the world. Full stop, period. This is our stance. We don't condone it. We don't support it. We don't actually we, we we are supposed to speak against it. We must condemn it. Right. But when it comes to killing of innocent people, when Israel does it in Gaza, OK, these people, instead of condemning that, they are tweeting in favor of this. And again, this is this doesn't surprise me because that's the religion. The religion is what Mirza said. My religion has two parts. My religion has two parts. One is to obey Allah. The second is to obey the British colonial government in India. And it didn't stop there, clearly. It's still continuing. I mean, for some reason, the Jamaat political establishment finds itself on the wrong side of history for all the reasons, for all the, you know, for the last 100 years, that's, that has been the profile. It hasn't changed. Okay, where are, where is the conscience? Where is the conscience of the people, the innocent people who are following this Jamaat? Guys, come on. The reason why we're doing these streams is to, to wake you up. That stand by the Quran. Stand by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Follow Salam them. Wasallam. Okay, follow those principles. Not this new cult, new firqa as Qadiani himself, Mirza Qadiani himself said that this is a new firqa. This is a new firqa which is loyal to the colonial government of India. Despite, I mean, I mentioned earlier, Sheikh, before you came, that imagine Fir'aun, okay, uh, Musa alayhi salam going to Fir'aun and telling the Israelites, you know what, my religion has two parts, okay? My religion is basically uh, ob obeying Allah and the second part is ob ob obeying the Fir'aun. And guess what, Israelites, you Banu Israel, guess what, Fir'aun is your well-wisher. He gives you freedom to eat and you know, like whatever, you know, he gives you freedom to go and, you know, use the toilet. He gives you freedom to eat. He gives you freedom to say Allah or Yahweh, whatever. So, so live by it, right? Imagine if Musa alayhi salam did that to the Israelites. The Israelites would turn around and say to him, you are a false prophet. You're a liar. You are a collaborator. You are actually from the, uh, from the oppressors. We're not going to accept you. And and you know what? Fir'aun never killed the same number of people the British colonial rule did. The whole population of the world at the time of Fir'aun was not more than 10 million. I, I, 10 million. I can guarantee you that. No, 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 the, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah. It was very, the number of human beings on the planet at the time was not more than 10 million people. Okay. Yeah. So imagine 100 million people killed 
between 1880 to 1920 when Mirza himself is active as a prophet, so-called prophet. Okay, and then he comes along and he says, "My religion is to support this very establishment." Uh, you know, uh, and and obviously when you're supporting them, then you're supporting the actions. If yeah. you don't condemn them, if you don't, as a prophet receiving revelation from Allah, if you don't condemn their actions and then make statements to the contrary, saying that we must support them, you are supporting the actions. You're supporting the entire establishment and what they are doing in India. Okay, so this this game a lot of uh, Qadiani missionaries play that oh this was all about religious freedom in India that's why Mirza Qadiani was uh, bowing to the colonial establishment. It's not about that. It's about actually keeping them in power, and this is why Mirza was so proud of his father sending fifty soldiers uh, to fight for this colonial, racist, bigoted, genocidal power, and to keep them in power. You know, this is not a joke. This is a very you know, serious you know, matter. You know, Brother Adnan, just to add the, to something you said, I mean, uh, I, 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 I wish that uh, Brother uh, uh, MTS bring, uh, bring up the, uh, the, the petition. Because in, in the petition itself, he says, uh, I mean, this is towards the end, he goes, I have filled shelves with books <coughs> which I wrote in praise of the British, especially about the, abrog uh, the abrogation of jihad. Yes. In which, in which many Muslims believe this is a big service yes. to the government. So yes. I hope, listen to this carefully. So I hope, uh, for, uh, I ho uh, so I hope for an appropriate and good reward. Appropriate and a good reward. Yes. So he has written... <laughs> shelves of books he has filled shelves with books to what to disqualify jihad for who for the muslims against who against the the oppressor but his followers they are so are they are pushed actually to spill our own blood our own blood the blood of the muslims which for them we are kofar Yes, but look again. We have to again make a very clear distinction uh, because they play these games. They start to tell their followers that we hate them. We don't hate them. Absolutely not. We don't hate our lost brothers and sisters in humanity. They are. They are our lost brothers and sisters in humanity. They are the children of Adam alayhi salam. Okay, we we have nothing but sympathy and compassion for them. Wallahi. The reason why why we are these why we are doing these streams is not because of hate. It is because of our compassion, because of our mercy. We are driven by a sense, a feeling of compassion for the Ahmadi community. So there has to be this distinction between the the political uh, establishment of the Ahmadi Jamaat. That means the caliph and a small number of people around him, and the people, the people who are just victims who are being bullied or sometimes pressurized socially or by family into following this cult, despite the fact that they sometimes come to realize that this is just not uh, not uh, appropriate. Oh, I mean, I want, I want, yes, please. Uh, I want, yeah. uh, I want uh, Bashir to come in. Yes, Bashir. Yeah, brother, brother Nan, uh, um, really quick. Uh, what do you think about Mirza Masur Ahmed telling the Palestinians that if they accept Ahmadiyya, all their problems will go away? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, because then what, what will happen is what he wants the Palestinians to do, simply bow to the Israeli oppression, accept it, okay, and don't don't resist any form of oppression, and all problems go away. He's right, actually. He's right about that. He's right about that. He's right. Just surrender, just bow to oppression, just give in to uh, bullying, and accept, accept all sorts of uh, oppressive ideas, and give up your land, give up your rights, give up your humanity altogether, all problems are solved. This is exactly what Mirza was telling the Muslims of India. Okay, Mirza, Mirza was telling the Muslims of India, just surrender to the British, man. Don't fight them. Don't resist them. They are so beautiful. They are such nice people. They allow you to pray five times a day. Don't fight them. Don't resist them. They're only here to help you. Yes, they are killing you. Yes, they are committing genocides. Yes, they are killing 100 million people. But they still love you. They, they built the railroad. 
<laughs> they said, oh, they built the railroad. They're so nice. <laughs> yeah, they're so nice. They built the railroad to make sure that all the... the, 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 the Sugar the, and the cotton makes it to the port. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like Shashi Tharoor. Shashi Tharoor in his book, In Glorious Empire, he, he demonstrates with ample evidence that the British colonial establishment built the railroad so that the, the all the resources they have robbed from India can can easily be transported to the coast to the coast and then to Britain afterwards. Okay. Yeah, well, so one more thing, brother Nan. Yeah. Uh, uh, they responded to the Boer War situation and, and it was funny. They said uh, one, one of the guys said no, but they were killing white people. It was white people against white people because uh, it was it, it was the British who had given a free state to the Dutch who they were also the Zulu nation was right there. Um, the country that we have now, uh, Lesotho is still there. They were all involved, but they they tried to say no, it was white people against white people. So what, what's your comment on that? No, it wasn't actually, you know, the Boers were fighting for freedom from Britain. Okay, so Boers, I mean, uh, as far as Boer, uh, Boers and their claim to South Africa is concerned, that's a very different issue. That's a very different matter. Boers had been there for already nearly 300 years. They came in the 17th century. The Dutch came to uh, the Cape of Good Hope, or what we call today nowadays Cape Town region. They came to this area in the 17th century, right? And they remained in, uh, 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 on these coastal areas, right? But they were fighting yeah, the, Brits Allah, and the British colonial. So, uh, I was Sheikh, so happy to see you. So I Sheikh, was so happy to Sheikh, see you. you have to mute yourself. We can hear you. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 brother Nan, wasn't it a gold rush? All of a sudden, they, they found gold and diamonds, and that's why the British were like, "Hey, actually, we we have second thoughts about giving you this free state." <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly, absolutely, absolutely. As soon as as soon as they realized that they have a lot of money at stake. OK, obviously, they were, uh, you know, colonial, the, the, the colonial enterprise in general. And I'm not saying only the British colonial enterprise. I mean, Dutch, French, Spanish, Portuguese, all of these colonial powers, they came out to rob the natives dry. They came out to make money. They were not out there to to establish justice, to establish peace. Whatever peace they established was for their own effective governance so that they can rob the countries dry. OK, the British had no intention to stay in India forever. They knew they have to go one day. They will have to leave. OK, it was just a matter of time. They just wanted to rob India enough so that they have enough. Money. I mean, I, I believe the British uh, wealth today to this day, uh, much of it actually originates in India. It comes from India. India was completely robbed dry in 200 years. Nearly 200 years because the, the first first century was the East India Company rule. And then from 1857 onwards, uh, the British government uh, at London took charge of India directly. So the board of directors and the East India Company was removed from power because of the rebellion. And then they took direct control for another 90 years up to 1947. OK. And in this period, India was raped, systematically ravaged by the colonial establishment okay resources money precious gems uh, gold silver okay every single native state princely state uh, was one uh, one after another annexed including you know why the indian rebellion took place why in 1857 suddenly the indians woke up and they started to uh, fight the colonial rule one of the catalysts was the annexation of the state of Awadh. You know, where the, the capital was Lucknow, the king of Awadh was removed by force, okay, um, under many different pretexts. And that's when the Indians realized, hold on a second, this is not going to stop. These guys are out to basically rob us. They, they're going to control every single territory. And then, you know what? They're not taking care of the masses. They're not taking care of the natives, the indigenous people. They are decimating them. They are putting policies in place that are killing people by famines and droughts, okay? Am I making this up? Is this Adnan Rashid talking rubbish? No. no. William Dalrymple. Go read William Dalrymple and see what happened. Anarchy. His book Anarchy explains, describes a lot of these things in, in relative detail. And Shashitra, I mean, I have I can give you a list of 
volumes, books written on this. Yeah, The reason why I recommend these two books or these two authors is because they have simplified a lot of complicated ideas in their books. Like William Dalrymple and Shashi Tharoor in Glorious Empire, Shashi Tharoor and William Dalrymple, Anarchy. Go and read this stuff. I'm not making this up. This is not, I'm not making radical controversial statements. Here. These are historic facts. These are facts of history. Most people don't know about this. Now imagine this is the establishment Mirza Qadiani was dying for, okay, was willing to give his blood for, okay, and he said, this is not because me, I feel like it, I have been inspired to do this for three reasons, for three reasons, he wrote this, I read it from his books last week, number one reason was his father's precedent, his father's inspiration, his father's example, serving the colonial rule in India, militarily, by the way, militarily, second was the, the the favors of this colonial government upon this family of Mirza. Favors. Third was ilham, revelation from Allah. Allah revealed to Mirza to serve this colonial establishment with all his, you know, all his heart, all his mind, all his soul. Okay? Just like the, the Bible says, worship thy Lord with all thy mind, with all thy heart, with all thy soul. Mirza was serving the colonial government with his, all his mind, with all his heart. And, and, and also, on top of that, and uh, uh, you had left last week, but did, did you catch our point of uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed quoted uh, chapter 4, verse 59, the famous phrase, um, Ulul al-Amr, and he said the yeah. British government is Ulul al-Amr. Did you catch that? Uh, I, I didn't actually catch that because I, I, I was not there. But uh, to, in response to that, okay, if you read the verse of the Quran carefully, any plain translation, what does it say? A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. O who you believe. O you who believe. O you who you believe. Okay. Ati'u Allah wa ati'u rasul Wa ulil amri minkum. Wa ulil amri minkum. How does the verse start? Oh, you who believe. So Allah is talking to believers. And then Allah says, Min kum. So obey authority from you, the believers. Were the British colonial rulers, governors, and administrators believers? They were, some of them were staunch enemies of Islam. They were staunch enemies of Islam. Some of the governors, some of the British colonial officers, people like William Wilson Hunter, who wrote this book titled, Are Indian Muslims Are They Bound by Conscience to Rebel Against the Queen? This was a very popular book published in 1871 by William Wilson Hunter, who was a colonial administrator. Then we had people like William Muir, the famous Orientalist who had written books uh, to attack the Prophet. He wrote a four volumes uh, a biography of the Prophet. He wrote on the history of caliphs william muir very famous orientalist okay again a colonial administrator actually an intelligence officer during the indian mutiny he was an intelligence officer these are the kind of people who are ulil amr at the time in india ulil amr so mirza is using this verse okay to uh, to encourage his followers to obey these people who were not only not believers but they were enemies of Islam and Muslims by their own actions, direct actions. They made it very clear in their literature that we want to completely finish off Islam in India. And Mirza was definitely one of those um, projects, colonial projects that was launched to achieve exactly that. You know, it was not from a vacuum. Mirza's revelations and his sudden claim to prophethood did not just come from a vacuum. There are there are historic reasons for that. There is historic con context. You have to understand what was happening in India at the time, uh, in the mid 19th century and beyond. You know, in the in the in the second part of the 19th century, from 9 1850 to 1900, you have to study what 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 was going on in India. Uh, that Mirza was suddenly born as a savior or, or the Messiah, promised Messiah. Yes, please, Sheikh, go ahead. You know, you know, uh, you know the last surah that was that, that was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in its entirety. Yeah, it's Surah Al-Maidah, and he was on, or he was riding his camel, and the camel's feet sunk because of the heaviness of the of the Quran. Now there is not one verse that is abrogated in that in 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 the uh, in that surah. In that surah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Now, some scholars, I mean, the majority of scholars, they say that it came in its entirety. 
Mm. But uh, I believe Al-Qurtubi, rahmatullahi alayhi, said, no, there was some, uh, a couple of verses that came, were revealed after. But it's neither here nor there. We go to uh, verse uh, 51. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu, la tattakhidhu al-yahuda wal-nasara awliya, ba'aduhum awliya ba'd, wa man yatawallahum minkum fa'innahu minhum. In Allah, Allah, you have the power of the in Allah, Allah, you have the power of the All you who believe, all you uh, uh, who have believed, do not take the Jews and Christians as the as the allies, as your allies, or, or as the allies of one another. And whoever of you uh, uh, of you turns to them is one of them. Indeed, Allah does not guide the wrongdoers. So. Al-Ma'idah, uh, uh, verse 51. So clear. So clear. There is it's another so... verse. There is another verse, Sheikh, where Allah says, La, la... Uh, Surah Al-Imran. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tattakhidu al-mu'minina. Uh, no. La tattakhidu al-mu'minina awliya. La tattakhidu al-kafirina awliya min duni al-mu'minin. Min duni al-mu'minin. Wa man yafal dhalika minhum. Minkum fa innahu minhum. Illa anta taqu minhum tuqat. Wa yahadhirukum allahu nafsa. There are so many verses in the Quran where Allah specifically tells the believers to not harm other believers for the sake of supporting the disbelievers. Okay, this is very clear. This is a very clear, clearly stated principle in the Quran. So Mirza seems to have gone against all. And this is, by the way, political alliance. A lot of people actually misunderstand these verses. And think that This is about friendship. No, this is not about friendship because the Quran and Sunnah allows us to marry non-Muslim women. For example, Muslim men can marry Jewish women. They can marry Christian women. How can you marry someone you're not supposed to befriend? So there is a context here. The context is that this is about political alliance at the expense of Muslim uh, well-being or Muslim interest. Okay, so Allah is making it very clear that you are not supposed to harm Islam and Muslims for the benefit of the disbelievers, especially those who are oppressing them. Especially, but if the disbelievers are not oppressing you, like in Surah Al-Mumtahina, verse 16. Inna Allah la yeah. Uh, absolutely, you are to be kind to them. You are to be yeah. kind and you are to live peacefully with them. But if they yeah. attack you, if they attack you, then someone who joins them. Your houses. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, and kick you out of your houses. Exactly. Like if they are happening yeah. in Palestine. Exactly. So, if uh, they if they attack you, they oppress you, they kick you out of your homes. And then imagine someone comes to support them in all. Brothers, because I had the opportunity to say give you my salams. Jazakallah care for all of your efforts. May Allah give you more, inshallah. Barakallah. See you next time, inshallah. Inshallah. So, so I'm going to bring in uh, the next uh, guest. I think we lost Atnan by there. Um, he'll be back, inshallah, when the connection is inshallah. good. Okay, uh, Riaz, I'm going to bring you in. Thank you very much, brother. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum to everyone and to uh, brother Bashir as well. So I have been listening to this frame for some time now, and uh, I uh, I commend all you all of you for this. Uh, um, humongous effort and you know so much energy that you, you guys are putting in so i have few suggestions uh, for you i mean for whatever it's worth and uh, um, and a couple of questions as well that uh, i would like your panelists to uh, you know comment on first of all uh, i mean brother ba brother bashir would know that uh, i think we need to from here onwards i think and you can consider that i mean it's just a suggestion we need to change the format or sort of uh, uh, the way we, you, you're doing the stream because you see the, the nobody showed up uh, from their side and uh, there's a reason for that because they have a pocketbook and their pocketbook is focused on uh, Wafat or hayat -e masih and all these the theological topics and they would never and these these because British, British are gone they, they want to close this chapter this is a shameful event for them I mean nobody came to talk about it Though it's a very important, you know, con important, uh, you know, uh, sort of a feather in their in their cap. Why why are they not there to defend that? First of all, because we have to distinguish between the common Ahmadis and these Murabbis. 
No, I have no proof, but you, Badr Bashir would know, many ex this would tell you, they are paid. They are paid for this and they're trained for this job to digress you from the topic, to talk about this and that, never come to the point. Now, coming back to the one, one, one thing that Brother Adnan may have mentioned or may not have mentioned, he actually offered his services to spy on Muslims. And he, at that time, sort of came up with a spreadsheet to spy on Muslims. And he said, okay, do this and I'll spy for you. Like, what kind of profit is that? And I'll quote you one, you know, uh, quotation from his book. And just think about it. It's, it's disgusting. They, this, they talk so much about promised Messiah, so-called promised Messiah, Muslim, uh, Messiah Maud. Just read this and think, what is the worth of their Messiah Maud? And I'm writing from the book Sitara e page 118, so 118. Uh, Ruhani Khazain, volume 15. And he's saying, So, eh, hamari, piari, kaisera, hind, khuda, tujhe, dirga, tak salamat rakhe. And then he goes on to say, Jis tara, tu, eh, malka, eh, mozama, apni tamam rayat ki nijat or balai or aram ke liye dardmand hai, or rayat parvari ki tadbiro me mashgul hai, isi tara, khuda bi asman se tera hath batawe. So ye Masiye Mao uh, in the in the you know the, the way the brother brother Mtya say, I would like all you to pay attention to that and just listen to this uh, line that he is saying. It's so disgusting. He says, So ye Masiye Mao jo dunya me aya tere hi vajud ki barkat or dili nek niyati or sachi hamdardi ka ek natija hai. Allah. So this is why the Masiye Mao came to the to, to, to this to, came to, uh, to this world. I mean, brother uh, Adnan should also focus on this and that spying aspect. There's so many things that my brother Bashir would tell you. I've been listening to him. I, I go to his blog. I have been, I've been, I'll tell you my personal background. I had some friends who, who said that they were persecuted. They were MDs. I mean, and they came here in Canada. And so, you know, I, I had a sympathy for them. So I started reading about it and I, I, I knew a lot of things about it. I read a book, uh, Recognizing the Messiah by Nuzat J. Hanif. It's such a good book. And it has all the sources from their own recognized sources from Ahmadiyya sources. And nobody came up to deny that. The only denial they had is, that, oh, this lady, actually, she's a, I think she's a PhD in computer sciences. She became a mulhid. So that's why we don't want to you know, reply to her, uh, 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 the objections he had. So he, she converted back. No, my point is that, to cut it short, I know I, I took a lot of time, sorry about that. You have, you're putting in so much effort and they, it's sort of a becoming a exercise in futile because they would come up, oh, brother Razi would say, oh, you're not giving me time. Give me two minutes. My two minutes are over. This is becoming unproductive. I'll give you an example and I'll give you why it's effective. And again, it's your choice. I mean, it's such a good stream. I'm really, I'm not I'm sort of a, uh, uh, saying that it's not a good effort, but what I'm trying to say is that you need to channelize or fine tune your uh, your uh, your stream now. Just listen to B Brother Sadat Anwar and Ansar Raza debate in Canada, and the way they debated that. And I personally heard so many, well, not so many, I would say, but a couple of MD who said that we'll listen to that stream. It's not a question answer. You know, you know, your your two minutes. No, they just put, you know present their argument, let the other party present, and there's one more chance to present or, or you know, add to the argument. And that's about it. Then let the re, let the you know listener decide. Believe me, Ahmadis are good people. They, they are very good. I mean, I had friends. They are misguided. They don't even know what is written in the books of Mirza. I mean, there are so many contradictions. Even some of the things, you know, it's it, look, just think about it. He said, oh, I have 50 written 50 books and uh, 50, 50 cupboards can be filled with the books that I've written for British. Now, Amadi say that he has written 84 books. Now, tell me, he was collecting money to write the books for the Muslim. At the same time, he's saying, oh, telling uh, British that, oh, I wrote the books for you. Now, tell me, can you fill uh, 50 cupboards with 84 books? So if not, then for whom did he write all these books? Was it for English or was it for the Muslims to defend Muslims? I mean, he was collecting money and no, he never paid zakat. And at the same time, so I'm going to give you 10,000 rupees if you prove. So it's all rubbish. And these guys, they are nothing. If you, if even if you prove them wrong, 
the ahmadiyya book they are going to come back so oh, no they are not official representatives they were just there there in their own, you know own capacity so i think the focus is to just like a de- debate on the lines of sadat anwar you're putting so much effort and energy into that so i, I think it will be more productive i really apologize i was long <laughs> very long on that but uh, thank you very much for giving me the time thank you you know you know brother uh brother riaz if you if you if you hear yes sir if you oh okay you know like you say to debate them on on the if if isa alayhi salam is alive or he's dead or look someone someone that does not believe imam bukhari for him is a kafir imam ibn al-qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi is a kafir all of our scholars for them are kuffar i'm not talking about the layman uh, ahmadi i'm talking about these murabbis these missionaries then he comes and tells me oh imam bukhari says imam uh, so and so says so and so says look the the question of uh, that isa alayhi wa ala nabiyyina afdalus salatu was salam is alive we can sort it out in no more it doesn't need a debate we need someone who's eloquent in arabic eloquent that's what i need someone who's eloquent so that's when we take it and we dissect it and we say this is this uh, this uh, this article says this and this verb means this and this i don't Sheikh, need more than Sheikh, that Sheikh, the problem is i i i i accept what you're saying but we don't even need to go that far no. you know we don't even need to get to the arabic language you know why because mirza's writing is in urdu are <clears> enough <throat> to destroy his credibility or any sense of honor the ahmadi jamaat uh, uh, has for him all we need to do is bring out these urdu writings and talk about them okay because they understand urdu when you get into arabic discussions with these guys because they're such manipulators i'm talking about the missionaries they're such manipulators they will take you around the world they play games they'll bring this dictionary in that dictionary quran yeah. brother quran even quran. on the quran even on the quran, quran sheikh even on the quran they manipulate the verses okay so you know why they run from mirza you know why they they find him to be a death sentence on the jamaat okay you know why okay no, intellectually no, no, speaking no. you know why they run from it because they know it the, his writings in urdu are absolutely indefensible that's kryptonite for the qadiani jamaat okay the missionaries okay our job is to bring this stuff out in the urdu language translated for the masses we are doing this for the people for the masses for the innocent beautiful just like brother riyad he put it that there are many decent ahmadis out there many nice people many good people they have good natures good hearts good manners beautiful people okay they just don't know they grew up in this cult okay not knowing that this cult is a cult okay we are reaching out to them with love and compassion we're not hating on them we don't want to hate on them we are compassionate we are merciful towards them so that's why when brother riyad is saying that you know we might need to change the mode of our conversation with them not necessarily because we're not here for the missionaries we are not here for the missionaries these streams why are we doing these these are archives of information brother these will go on for the for the decades to come people inshallah. will watch these insha allah insha allah we are making history we are building record we are putting this on record so that future generations of ahmadis they can come and watch these streams and realize inshallah. hold on a second man this is so we are doing these streams for the people we're not doing these streams for the missionaries to have debates with them necessarily or defeat them in debates and put traps in front of them no the, the purpose of these streams is to bring out this information from the books of mirza and show why he cannot possibly qualify to be a decent man let alone a prophet of allah let alone a prophet of allah how can this man even be a decent human being let alone a prophet of allah so my brothers i have a commitment i have to go uh, allah bless you allah accept from you uh, it's my honor my pleasure to be with you and if we offended any brothers and sisters out there please please that was not our intention our intention is to reach out to you with love and compassion okay we love you all okay we want to we want we pray to allah to guide you because only allah can guide you we cannot guide you we can only present the evidence we can only present the message it is allah who opens hearts please pray pray at night and ask allah cry to allah oh allah guide us to the haq oh allah and clear your minds 
Yeah, um, watch Allah will guide you. You ask him sincerely, Allah cannot return sincerity except mm. by guidance. Okay, may Allah Adnan bless you. Adnan, Adnan, yeah. Adnan, may just inshallah before you leave, just in a, a quick comment on uh, what you just mentioned. Mm. For mm. example, uh, according to the writings of uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and his son Muslim Maud, mm. if prophethood is not continued in a religion, this religion is called a cursed religion and religion of shaitan. Okay, Allah this Allah. is the premise. This is the premise. Now, if we, we Adan Bai and myself and Sheikh, we are ready. We are ready. We are ready on our, any platform to debate any Ahmadi that according to Mirza Ghulam Ahmad and his Khulafa and their reliable writing, prophethood has come to an end. And he said that if there's no prophethood in the religion, it is a cursed religion, it, uh, it is a religion of shaitan. Okay, then we let people decide now what is the nature of Ahmadiyya? Is it a shaitanic inshallah. religion now? So, inshallah, brothers, we are ready. But the problem, the problem is if brother, if you go on the Twitter, brother Zakir Hussain, brother Adnan Rashid, brother, uh, brother Mansu, many brothers, they have already been inviting them for a civilized moderated debate on any good independent platform but they they do not have the courage they don't have the courage uh, look they they were they were posting stuff on me like memes that i'm running away and i cannot i and i i, 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 and, I and i told them guys i'm one of the easiest guys to find okay you can find me when i'm in london when i'm in london on any sunday Find me at Speaker's Corner and don't let me run. Block all the passages, block all the gates. Okay, <laughs> don't let me run. Put put your guys there so that you can you can stop from running. And I will stay Adnan there. By, yeah. Adnan by inshallah, Adnan by inshallah, I will come to London. I will pay my ticket from my own pocket, inshallah. If they are ready, we are ready. Absolutely, absolutely. No, okay, guys, my, my, and I have to leave. Brother, that's the last point, and I'll leave. And thank you very much. Uh, if I am uh, allowed to say, say so, my only point is that it has to be a structured debate. These guys are trained to deviate from the main topic. So you guys need to focus your energies. Don't dissipate your energies on the, you know, useless debates or, you know, uh, uh, talking over each other or you give me two minutes. My point is that conduct a uh, uh, structured debate like Brother Sadat Anwar and Ansar Raza did in Canada. These, are de these debates have, you will spend less uh, energy on it you will have, you know, you will get more bang out of the buck. That's what I'm trying to say. And that, brother otherwise, Riyaz, I mean, uh, brother, brother Riyaz, do us a favor. Please, b please come between us and the Ahmadiyya clergy, and please, you know, ask them to come for a debate. You know what? These guys, I mean, brother Bashir knows they have issued, like uh, Dr. Izar Saab was saying, that they have issued an addict. I mean, I will call it an addict because you know this is coming from their their Khalifa. Uh, who is supposed to be Mamul Waqt or whatever they call him. I mean, that's ridiculous. Anyways, that do not go to these channels, do not listen to these people, and do not engage in the discussion unless you are officially allowed to. And at the same time, so they are like Rahafiddin, that's the, that what they were saying in your own uh, stream. And they put so many, like, ask Brother Bashir. He was ostracized by his own family. I know personally people who have been ostracized, who have been... Who are, who, whose family left them, they are not allowed to meet their children just because they, they, they are ex amdis and they became Muslims. So this is what, like Rahafiddin, this is what you're saying. If you're so truthful, what are you afraid of? Have a comment. And this is, again, the, the complaint against the Pakistanis. I mean, I know there are some, you know, um, some something that's not that fair with them over there, but, you know, this is their own design. They did that on purpose because they benefit from it. And uh, I, this is not a point, and this is not my stream, but I can give you so many examples. They openly defy Pakistani law. They never defy uh, uh, French law. They never, they never slaughter a cow in India because there's a religious right. But of course, they do the right thing. I would do the same thing. But why did, do they defy, openly defy, and challenge Pakistani constitutional law? Try to change it. It's a law. So try to change it. It's an uvala ulala amar. I mean, my Arabic is not good. So it's just the same thing for them. So, you know, this is the hypocrisy they have. And at the same, just think about it. For them, the British were good, 
but then they present uh, Chaudhary Zafarullah as a hero, as a freedom hero. But why, why was he get, going against the benefact, benefactor government? Should, he, he should not be called a hero. So there are so many contradictions. To be honest with you, it's a useless debate at some point in time because I have spent some time in that and I've read about it. And um, But again, it's a very good uh, uh, stream. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for giving me the time. And please and continue Riyaz with why, that. Riyaz, why before you leave, just inshallah, one final comment. Look, brother, as brother Adnan said, mm -hmm. if any Ahmadi really wants to know the truth, Mirza Ghulam said, we have quoted earlier, if Quran has not named him as Ibn Maryam, he's a liar. And yeah. for sure, for sure, Quran has not named him Ibn Maryam, he's a liar. So we don't need him. You know, <laughs> brother, Charles, they have a point. They, you know what they would say? Just like you said uh, by uh, the Quran, the, the, that uh, Kadian was mentioned, you know what they're going to they're gonna say? And that's because they're trained. Oh, it's a tawil. It was a, just a dream. So, no, no, brother. No, brother. no, brother. You see, Mirza Ghulam said that it is that the Quran is It means that there is no metaphorical, nothing. So, but these people, the problem, they do not fall, follow the, the Mirza Ghulam uh, teaching. They try to bring their own metaphor into it. Debaters will talk to you according to your paradigm, not to mine, not to mine. You have so, nothing to do with my usul. Your usul, you are the new one. I'll ask you, ar uh, uh, I'll ask you around your usul and give me your fiqh. The, this Nabi has brought a fiqh, has, has brought jurisprudence. Let's debate according to your jurisprudence. Let's debate according to your uh, whatever you have established, not to not to the five pillars of Islam or the Iman who uh, Bukhari said, Rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn al-Qayyim said. Uh, and you know what? They just cherry pick. They just cherry pick. I mean, I mean uh, somebody told me that, uh, what's his name, Razi, is uh, he has shown the, the picture of uh, Sheikh Haytham al Haddad? May Allah Jalla wa Ala protect him. Sheikh Haytham al Haddad is not, not, none of us is kind of have nothing to do but to look for uh, Razi streams. And, and, but they keep lying and insults. But it teaches you one thing it's, it's the teaching of their prophet, the insults. Insult. He even called a prophet that called his brother's wife a harlot. I'm not going to say it. Uh, I'm going to say a harlot. And you well, understand. Brother, uh, yes, subhanAllah, very good point. But you know what? Each time they're trapped, they say, oh, it was just a metaphor. It was a tawil. Yeah. And brother, you, you know about. this from the 11 streams that we have done with them. <laughs> Nothing new there. <laughs> All right, Riaz, we have Thank to you. Thank the you. users and to really appreciate your um, uh, Abdul Samad, you're next here. Yeah? Assalamu alaikum. Um, alaikum salam. Actually, my question, <laughs> uh, actually, my question was on the for the Ahmadis, but none came today. So, uh, my question was. Um, for example, even if you believe, uh, for example, if they believe uh, that Isa alayhi salam is dead, um, why didn't why doesn't Allah resurrect him like uh, he does on the day of Qiyamah or he did the Jews uh, uh, when Musa alayhi salam was uh, coming back and he saw that they were worshipping a calf? Um, or uh, why didn't he create uh, a body for Isa alayhi salam like he did for uh, Adam alayhi salam or even if he did a rebirth for example uh, oh, why wasn't it a virgin birth uh, like uh, Isa alayhi salam's or even if it wasn't a virgin birth why uh, wasn't the, uh, the, his mother's name for example Maryam and he would still be uh, even Maryam for example that was actually my Brother, Question. just for you to know, just for you to know, in Surah Al-Baqarah, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Jalla wa Ala talks to us about Uzair. He was passing by a village and the village was absolutely in ruins. 
And he said, mm -hmm. when will Allah Jalla wa ala bring this to life? So Allah caused him to die 400 years. And he was on a donkey. So the donkey absolutely went, it, it, there was just bones left. And he had mm -hmm. food and he had water. And the water and the food was not altered. It stays, it stayed, it wasn't stale. So the, the, the food wasn't stale. The water wasn't stale. And when Allah Jalla wa Ala resurrected him, he thought that he was just asleep for a day or less than a day. Then Allah mm -hmm. Jalla wa Ala told him, revealed to him that he was uh, that he was th that he was dead for a hundred years. And then he showed him, he shown him how he brought you he brought things to life by bringing the donkey to life. So hence the the the, the vein on the bones, the bones gathered together, mm -hmm. then the veins, then the flesh, then it was a donkey in front of him. But Allah Jalla wa Ala, to make him understand, he told him, look, unzur ila ta'amika wa sharabika, lam yatasannah, it didn't change at all. So, subhanallah, mm -hmm. this is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Al but before then, mm -hmm. Allah Jalla wa Ala gives us the, the story of the boy that was killed by a, f a family of his own. And then the Banu Israel mm -hmm. went to Musa alayhi salam and they asked him to bring him back to life. And he asked, he told them to slaughter a cow. But as Banu Israel, they are Banu Israel, they start asking what cow is it? The cows are all looked together and so on. Mm -hmm. So, but at the end, when they slaughtered the cow, Allah Jalla wa Ala told them, فَضْرِبُوهُ بِبَعْضِهَا I mean, hit him with some, some scholars, they say it was a, 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 some meat or bone or, and the boy resurrected and he told them the person who, who had slain him. I was debating and Nahmadi is somewhere and you know what he said? I, I mentioned this verse to him. Then he brought their, trans, their translation, English translation on the, on, on the phone. And in there, subhanallah, it says that the, one, the ones that were hit by the burn or by the meat were the ones that slain the, the murderers, not the one that is murdered, which is completely, mm. utterly false. But that's how they, mm -hmm. when they translate, they do whatever they want to do. That's why we should always take them to the Arabic to the Arabic, uh, 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 mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to, to the Arabic scripture, I mean, to the Quran, not to translation, mm -hmm. because their translation is absolutely different. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. So this is the answer so for more... them saying, saying, uh, how can he be, how can he be alive, or how can he... you see? This is an insult to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Yeah, I know. This is in itself, it's like... an insult to Allah Jalla wa Ala. Yes, I understand that, but it was more, for example. Even if you don't, if you believe if Isa alayhi salam is dead, there are so many ways that Allah could bring him back, for example. Why would he do that to someone in Qadian with hardly any uh, connection to the Prophet? Uh, or brother, brother, any prophet, any prophet, look, any prophet, and this is, you will find it in the book of uh, Al-Bukhari, in the book of Iman, the long hadith, Abu Sufyan and Herakl. Hercules, who was the the uh, the kind of like an emperor in 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 the in the Levant in Sham. Heracles, uh, Heracles yeah. yeah. So so he he was asking them, and he he told them this man regarding Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is he known? Is he known amongst his people? They said yeah, and he talked about his lineage. So all the prophet, the lineage is known, is known, and they come mm -hmm. from a very kind of uh, high status. Look at, for yeah, example... So that's also what I'm saying. Uh, for example, Ahmad Kamir is Ahmad Qadiani. Uh, there, there was nothing known about him, and yet they somehow they still consider him a prophet. Well, he's a Mughal, and he says he's a Farsi because he's, uh, he's from Persia, because it, there was a hadith <laughs> Which is not uh, an authentic hadith regarding uh, regarding uh, uh, Salman al-Farisi. 
So he he kind of uh, tried to uh, hijack that hadith to say that he's uh, a Persian. All we know, we know him and his father. So what is his granddad? Mm -hmm. What is what we know that he's a mogul. So there is no no kind of. Uh, Okay, uh, Brother Abdul Samad, uh, thank you for that questions. I hope you got your answers here. Um, a little bit, but it's okay for me. It was more a question that I actually wanted uh, the Qadianis to answer, but uh, I know there's a couple of in the chats, but... Uh, well, like, we, we can't force them, them if they don't want to come. Yeah. yeah so we can only request them to come. If they want to come, it's up to them. Yeah. Um, their religion is uh, yeah. under the microscope. Yeah. Hopefully, this makes them a little think about uh, about it, and maybe they'll come back to Islam. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. Amen. Amen. Take care, brother. Abdul Salam. Salam. Salam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bye. Right. Uh, we got just uh, two more people now. So, hello. You're right. Uh, Salam alaikum, brother Neil. Salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brother Hashim, uh, Ibn, uh, uh, Ibn Hazam, Sheikh <laughs> Ibn Hazam, Habibullah, forgive me, brother Ibn Tiyaz and uh, brother. Oh, we lost oh. He's, he's no, 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 no. I don't know. Somehow my screen closed. I'm driving and going home. Uh, and uh, barakallah fikum, that's all I want to say. Subhanallah, I want to start with that because you brothers, mashallah, may Allah endow you all with strength, inshallah. And I mean, your brothers have been doing absolutely great. May Allah bless you. And I'm not trying to overpraise you beyond your level. It's uh, alhamdulillah that you brothers have decided to tackle this false uh, disbelieving sect of Ahmadiyya. Uh, because here in Chicago, where I live, I remember when I used to, uh, when I was unemployed, I used to go with my mother to the flea markets, and I would see the Ahmadiyyas giving out their pamphlets, and I used to say, Ahmadiyya, the true Islam, so I would just laugh, I wish I could have debated one of them, <laughs> because of, you know, because of this ridiculity that it is the true Islam, subhanAllah, and you brothers have, mashallah, tabarakallah, have demonstrated it time after time after time through all of the efforts of you, not only by one person, but at, you know, the falsehood that these people truly have been, wallahi ladim. I mean, I, there's so much that I wish I could say, Brother Hashem, Brother Imtiaz, uh, uh, and the Sheikh, that it's just not enough. It wouldn't, you know, it will take more than an hour for me to express myself at the kufr, minduni uh, kufr, kufr ba'da kufr, you know about these people i'm sorry but they, i mean these people have truly if, if the british empire were the tool of shaitan then these people have created a complete new islam a complete new prophet by which by consensus we know from the quran from the sunnah from the ijma of the sahaba and the and the ulama that there is no prophet after the prophet as per the statement of the prophet and by many examples that you have provided, subhanAllah, and now they have their own caliphate? This is just, I don't know what to say. I am bamboozled at, at I mean, how far these people have gone, and unfortunately, and I think you all have mentioned it, Ustad Rashid has left, subhanAllah, has said it too, that the creation of this monster, this little, little Dajjal, this Dajjajila, one of the 30 Dajjals, that the Prophet ﷺ said that would come in the end of time before the main Dajjal comes. I mean, have this was this was the perfect weapon for the British and uh, colonial. Let me put it like this: the colonial British Empire, because apparently colonialism is still well in, alive and kicking until this very day through through the Zionistic uh, tyrannical state of Israel. I put it like that. That it's just you know I don't know. I mean. So many things cross through my mind that I don't know who is worse. This false Dajjal, Ahmad Kadiani, uh, Kadiani Gulam, uh, Ahmad Kadian, or this monster that the, uh, you know, sincere Jews are fighting as well. I don't know who is worse. I, th I think these people, the Zionists, they are, they are worse than Pharaoh himself in the time of Musa, to be honest with you. 
but these people, I mean, I'm sorry, may Allah guide these people, both of them. I mean, I mean. Because, yeah, because. And, and brother, one, one thing, brother, in, in your area, there's a Tatiana Amni politician called Acosta Rashid who's trying to get elected in Naperville. He's on my radar. He tried to get elected oh, wow. in Virginia. He's trying to become the first ever senator who's a Qadiani Amdi. And then, of course, he's going to use that power to promote the Qadiani agenda on the global scale. So so that's going on in Naperville. Uh, do you know where Naperville is? Yes, I, I've gone to Naperville a lot to deliver. I am a truck driver. I was yep, local. Yep. Yep. And uh, I, know that the, uh, the, I know that the Mushirikun of the Hindus, they have a temple as well off the highway. I've seen it all the time. And uh, it is unfortunate that these people also, Ahi Barak Allah, that you're mentioning it, that these people, this Mushirikun, which which I have, I truly agree with the, the statement of the Quran and Surah Taba, that they are najas. They're completely najas, spiritually and outwardly. That they are now being, uh, bringing their garbage from India and they are, you know, inflaming the flames of fire against the Muslims of the same uh, suburb, Naperville, if you heard about this recently, not that long ago, subhanAllah. And I don't want to deviate from this, but, but wallahi, I, I, there's so much that I wish I could say, Brother Hassan, and the brothers, that you are do, all doing a, a, an amazing job. May Allah bless you all. And I ask Allah to forgive me for any, o, 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 if I overstep my bounds, yeah. and continue with this. And I, about the live public debates, Ikhwan, I totally approve it and I agree with it that we should Nien, challenge them publicly. Brother Nien, yes, sir. can I ask you a question? Are they, are, are they uh, kind of uh, very, um, uh, how can I say, very active with the uh, Hispanic uh, community? Oh, 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 uh, are, you are you asking about the Qadiani, Sheikh? Yes, yes, that's yeah, what let, I'm let Wallahi, Sheikh. I can tell you that immediately because I, I mentioned that earlier. The flea market that I used to go was mostly Latin American Hispanics. Okay. And I do believe that, yes, they are, I believe that they are in a way mildly somewhat striving, but they, I don't believe that they, ha they are strong as, as Alhamdulillah, the brothers in the UK in the Dawah mm -hmm. are, you know, given Dawah. But may Allah SWT bring this awareness that you all are doing. I mean, to the majority of the Muslims, the Sunni Muslims, because this has to be made well known and exposed about yeah. the deviance of these people, because it is kufr. It cannot be classified as anything else but kufr upon kufr. Go ahead, Ahi. I'm sorry, I'll mute. Uh, 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 no. Uh, did you say something? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Go oh, ahead, brother, I, sorry to cut the shake. I'll keep it. No, short. no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead, Ahi. Go ahead. I was gonna say the uh, uh, shakes. Uh, you asked about are, are they doing dawah to the Mexican community? Uh, to, 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 the, to the whole of the Hispanic, just not the Mexican Colombians. Yeah. All of the. The reason why I'm asking, I was gonna ask uh, brother Neil. If anybody who's whose English is not uh, that good, yeah, and they have got any questions, I can, I can, I mean, through Brother Hashim, I can even speak to them in Spanish. Alhamdulillah, I speak uh, fluent Allah Spanish Allah. and that, so it oh. won't be a problem or even answer them and that. She so speaks anybody, French, Arabic, and Spanish, mashallah, and English. Also. Allahu Akbar. So, so that won't be so that won't be a problem if anybody has got has got some uh, I mean like some issues with it or how, uh, want some uh, clarification. Um, um, at your at your, at the, at your service, you just go through Brother Hashim, and inshallah we can we can do something. Uh, Bismillah. Bismillah. Uh, also, you know, I guess uh, when it comes to this is a, a side matter though. Because it involves Dawa as well. I mean, uh, the Dawa to the Latin American Spanish speaking people. Um, I think it needs more help and needs more work. Uh, I think we are lacking resources. Uh, the, the new Muslims, uh, unfortunately, uh, we're still lacking the help uh, that, that, you know, that they need. I mean, I, I've been Muslim for Alhamdulillah. I will be Muslim for 19 years in, at the end of December. Alhamdulillah. And Brother Hashem is familiarized with me and other brothers. <coughs> And uh, this is what I see. You know. There's a huge potential well, well, in the brother Latino Neil. community. And yes, sir. You're, no. you're right about the resources. We have very few. 
uh, I tell you what, I'm working, the language I'm, working, from this side. No, I'm working, I'm working on it. Inshallah, we will have resources. I didn't want to say anything until it come until it materializes. But I've spoken to yeah. some to some people, which inshallah they uh, help will come. And I spoke to them about the problem of languages and that, and that we need to expand in that way. So I didn't want to say anything, inshallah, until things uh, do you, materialize. Are you planning to do hijrah, Sheikh? Huh? Are you planning no, to no, do no, hijrah? No. The, the da'wah, the da'wah, for da'wah, you know, <laughs> for, for da'wah, that's what I mean. <laughs> no, I, I was talking about the channel, inshallah, to have it in many oh, in multi languages. And for that, you know, Mashallah. we need a lot of help and stuff. So, so, so some people are working on it. And inshallah, soon I'll have, uh, uh, I'll have some answers, inshallah. But what I wanted to say, uh, Brother Neil, if anybody, anything about any time, uh, any time of the day, uh, just take my details from Brother, uh, I don't want to give them like on, on the right. stream, but take my details from Brother Hashim. And e if anyone wants, to let them speak to me and inshallah, it will be no problem. Yeah, I mean, uh, we got our email, it's dawais at gmail.com. Yes, that's it, yeah. inshallah. Yeah. It's on the bottom right corner of the screen, inshallah. Yeah, I see it. Barakallahu fikum. And continue so, the great anybody, work that you all Anybody, that's no problem yeah. about anything, Quran, Sunnah, uh, any question. Uh, alhamdulillah, it's not a problem. Yeah, and, and, and really quick, uh, the brother had asked, yeah. what, are the, what are the Tadianis doing for the Spanish-speaking world? They're trying to do a lot. In fact, my father was a big part of, in California, uh, getting Mexicans to convert. Uh, he had a few of them convert, but it, it was all for free rent, you know, and, and, and as, few, as soon as a few years went by, they left, you know. Yeah. So, But uh, they do have, a, a, I think, a hospital in Guatemala. And in Chiapas, they, they got like three in Mexico. I think they have three temples uh, that they're working on. And it's the same thing. Uh, well, no, it's the Kadianis. It's the Kadianis <laughs> doing that. As far as the Muslims, I I've heard that we've opened a, a mosque in Cancun. And, you know, there's ongoing efforts. But, you know, um, inshallah, we can make it better than that. But, uh, yeah, inshallah. Uh, yeah, inshallah. I know that Ayera is very well involved in my country, in Honduras. I was in Honduras last year. I did meet the brothers uh, of Ayera, alhamdulillah, and I prayed in the uh, small musala they have. I prayed Jumu'ah there. I do believe that also, also, I know that Ayera is very involved in South America, particularly South America. But what I saw is that Dawa is really, really needed in my country. It's inshallah. severely needed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid the brothers of Ayra, and I hope that I can be part of it, inshallah, and all of us, inshallah. Also, one thing that I wanted to add, one thing before uh, I can go, is that, um, man, I had it on the top of my mind right now. <sighs> inshallah, brother. brother I forgot. Yeah, country. you know, you know, go and pray to Rakat and you will remember. And you'll remember. And, and really quick, inshallah. brother, brother first. For your information, shaitan, for your information. because when you go to pray, the shaitan comes to you, so you will remember. <laughs> <laughs> Inshallah, go ahead. Yeah. Neil, ju uh, just for your information, I, I just looked it up. That the uh, Qadianis have a push in Honduras. They have a, a murabi on the ground. He's walking around trying to, you know, pay people's rent to get them to convert. So yeah, th they're on the ground, sir. <laughs> Brother, yeah, brother these, are, these are these are these uh, are yes, Sheikh. These are these people are these Kadianis are very similar to the Christians in their dawah. These are missionaries in disguise. Yes, Sheikh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, please, please take the details or leave your details with Brother Hashim. I'll be in touch, and Inshallah, we'll work something out. Definitely. Inshallah, Sheikh, I will do so. Definitely, Inshallah. All right, as usual, it's a pleasure, Brother Neil, having you on the panel. So. Until oh, next time. Wa 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 we got uh, Jabran here. Is it Jabran? <coughs> Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hope everybody's doing well and uh, we pray for our, our people in uh, Gaza course uh, also my, my apologies uh Hashim Bai for getting a little bit emotional last uh last stream uh, but That's you okay. know they, they just they just speak with like such disdain about like scholars and Rasulullah that it's, uh, it's 
it's uh, it's difficult not to like feel like like yes. your blood boil, right? So, um, and um, <clears throat> also, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 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 Brother Mtaz, like like one. Uh, I had like a few points, but uh, like the first one was uh, also like the the thing about the co colonials. I mean, isn't it like Allah's kind of sunnah to to not like not aid the op oppressors in anything at all, right? He said that he will like he, uh, like he doesn't want his deen like associated with uh, with oppression so much that like he, he, he you know that like even if the khilafah is like not there. Uh, it, it wouldn't matter. He still wouldn't want like Islam to be like uh, to be uh, associated with oppression, right? Allah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Hadith Qudsi right. that he he has forbid himself from oppression and he's made oppression forbidden amongst us. So do not oppress one another. Yeah. So and Allah, in is something that we. Yeah. In Islam, injustice is not tolerated at all. And Allah, Allah Jalla wa Ala says in Quran, وَمَا رَبُّكَ بِذَلَّامِ لِلْعَبِيدِ And your Lord is not an oppressor, is not unjust with his creation. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, also, uh, uh, second uh, second thing I wanted to ask is, uh, uh, I remember one of the streams, uh, Adnan Bai asked uh, the, the guy, like their main, uh, their main Murabi, he asked him, like, if, if they have uh, deliberately changed their scriptures, and he was kind of like squirming, he was being a little bit of a weasel on that question. So I want to know if if that is uh, if that's true or not. If if they have deliberately, and do they not know like woe, woe to those who change their scriptures with their own hands? Sorry, when you say the scriptures, you mean the the books that Mirza wrote? Exactly, exactly. That, that yeah, they don't have the originals. I think they got rid of all the originals. Isn't that right, Bashir? Bhai? Oh yeah, oh yeah, they burned all the originals, bro, real quick, real quick. Come on, bro. Yes, yeah, so it's. I mean, <laughs> what what religion is there left, right? Like if you don't have scriptures. But you know, brother, the the, the interesting thing is, even though they have control over all the literature. They have burned the original. They can change whatever they want. Alhamdulillah. Right. Still, they cannot discuss with us whatever is left over. All right. Yeah. I mean, the contradictions are so glaring. Uh, that's why, like, I was amazed, like, when when Brother Imran was like, the evidence is so, like, overwhelming that, I mean, you have to be blind, right? That's why, uh, you mm -hmm. know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's the one that guides. So, yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, also, uh, just like uh, uh hey, and br brother can you stop right there look i would not have left amadia if the information was not overwhelming okay <laughs> right. it, it's not this is not the baseball team versus the other baseball team you're going back and forth no this is one team is lying about everything okay and one team is telling trying, trying to tell you the truth so sorry yeah, brother. Like, even like small like practical things they 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 don't make sense at all like uh, Rasulullah saw someone said like uh, the prophets don't leave inheritance uh you know like uh like who's the angel that came to him you know stuff like that that's yeah hey, hey, hey can can I stop right there it's funny the Lahori Amdi said the same thing that they said they said there's a gall man that was not a prophet uh or they they used that argument back and forth I think the Qadiani said look he left a, a, an inheritance uh, he had to be a prophet, you know, or et cetera, or no, I'm sorry, the Lahori said he left an inheritance, thus he's not a prophet, right? So the Qadianis didn't even respond to that, and I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and you yeah. know, and you know, brother Bashir, I want to uh, mention one thing here, and obviously I have to say, please pay extra attention, inshallah, it's, going, it's something very important, to be honest. The common Ahmadis, they have been given this sugar-coated uh, in the world of one of the brother, this plastic version of, you know, what Mirza said and what he did. The reality is, this is what Qadianism or today's in their term Ahmadiyyat is. Look at this one. This is the khutbah given by Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood, the second caliph, Muslim Maud. And this is in Akbar Al-Fazl. Alhamdulillah, we have the, uh, the scan as well, inshallah, ready. If somebody wants that one. And this is on uh, 
30th of July 1931 and the number of the magazine is number 13 look what he said he said hazrat masih maud ke muh se nikle hue alfaz mere kano mein goonj rahe hain he said i still have the echo i still have the echo of what masih what the promised messiah said so what he said now listen very carefully he said aapne farmaya he said ye galat hai ke hamara dusre musalmanon ya dusre logon se hamara ikhtilaf sirf wafat e masih ya chand masail ke bare mein he said it is wrong so the son is saying son is saying that my father mirza gulam said that it is wrong to say that we disagree with the other muslims just on the death of isa alaihi salam or some minor issues he said no aapne farmaya his dad said mirza gulam said allah taala ki zat rasul e kareem quran namaz roza hajj zakat ghard एक एक चीज की आपने तफसील में बताया कि एक एक चीज में हमें इनसे इख्तिलाफ है ही सेड दैट वी डिसएग्री विद द रेस्ट ऑफ द मुस्लिम्स ऑन व्हाट ऑन द ऑन अल्लाह सुभानहु व तआला ऑन हिज मैसेंजर अबाउट द कुरान अबाउट द सलात अबाउट जकात अबाउट फास्टिंग अबाउट हज एंड इन ईच एंड एवरी सिंगल थिंग कॉमन अहमदीस कॉमन अहमदीस प्लीज पे अटेंशन इज इट नॉट ट्रू दैट यू हैव बीन टोल्ड Oh, rest of the Muslims are waiting for the Mahdi, but we believe the Mahdi has come. But guess what? That's a lie. That's a lie. Your your religion is that you disagree with us on every single thing you can possibly think of. Right. This is the true Kadianism. <coughs> yeah, exactly. You know that's why I say it. That's why I say it. There is Kadianis and there is Kadianism. That's th- this is very important. It's either they accept Qadianism as as it comes from their founder Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, or they are ashamed. If they are ashamed from it, let them leave Qadianism and practice the religion of Allah Jalla wa Ala, the religion of Muhammad ibn Abdullah Jalla uh, alayhi salatu wasalam, or accept. Don't be ashamed. Say take it as it is. Just be be courageous. Say okay, I subscribe. to what Mirza Ghulam Ahmed said instead of saying Imam Bukhari Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim Imam this Imam the other you don't believe in Bukhari you don't believe in Muslim you don't believe in anything even Allah jalla wa ala you say yalash stop stop Allah la zin la hola wala ta right uh, brother Jabran uh you got uh, anything uh, else to add brother Hajim uh, just uh, real uh, real quick last thing um Uh, yeah. uh, brother Imtiaz, uh, like I, I still like uh, I still want to know if, if 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 possible, like in the future, maybe you will do a stream about like what their belief is in the metaphysical, because I am like me personally, I'm still not clear on this question. Um, I mean, I'm still not clear on a lot of things, right? Like like you were asking about uh, asking him about like Musa al Islam, and he doesn't even know, which is insane, right? um uh, and, uh, yeah like uh, and they they want to discuss like aqida with us like what uh, what aqida do you have if if you if you don't know if you don't know like uh about musa al-islam so i still want to know like if you would do a stream about that like what exactly is their belief about the metaphysical please so brother like, for example all... let me tell you simply brother regarding the miracles of the prophet mirza called know. them they are mesmerism basically the prophet they mesmerize it is, it, in the urdu it is called amal turb amal turb and then he himself explained mesmerism okay basically a kind of magic you know by brother what just me that just reminds me that actually yeah. is a hindu belief as well they believe they believe in illusions like this is an illusion yeah. and yeah. this is um, like you said the the god makes it appear to them that all of this is just a play of the gods you know you know regarding the regarding the to bake the birds from the clay he said in one of his books and bashir maybe bashir inshallah you can remember this he said that because jesus isa ibn maryam he used to work with his father joseph the carpenter and he learned some skills from him and he would just play some trick basically to make so what is this nonsense <laughs> the the hindus call it leela It's like an illusion. Yeah. All of the Ram all of these yeah, worlds. Yeah, Ram ki lila. Yeah, Ram ki lila. 
Slide of hand. Brother Hashem, he even he even accused the Prophet Salaam of sleight of hand. Like with cards, you know, you with the cards, slide of hand. That's the quote Allah, brother. That's the I had a good laugh when Razi called Krishna, you know, Hazrat, Hazrat Krishna. I was like, what is wrong with this guy? You no, know? no, but you know, because he said, he said that uh, Krishna incarnated in him. So no, that's why he calls him Hadrat. Yeah. It's not <laughs> in vain. It's not in vain. Yeah, didn't, didn't MJ also call himself the king of the Aryas? <laughs> but didn't Krishna, didn't Krishna had a mother uh, and no father too? Well, there's also oh, okay. He, he had sixteen thousand. Was his father? Sheikh, Wasn't he, it? Krishna had sixteen thousand one hundred and eight gopis or girlfriends. So what are we going to call them? Yeah, yeah, yeah and yes, and, yes. and now, um, very ironically, Akadian is a Hindu town. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they want to please everyone, so they're going to take a bit of everything. Yeah, yes, exactly. Please, but want to please the Hindus, Hindus, they want to please the Hindus. But ilahi ilahi lima shabaktani revelation. Yeah. Amidst the Quran, ilahi ilahi lima shabaktani. Yeah, maybe he learned all this lies from the from Paul. You know, he's probably been reading the Bible a lot. <laughs> okay, uh, but brother Jabran, uh, thank okay. you very much for joining. Okay. Until next time, salam alaikum. Right. Salam alaikum. Right. So our our last guest here is Asif. Asif boy. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, mashallah, a uh, very good stream. Um, I heard about uh, this stream some time ago, and uh, I really liked uh, uh, Brother Imtiaz when you said uh, uh, or invited all Ahmadis to uh, come to any mosque, any Muslim mosque, and uh, they will be welcomed. And uh, here I would uh, like to uh, tell you my experience uh, back in uh, 19, uh, sorry, back in uh, 2018. Uh, that was the first time uh, <laughs> when I was in a transition to leave Ahmadiyyat. Um, I uh, was, uh, I decided to uh, start going uh, to a Muslim mosque. And, um, uh, you know, <laughs> it was a quite funny story. Uh, that this was the first time I was going with my uh, office colleagues. And um, uh, uh, over there, uh, two uh, new uh, immigrants from Pakistan uh, came and uh, they uh, offered me, uh, offered us a ride back to the office. And I was like, oh, wow, my friends, they know uh, who I am, they, you know. Uh, did they call these people and uh, arrange for me to be kidnapped and you know beat me up <laughs> so so that kind of uh, hatred uh, is something uh, which uh, sorry about this uh, you know call in between <laughs> so they were like i was i was uh, a bit uh, uh, worried you know uh, whether they arranged somebody to kidnap me and uh, uh, do the beating as uh, I'm an uh, I'm a Qadiani and uh, you know what will happen but uh, there was nothing of that sort and uh, you know that was the first time I attended uh, uh, you know <laughs> alhamdulillah I attended uh, uh, prayer in a Muslim mosque so that became my habit and alhamdulillah uh, that very same year uh, I decided to leave Ahmadiyyat and oh, uh, real quick. Why, why did you why did you assume that you would be mistreated in a Muslim masjid? Oh, you you know, like, you that? Uh, they they their agenda is to brainwash you that Muslims are yeah, like you mentioned, right? Like you mentioned, their their agenda is that they brainwash you uh, that uh, Muslims hate you. You know, I I've never uh, seen uh, you know I've. Uh, the city I'm living in, uh, you know, uh, when I moved to this city in 2010, uh, I started making non Ahmadi friends. You know, uh, before that, uh, I don't remember uh, I had uh, non Ahmadi friends except uh, in Pakistan, uh, where my class fellows, uh, they became my friends. They were very open. Um, yeah. <laughs> But this was a good experience. Uh, yeah, I, I would just uh, like to, because uh, this stream is becoming in history, and this is the first time I'm 
uh, joining in a, a live stream. And uh, uh, and yeah, I have uh, started uh, uh, writing a book of my journey as well. So that'll be coming very soon. Um, sure. Yeah, inshallah. So yeah, just uh, so wanted to a, tell Ahmed How long has it been since you left uh, Ahmadiyya? Uh, I left it in uh, 2018. Uh, it's been oh, five years. And uh, I started working on my family, my wife. Uh, um, Alhamdulillah, uh, she left uh, Ahmadiyat uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, now she's all with me. Uh, we enjoy uh, going to nearest mosque. And uh, <laughs> there's a there's a funny uh, story that uh, my wife received a call uh, from uh, her cousin's wife, and uh, uh, she was uh, you know uh, they were talking about uh, you know attending the Eid prayer. And, uh, uh, you know, her cousin's wife uh, said that you can go uh, to any mosque, but we are uh, going to Ahmadiyya Mosque. And I was like, yeah, that is true. I mean, all the Muslim mosques are for us now. <laughs> 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 there is no restrictions. And you, you uh, for Ahmadiyya, you know. Sorry, sorry, brother Hashim. You gained a family of 2 billion people. Exactly, exactly. I mean, uh, we were in a cage, basically, and we thought that uh, this is the life. But uh, what they say in uh, Urdu, like, ke right? <laughs> so, yes. so we were like that. And Alhamdulillah, you know, we uh, just uh, came out of it. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy, you know, I'm uh, and another thing I am uh, going to uh, mention here is that when I used to read Quran uh, before, uh, when I was Ahmadi, um, I now see things differently. You know, every every verse of Quran uh, it, it is a different meaning for me. I mean, uh, I'm like, what is this going on? Uh, you know, the other day I was... Uh, going to uh, uh, you know uh, to a vacation and uh, was trying to uh, you know uh, uh, revise what I memorized and uh, I was uh, you know uh, forgetting something so I asked my wife uh, can you please uh, tell me what is this verse and then she was uh, reading that verse uh, to me and then I was like okay uh, you know let's uh, let's do this. Uh, let's start uh, reading all these verses uh, from the beginning. And when she started reading and she told me, you know, like, this is amazing. Uh, I'm Because uh, she had uh, taught Quran when uh, she was young uh, to uh, to um, kids in Rabba, and, uh, which is now Chanab Nagar. So, uh, and she uh, knew the meaning and, and she told me, you know, like now, what she is understanding is way different for what she was understanding before. So it's a, it's an eye-opening experience for me and for my wife. And I would uh, encourage all Ahmadis, you know, all Ahmadis. So please, please open up your eyes. Uh, God says in Quran, Inna lazina farraku dinahum wakanu shia. Lasta minhum fishai. Innama amruhum illallah. Summa yunabi uhum bimakanu yafalun. So, you know, Allah does not want any firqa, right? And, you know, uh, difference difference of opinion is okay. I mean, uh, everyone, I, I can have a different difference of opinion with all of you uh, panelists. But, that does not allow me to make a separate group. So that is what God has said in this ayah. And, uh, and, and he has warned people uh, that their, uh, their decision is towards God and he will tell them what they were doing. And, and he simply told uh, the prophet that Lasta minhum fi shay, that you are not uh, in any way related to those people. So my humble request to all Ahmadis, you are in that boat that Prophet Muhammad does not have anything to do with you. 
So please wake up, wake up and uh, leave this cult, uh, which is uh, just holding you. I have talked to all my family members. They are all stuck. Uh, uh, Bashir, I must know what am I talking about. <laughs> of course. Uh, of course. So, hey, I had a quick question. What do you think about their belief on the finality of prophethood and how it's contradictory? Because they don't believe in any new prophets, but they'll argue with you for hours and hours about 469, 735, and 3340. So, yes. what do you have to say about that? So, <laughs> so see, uh, another. Uh, um, this uh, uh, I was talking to um, a guy over here uh, in my town uh, on Facebook. Uh, so uh, and talking about that same uh, prophethood uh, that Mirza Sahab is not a prophet, and that's why I left Amdiyat. And he was uh, like, uh, after with after all uh, you know things he had to present, he started asking me. Uh, give me one verse from Quran uh, that uh, uh, tells you that there is no prophet after uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. And I was like, okay, now <laughs> here's a funny thing that I used to do uh, Radio Ahmadiyya uh, in Toronto. I hosted Radio Ahmadiyya for more than um, uh, more than 18 months, I guess. Uh, going there every Sunday and hosting the stream, uh, welcoming guests, you know, even uh, listen to the people calling yeah, names. Wait, wait, is, is that the one with uh, Ansar Reza? Yes, uh, Ansar Reza, uh, Nasir Mahmood, but mm. uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes Mirza Afzal Sahib, mm. and uh, sometimes, uh, you know, when uh, the a uh, month was five weeks, uh, you know, fifth Sunday. It was uh, uh, Dr. I, I forgot his name. Uh, he's the uh, general secretary of Canada. Oh, yeah. He's general. The, is he, yeah, is he, the, the, yeah. he's also in charge of uh, Humanity First. So I, I don't remember his name right now. But uh, he used to be uh, pre president of uh, Khudan uh, long uh, ago. <laughs> and look, I, yes. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry if I know everyone, but uh, Dawood Aslam? Uh, Aslam Daud, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Aslam Daud. <laughs> He's like the big, uh, the head honchos. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry? So, They're the head honchos. They're yeah, because like... I've written like profiles on, on all the head business. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, yeah, the finality of the prophet. So, this uh, guy over here, he started asking me, you know, present uh, me one verse. Uh, you know, that you will uh, say that this uh, proves that uh, uh, Hazrat Muhammad was the last prophet. And I was like, okay, it was uh, a time for us our prayer, and I was stuck. And I was like, I'm not going to give him the verse he's asking for, because I knew that he's asking for uh, the Khatam al Nabiyin verse. And I knew all the tactics because uh, I, I hosted Radio MDF for a long time. And I was like, I'm not gonna give this verse. So I, uh, uh, I performed wudu, uh, you know, uh, pray, uh, prayed uh, asar namaz, and uh, and I prayed to God, you know, like, uh, oh Allah, Taala, you are uh, <laughs> you are the one who is going to help me in this. I'm not gonna give him this verse. So please guide me, guide me, please guide me. I want to present him something uh, uh, other than this verse. And um, after <coughs> saying salam and everything, I came back to the computer and all of a sudden, uh, within two minutes, um, the first word came to my mind was Faraqa. And I started searching Faraqa on Quran.com. And this verse, which I recited uh, a few minutes ago, came into my mind. Uh, it came into uh, on on my screen, and I was shocked. I was shocked, and I was like, if I had knew this verse before, I would have uh, left Amdiyat long, long time ago. Because this is very strong verse, and uh, so so that's what I started. Uh, giving him uh, on the Facebook and uh, he just ran away.
he was like okay i know um, your brain you are just a you know uh, psycho and you need to see a psychiatrist and this and that <laughs> yeah and, and yeah. you know that that's what they do sorry to cut you shake uh uh they uh so let me stop right there shakes up uh go ahead no 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 please continue no 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 continue with your continue please uh oh, okay I, I was just gonna make a quick comment that if <laughs> if you start asking questions they'll they'll know something's wrong so as soon as you ask a simple question they'll know they've lost you it's over it's over so yeah she no what i was going to say you know they call they call their religion or their sect they call themselves islam ahmadiyya yeah yes yes now if islam ahmadiyya was the true religion listen in quran what allah jalla wa ala says inna ad-deena 'inda allah al-islam he didn't say islam ahmadiyya exactly wa man yabtaghi ghayra al-islam deena falan yuqbala minhu Whosoever, yeah. So this, if it was, why Allah Jalla wa Ala would leave us in this kind of uh, dawama, as they say, in, in this kind of turbulence, you know? Exactly. We don't know exactly. if we're going left. Or you know, brother Asif, brother Asif, uh, yes. because when you when you mentioned, you know, about that verse, that I, I can understand that you were thinking. If if you mention that verse of some Surah Azab, what do we say? Let me let me tell maybe inshallah because you brought up this point inshallah maybe other people are listening as well. Uh, I first give a principle given by Mirza Ghulam in Ruhani Khazain, volume six, page number eighteen. He said, "Isme kuch shak nahi ke sabse zyada Quran ke mani samajne wale hamare pyare aur buzurg Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the." Pas. بس اگر آ حضرت سے کوئی تفسیر ثابت ہو جائے تو مسلمان کا فرض ہے کہ بلا توقف اور بلا دغدغہ قبول کرے ورنہ اس میں الہاد اور فلسفیت کی رگ پائی جاتی ہے ہی سیڈ دیٹ اف دا انٹرپریٹیشن ایف اینی آیا اٹ کمس فرام دا حدیث فرام دا سننا دین یو ہیو ٹو ایکسیپٹ اٹ اینڈ اف یو ریجیکٹ سچ انٹرپریٹیشن it means that you are an atheist or you are in the misguided philosophies basically okay now with regard to this ayah with regard to this ayah of surah azab khatam an nabiyin ayah uh, volume 7 hamamatul bushra page number 200 i read the arabic first and then inshallah i i, I uh, do the he said that ala kalam don't you know ان رب الرحيم المتفضل that our rub our master who is the merciful who is the giving of the bounties سمى نبينا صلى الله عليه وسلم خاتم الانبياء بغير استثناء he said don't you know allah has named our prophet خاتم الانبياء the last prophet without exception بلا without without exception and then he said وفسره and the tafsir of this nabiyina our prophet has done the tafsir of this aya fi qawlihi in his saying la nabi abadi there is no prophet after me bi bayani wazih lit talibin he made a very clear explanation for those who are seeking the truth and then he said walau jawazna and if we make it permissible zahura nabiyin coming of a prophet بعد نبينا after our prophet la jawazna infitaha bab wahy an nabuwa bad taghliqiha we are going to open the door of prophethood after the door has been closed okay and then he said wa haza khulfun this is against the quran sunnah and the human logic it is against everything haza khulfun and then he said kama la yakhfa ala al muslimin as it is not hidden from any of the believers wa kayfa yujiu and how can a, how can come nabiyin a prophet baad a rasulina after our messenger wa qad in qata al wahi and the revelation has been cut off baad a wafatihi after his death wa khatam allah and allah subhanahu wa taala has ended bihin nabiyin allah has ended the prophet through him now look at this one he said this is the tafsir of this ayah given by nabi muhammad 
sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this aya mean that no prophet after me and the door of prophethood has been closed okay and then he said earlier that if you do not accept a tafsir done by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam then you are atheist certainly certainly so i started a facebook post uh, recently uh, with the verse i presented uh, in alazina faruqudina um wakanu shia and i invited uh, all of my facebook ahmadi friends to uh, leave the uh, firqa uh, ansar raza sahab you know um, abashir bhai you know <laughs> ansar raza sahab uh, uh, started uh, uh, you know uh, presenting uh, his case and uh, you know i i told him that uh, you know i have uh, um, a connection of a respect with him uh, so please uh, talk to me in uh, dms you know but uh, he insisted uh, that no uh, you are uh, doing it in public so uh, just uh, talk to me in public so what i did um, you know um, uh, uh, all the uh, explanations uh, he mentioned Uh, i wrote down um, uh, i i wrote down uh, all my uh, reservations and he uh, said that okay what do you say about fa amana taifa tum min bani israil wa wa kafara taifa you know uh, that uh, the firqa which is made uh, because of a prophet is not a firqa it does not uh, lies Uh, 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 uh under this uh, or it's not uh, targeted under this uh, uh, qurani aya and i was like okay uh let's just talk about this so i presented him uh three questions uh and with numbers uh, the number one was okay what kind of prophet uh, well i know that the la nufarriqu bayna ahadim wa rusuli means you cannot uh differentiate between the prophets but since i know uh the ahmadiyya believe okay uh tashri'i nabi non tashri'i nabi ummi nabi zildi nabi buruzi nabi i mean <laughs> they can keep adding uh, uh, all these things but so i was like okay let me just uh, clear up three questions i i posed uh, to him uh, first of all uh, tell me what kind of uh, nabuwa uh, is it that uh it is it will not be considered as a firqa and my second question was uh, uh brother uh, imtiaz can you open up the um ek galati ka azala and uh, read a uh, last text uh, last three uh, lines where he says uh uh jahan jahan maine rasool aur nabi ka kaha hai ye can you please read i don't want to read uh, say what is not written there no he said that usko kata mat sawar kiya jaye nahi 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 in a galati ka azala if you go over to last page uh, okay uh, let me let me put yeah. out inshallah so while while you are looking for it uh, his words are uh, in english that uh, the thing which belonged to muhammad remained with muhammad and he says uh, my personality uh, is not uh, involved in here so basically what he is trying to say uh, you will read the urdu uh, the words is he is trying to say that uh, whenever he received revelation uh, you know from god saying uh, ya rasul or ya nabi uh, it was not for uh his nafs and it was for muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so uh, the ending words are uh so wherever uh, he uh, has mentioned the rasul or uh, nabi uh, it's not him it's uh, ah hazur sallallahu alaihi wasallam so he says muhammad ki cheez muhammad ke paas rahi yes right yes. he said so can is. you please now read them in inshallah i'm opening this now yeah inshallah i'm just okay. about to put uh, send to brother hashim inshallah you can put on the screen okay maybe you can talk in the meantime brother shall okay. we can talk okay so meantime. so basically i asked i asked ansar raza sahib to uh, just give me the answer will he deny that uh, prophet 
uh, will he deny uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed saying uh, that prophethood did not, uh, it's not a new prophethood, it's the old prophethood. Uh, so uh, will he deny this? Because if he denies that uh, it's a, uh, it's not a new prophethood. It's an old. It's the old prophethood. Then why the new uh, sect? Why the new firqa? So that's what my question was. So so I posed him uh, three questions. He only answered one of my question. Um, I'll I'll probably uh, share uh, my Facebook post uh, in the comments uh, so that everyone can read. Uh, and he uh, I had to ask this question six times. Uh, then he said, you know, like he is not going to answer my question until I answer his questions. So uh, on another post, uh, he started uh, talking to me. I mean, he, he is not answering my question because he knows if he denies it, then uh, then new sect cannot be formed. Simple as that. Yeah. So, brother, uh, which uh, the you said that the last page you want to put on the screen, brother? The, the, yes, the very last page. If you can please okay. uh, show it on. Inshallah, the I send to brother Hashim now. Inshallah, and he can put that on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to switch the screen on my phone actually. No, Inshallah, I sent to Hashim. By no problem, Inshallah. I'm just uh -huh. gonna send it now. Uh -huh. So while uh, Muhammad Mtias is doing that, just wanted to remind everyone: if you haven't subscribed to. Uh, MTS by his channel, please do so. He's only short of like uh, 20 subscribers or 24 subscribers to reach uh, 1000 subscribers, inshallah. Sure. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Thank you. Sounds good. And uh, uh, Brother Asif, have you uh, came across my blog yet? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. And I really appreciate all the efforts you have done. Uh, especially uh, that uh, Sir Sayyad uh, Ahmed uh, um, Tafsir, uh, the pages you mentioned, uh, they were eye-opening. You know, um, I know for sure that uh, the uh, the demise of uh, uh, Jesus uh, is not a new um, uh, thing. It, a lot of so this is one my one of my question to all Ahmadi uh, friends and uh, families that you know what is the new thing what is the uh what is one single new thing that mirza ghulam ahmed has presented in islam there is no new thing and and after uh god clearly says al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radaytum radaytu lakum al deen islam islam al deen right so so why is there a need? There is no need. I mean, if you cannot understand la rayba fi hudalil muttaqin, then what can we talk about? You know, like when God simply says that la rayba fi hudalil muttaqin, and uh, I buy, inshallah, I sent you already. Maybe you can put a screen, inshallah. Okay. Inshallah. And uh, um, in the meantime, what do you think about uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed claiming prophethood in a small pamphlet? He sort of slipped it in there, didn't he? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think by look so, at look 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 at the name of the books, Izalai Ohoam, the full yes. Savin, a Galti yeah. Kazala. Throughout his life, he was misunderstanding something, and then he's writing a book to clarify that. Throughout his right. life. Exactly, exactly. That's what that's what happened. You know, like um, uh, he all uh, started defending himself. You know, uh, at a, at a time he just started defending himself uh, with all the prophecies uh, which did not came through. Uh, he just uh, started defending himself. Okay, so can you can you please zoom it a little bit uh, on the bottom? Uh, I'm I'm gonna just uh, try to. Uh, okay, yes. So and that's what he says, uh, and, and and this is funny, you know. This is funny. Uh, uh, it, it, that's okay. Yeah, you uh, you don't need to zoom it. Uh, it's really funny that ye uh, shakhs. Okay, jahil mukhalif meri nisbat ilzam lagate hain ki ye shakhs nabi ya rasool hone ka dawa karta hai. So so to all my Ahmadi friends, he is 
when he says uh, ignorant opponent uh, uh, are just uh, you know blaming him about this claim uh, it does not mean that you are only going to uh, see that opponent are ignorant i would say every person is ignorant who uh, blame him to be a prophet simple as that it's not a rocket science uh, he simply says mujhe aisa koi dawa nahi i don't have any claim of this and then mm-hmm. uh, at the very end i'm going to just uh, uh, go ahead uh, bas jo shakhs mere par shararat se ye ilzam lagata hai jo dawa nabuwat aur risalat ka karte hain uh, and again he is uh, telling uh, that uh, he is a naughty person who uh, blames him about the claim of prophethood and he says wo jhoota aur napak khayal hai means it's a lie and it's an impure uh, thought mujhe buruzi surat ne nabi aur rasul banaya aur isi bina par khuda ne bar bar mera naam nabiullah aur rasulullah rakha magar buruzi surat mein now this now next words are very important these are very important mera nafs darmiyan nahi hai balki muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam hai isi lihaz se mera naam muhammad aur ahmad hua means wherever god has uh, uh, said nabiullah rasulullah it's not for his soul it's for uh, hazur sallallahu alaihi wasallam so it's clearly not him and then he ends uh, the, uh, the this pamphlet saying bas nabuwat aur risalat kisi dusre ke paas nahi gayi so this prophethood and uh, you know uh, risalat Uh, it did not go to anyone else muhammad ki cheez muhammad ke paas rahi alaihi salatu wasalam uh, what belonged to muhammad that was the prophethood remained with muhammad that means prophethood sallallahu alaihi wasalam so it is very clear i really don't understand why ahmadis do not pay attention to this and my only take is islam has Uh, six articles of faith uh the the faith in god almighty allah uh the uh, uh the angels the books the prophets uh the uh, akhira and the uh, taqdeer so mirza ghulam ahmed does not lie in any of these six articles of faith when he is not a prophet then why am i to uh believe in him and believing in masih e maud is not an article of faith even he says uh in um i think azala ham that uh, this is not part of our iman so when i brother, realized brother asif, brother asif the exactly yes. exactly what you said we can say it and for example in this way allah says in the quran regarding the sahaba allah says that fa in amanu bimisli amantum bihi faqad ihtadaw if you believe as the sahaba have believed faqad ihtadaw you have you are upon the guidance you have become guided it, now exactly and no nobody can deny that sahaba did not believe that mirza ghulam was a prophet okay and allah is saying that you the criteria for us people is the iman the faith of the sahaba and nobody can deny that none of the sahabi has any such thing in their faith or belief that mirza ghulam was a prophet the case is closed so if we want to be six, because the ahmadiyya they say the quran is the hakam and adl okay quran will judge between us guess what quran has judged already quran said that you have to have the same belief as belief of the sahaba and none of the sahabi believe that mirza ghulam is a prophet Absolutely. exactly exactly and one more thing uh, before uh, sheikh you you go uh, before i forget it <laughs> uh, allah taala clearly says uh, the definition of muttaqin hudal al muttaqin allatheena yu'minuna bil ghaibi wa yuqimuna salata wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun the next verse is very important wallatheena yu'minuna bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik ilayka means prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so allah has not mentioned what will be revealed after him 
So Muttaqeen's definition means you believe in what was revealed to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and before that, not after that. So if there is any claim of revelation after Prophet Muhammad and people think that uh, I need to believe in that, then you are not even muttaqi because muttaqi's definition is unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik. Sorry, go ahead, Sheikh. You, you, you go and ahead. by the way, Sheikh, just to add, because in the same ayah, Allah says, in order to benefit from the Quran, you have to be a muttaqi. Hudallil muttaqin. This Quran is guidance only for those who are muttaqin, and the muttaqin are those who believe just in these two revelations given to from Salam and given before him. That's it. Exactly. Sheikh, please go ahead. Sheikh, please. I think Sheikh want to say something. No, no, you go ahead. I'm 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 just listening. It's okay. okay. Yeah, also in Surah Al Maidah when uh, Allah says today I've perfected your your deen. I mean this was during the time of the Prophet. So if in Allah had already perfected in Hajjat al Wada. Yes, in, exactly. In Hajjat al Wada. This day I've perfected your deed and completed my favor upon you. And you I know, mean, what does perfection point? mean? Perfection doesn't yeah. mean that he has left out something. It's already perfect. You don't need any extra things to be added. Exactly. To. You, exactly. You know, there, is a story, there is a story behind behind this that uh, a Yahudi came to uh, to Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh, and he said to him, there is a verse in your Quran. Had it been revealed to us, Banu Israel, we would have taken that day as a Eid. Yes. And Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he said to him, I know the verse. I know when it, when it was revealed and when it was revealed. It was revealed on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of Arafah. It was a Friday and he was standing on Arafah. So and then he told, he told him the verse. It's verse number six, I believe, uh, from uh, Surah uh, Al-Ma'idah, if I'm not number mistaken. Three. Five or six. Verse number and three. I am, yeah, exactly. And you know, Sheikh and Brother Asif, something obviously because, uh, you know, in your Jahiliyyah, you've been part of those, you know, streams on their channel. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Allah has guided Alhamdulillah now. May Allah give you. Alhamdulillah. 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 You, you, you know, Asif, Alhamdulillah. I look at this one. Is it not true that Ahmadiyya polemics are that if you say that he was the last prophet, there's no there's no virtue in being a last prophet, right? This is the they tell everybody. You agree with me, brother Asit? Uh, yes, yes, certainly. certainly. Now, now look at this one. Now look at this one. It is Malfuzat Hazrat Masih Maud, basically the saying, the compilation of the sayings of Mirza Ghulam, volume number 10, page number is. 224, 224. Look what he said. He said that in the Quran Sharif, which has been kept in the Quran, has been kept in the Quran, which has been kept in the Quran. He says that in the Quran, the one who is called Khatam al Khulafa, it is the same person who is the promised Messiah. And then he says, is the one who is called Khatam al Khulafa, it is the same person he says that all the prophecies regarding the Khatam al Khulafa or regarding the Messiah, they are about me. And look then what he said. He said that Khalifa kehte hai piche aane wale ko. He said Caliph means the one who comes behind. And then he said, or Kamil wo hai, or Kamil wo hai jo sab se piche aave. He said that the, the most perfect one is, the most perfect one is. The one who comes at the end. Okay. And then he says, or Zahir hai ke jo kareeb, jo, jo kurbe kiamat ke wakit aave ga, wo sab se piche ho ga, lihaza, lihaza, wo hi sab se akmal or afzal ho ga. You mean, uh, Mia Masroor is <laughs> akmal? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Give me a break here. <laughs> no, no, look, look, look at this one. Basically, this ayah, this ayah, uh, sorry, uh, this, this text, Mirza is quoting about himself. And what he's saying is, he's saying that I am the last. And then guess what he said? He said, the one who comes at the last, he is the most perfect. He is the Kamil and he is the more virtuous and he has all the fazila. And all the Ahmadi, uh, the clergy, day in, day out, they are telling their people 
that if you interpret Hataman Nabiyin in the meaning of last prophet, there is no virtue in that. And look at this one. I know. There, there, yeah. there, there is virtue in that, but the only thing is Mirza Ghulam wants to claim that virtue of, about himself. Yes. That's the point. Some year, yeah, Bilkul, uh, you're, you're absolutely correct. You know, like uh, um, I remember <laughs> a few years ago, a couple of years ago, uh, I went through uh, Ansar Raza Sahib's post where he uh, just mentioned that uh, Sunni, uh, they are only here to prove the finality of uh, Prophet. And uh, Shias, they are only uh, trying to uh, prove that uh, Ali is Imam. Um, and, and I was like, uh, uh, what's wrong with that? I mean, after al yawm akmaltu lakum dinakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, what is left? Uh, nothing is left. So when there's nothing left, why are we looking for a prophet? And he was like, no, all of the signs in the world are uh, for a prophet and prophet can come. But, you know, since I have uh, hosted Radio Ahmadiyya Toronto, uh, for a long time, I know what they are coming from. You know where they are coming from. Uh, I know that uh, they say that a prophet can come. However, they have the belief that after Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, there can be no prophet. So that means. Uh, so so I did not try to. Uh, <laughs> ping him uh, two years ago because you know like I was like okay uh, it's a it's a it's a you know like a, a sleeping giant for me uh, and I didn't want to uh, poke it <laughs> but now you know like uh, but, you know by I, the way I, by the way mm -hmm. by the way Ansar mm -hmm. Raza he came on yes. my channel like uh, last week and okay. he made some comments about my videos and live stream. Mm -hmm. I said to him, I said, Ansar Ji, it's okay. I'm very happy you came to engage with me. Whatever you have said in your message, come on any public platform and defend this one. Uh, your voice is broken. Okay. So is now it, is go it, ahead, uh, please. Uh, now no, no, okay come, now? come and defend it uh, after that. Yeah, yeah. I said to him, I said to him that if you, what you said in your comment to object what I'm saying, then you should come on a public platform and defend your statement. And I am 100% sure he can never do that. Because some of the things, Ansar Raza, for example, as everybody knows, he when he went to Ghamdi Sahib, okay? Yes, I have meeting, seen that stream. In, in that meeting, he has dig his grave very deep. And I have taken all the notes from that from that meeting. So whenever he will come on any public platform, I will I will make sure that he learn his lesson. He was lying Cert over there. Certainly, certainly. You know, yes. you know what we need. We need them. I do like these streams, and uh, I would like in a public place. And let's see then. There, no books, nothing, and. Uh, you know, pick something from here, from there, and uh, say this one said, and then once you tackle them, you once you tackle them, oh, it's metaphorically, oh, it's it's out of context. Uh, Subhanallah, that's not that's not an academic way of debating or even of going about something. What is clear is clear. Either you produce something to refute it, or you keep quiet. But don't start beating around the bush and saying no metaphorically, it means like Maqam Ibrahim. No, Maqam Ibrahim is known. You can't say Maqam Ibrahim is saying mm -hmm. absolutely something. Yeah. Maqam Ibrahim When we do the tawaf, the right. best thing to do, you can't pray anywhere the two rak'at. But yes. it is the sunnah if you put the Maqam Ibrahim between you and the Kaaba. Exactly. So, exactly. That's it. Why are you going to start going on about this? Is there another Maqam Ibrahim? Yeah. Sorry, guys, we need to close shortly. So, uh, Brother Asif, uh, really appreciate your contribution to this uh, topic. Yeah. Thank you very much. 
we look forward to seeing you uh, in in the future inshallah and i'm inshallah. sure you, uh, inshallah you inshallah if i have anything new i will definitely join <laughs> yeah yeah please because you're in touch with some really important people <laughs> and before you go just just one thing remember also surah al-nasr allah jalla wa ala says إذا جاء بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفر إنه كان توابا This verse, the, I mean this chapter when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he came to him he knew that his time was up that's it, that he was going to pass away and when he went on the, uh, on the pulpit on the on the minbar on the pulpit and he said everybody were like they didn't the sahaba but except the, the sahaba didn't understand it except abu bakr radiallahu anh, he started crying he knew that the time of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was was at the end and also umar ibn khattab radiallahu anh, he used to take uh, ibn abbas radiallahu anhuma with him and he's to take him to the place, what we call it, to the council of the Badriyin, the yes. Sahaba that attended Badr. And they were ulama, Zubair ibn al-Awwam, and lots of others. And he one day, because they didn't used to like a, a young boy being amongst them. So one day, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu asked them about the tafsir of Ida Jaa Nasrullahi wal Fatih. So everybody was, yeah, so when the conqueror comes, then you make stighfar. So everybody, then he asked uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhuma, he said, what do you say about this? And he said, okay, this is the death of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was announced to him. And Umar ibn Khattab turned around and he said, that's how I understood it. So do you blame me now why I bring him on? And uh, so this chapter can't be defended, cannot be defended, because it says clearly, had it not been finished, the Prophet ﷺ would have been still with us. And remember, the prophets are given the choice before death. The angel of death comes to them and tells them, do you want the dunya or you want the akhirah? They all choose. That's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Aisha al muminin radiallahu anha, she was saying, she could hear him saying, la balir rafiq al-a'la, la balir rafiq al-a'la, la balir rafiq al-a'la, the most high, the most high, the most high. She said, and I knew then that he was going to leave us. So he was given the choice sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he, cho and he has chosen to be with Allah Jalla wa ala. So there is no other thing. They can say east is west and west is east. We're now east where it is and now we're the west where it is. So, uh, uh, you know, Sheikh, I just want to mention one thing before Asif Bhai, you leave. Look, Asif Bhai, look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for a reason. Okay. When you came on this stream today, I want to make uh, one comment. Your voice is very suitable for any of the online, for example, you know, your voice is very crispy voice, mashallah. I would say that before uh, in, in Islam, in Jahiliya, in Jahiliya, you're working, uh, uh, you know, for, for the batil, for the falsehood. I would suggest, my brother, please use your abilities, use your talent, because you have worked in the environment to spread the truth now. There will be a kafara expiation inshallah and inshallah are good for you for the skill of salat and inshallah i would uh, request even hashim by you know uh, if you want to leave your contact with him they, the, the reason is brother the reason is brother wallahi there are many people alhamdulillah alhamdulillah across the globe they are contacting us they have different type of for example some of them they have talent in the in, in the field of media some of them are expert in the uh, in, in web sighting etc Inshallah, with Allah's permission, we are going to, inshallah, have a pool of resources for one purpose. The purpose is we want to defend the honor of our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with all our, our abilities. Because in our Iman, this is the best thing we can do 
with all the talent Allah has given to us, brother. Wallahi. Inshallah, inshallah. I already have. Uh, I already left my phone number for uh, for uh, for other Bashir. Uh, so it's in the chat. Uh, you guys are most welcome to take it. <laughs> Please do and, not uh, think about it. Inshallah. You got yeah. uh, brother Imtiaz's email address here. So yes, I, I can see it. Get in touch with him directly. Okay. Yeah, just, inshallah. just screenshot inshallah. your phone or something. Yeah. In inshallah. All right, and uh, yeah, thank you see, very much. See you inshallah. Inshallah. Salam alaikum warahmatullah. Right, Abdullah, I'm going to bring you in next. So I said that was the last uh, caller, but uh, we had some other people join. So guys, keep it short, please, because we need to really close now. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I've been following this stream for quite a while. I'm an I'm a, 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 a and uh, uh, like my grandfather, he was the Amir for uh, Ahladis Jamaat in Hyderabad, India. And uh, we used to go on morning walks uh, for Fajr namaz. And I used to, uh, he used to tell me a lot about the deen. I used to learn about, a lot about the deen. And, uh, you know, Imtiaz Bhai, you reflect, uh, you know, you have some of his reflection in him. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Yeah, and uh, he did pass. Uh, like, he lived up till 86 years. Alhamdulillah, yeah. he just passed away two months back. And, uh, I mean, I mean, uh, you know, he, 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 like, he was, he used to tell me about Khadiyanis a lot when we used to go to the masjid during uh, the Fajr prayers. And uh, I don't know, he said that there was something like, uh, which was not documented, like Maulana Sanaul Amritsari, he did uh, get hold of uh, Mr. Mirza Ghulam Ahmad Khadiyani in one of the masjids or majlis. And he did, uh, you know, challenge him with Quran, saying that if he is the true prophet, uh, uh, may Allah perish, Maulana Sanaullah Amritsari. And if he is not, may Allah perish, uh, you know, completely destroy uh, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad. And uh, I just want, you know, want to know that if that is true or it's just that, you know, uh, I did read the book of Maulana, uh, Maulana Amritsari. And he just said that there was just, you know, to and fro exchanges of letters. But was this also, you know, uh, did it also happen according to you? Uh, for example, uh, there are two episodes. As I said before, now all the literature of Mirza Ghulam is, is, is with the Jamaat. Okay. They publish it the, the way they want. They change it the way they want. We, nobody has any control on that. So, but I can tell you one thing. Towards the end of his life, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad one-sidedly no Bumahla, no Bumahla, one-sidedly, he made a dua. Okay, and the, 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 the gist of the dua was, he said, Oh Allah, if I am a liar, and Sadaullah Amrab Sari Rahimahullah, if he is on the heart, and I am a liar, then you, then you give me the death with the plague, you know, and then he quoted, you know, Haiza and, and cholera and this and that. And then, by the way, after that, after that, he has published his ilham, his revelation, that his du'a has been accepted. And guess what? Yes, this du'a was accepted. And he did die with this kalra, with this, you know, uh, with this uh, haza, basically. Say, or you can say, is it, uh, is, is it kalra in English or the haza? Yeah, haza? In, yeah in English it's kalra. Yeah. So he, died, yeah. he died with Kalra, and by the way, then the Qadianis, today's Murabbis and Kalarijik, they want to give a spin. They want to confuse this last event of Dua with the earlier event in which there was back and forth between Ghulam Ahmad and Sadaullah Maullah, in which they, they could not agree on that. But these are two separate events. They want to confuse both of them. Yes, in this first episode, they, were, they did not get agree on anything. But the second one was a one-sided dua, which Ghulam Ahmad made about himself. And Allah answered his dua, and he died the death he asked for. Didn't he, didn't he, didn't he kind of uh, advertise the, in, in one of the newspapers yes. or something? Yes, yeah. it, 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 it is published. It, it is published. He published it in one of the newspapers. It is published, yes. It is published. The second one is published, but what, 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 what I want to educate people on, these are two separate episodes. 
there was one back and forth on which they could not agree on mubahala that's a yes. different thing the second thing was a one sided dua mirza made to ask allah rabbana fath bainana wa baina qaumina bil haqq he asked allah for a decision to be made between them and the qaum and allah did make the decision and he died the death the way he uh, asked for and it proved he was a liar exactly بس الحمد لله مستر بشير يو ار دوينغ ا جريت جوب مستر برادر هاشم والله يو نو ذا كامنس ويتش يو اكسبوز يو نو بوت فورورد اند يو نو ديلينغ وذ يو نو ذا خاديانيز اتس الحمد لله يو نو وي نيد تو جيت ذات كاركتر اند اند مولانا ابن هاشم الحمد لله اي يو نو يو جست لوك لايك ماي فادر هي از اولسو متوه الحمد لله هي از ان امام هي واز ان امام ان سعودي اريبيا هي از ان حافظ هي واز ان امام ان سعودي اريبيا right now he is retired uh, but thank you so much uh, brother uh, imtiaz wallahi you know uh, <laughs> you have the shabakhat of my grandfather you know the, the way you explain everything in detail right from you know the scratch alhamdulillah you know uh, uh, may allah you know just uh, br- uh, you know turn the hearts of the khadianis and bring them to the right path amen amen thank you so much jazakallah khairan barakallah feek I, I i think I, i think i'm very old now because <laughs> he called me grandfather i'm <laughs> calling to his grandfather so <laughs> you know for all right assalamu alaikum bro abdullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh all right we got uh, just few more i mean two more i think you guys okay with that guys please make it quick yeah al farooq assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi <laughs> May Allah give you all tawfiq wa mubaraka on everything you are doing. Amen. Uh, Brother Hashim, I have a small atab on you. Atab in, um, how can I say atab in English? A scolded, he wants to scold you. <laughs> يعني, small brother, I love to watch you on uh, Speaker's Corner. Harsh and tough. Here, you're too nice. You're too calm here. <laughs> This sadaq sadaq I got people sleeping in the other room I can't wake them up you know what time it is in the UK it's 1:30 in the night when you come here I find like I guess one my neighbors will wake up <laughs> I I'm used to calm from brother Bashir and brother Amtiaz and akhuna Salih ibn Hazm you I am I love that way you have to go back to that way speaker you have to respect our neighbors remember الله يبارك فيكم الله يبارك الله يجزيك الخير الله يجزيك الخير حبيبنا but one thing i i was watching you in the past a few weeks but one thing that reminded me especially when you were talking especially brother امتياز ما شاء الله and brother بشير how very close this غلام is to sistani when he signed an agreement with the americans on the fatwa Subhanallah, how they've killed millions of Iraqis then, look how many millions they've killed in India and that region, يعني, let's say, with this participation with the British at that time and Sistani and the Shia on, the, on this time here. Subhanallah. They paid يعني, him. They paid him millions. أعطوه ملايين الدولارات, subhanallah. Both, both of them, both of them. يعني, and it's subhanallah, this like that time, very similar. The points that Brother Bashir mentioned about a week ago, uh, Brother Adnan, on how they're allying, how he was allied with the British, telling not to do... Fa- Subhanallah. I will not uh, take more of your time. May Allah thabit kum, ya Rabb, ya Rabb. And anything from my side, inshallah, I'll be in touch more often. I'll be more often in touch. And if there is anything I can do from my side here, inshallah. Brother Mtiaz. بسم الله بسم الله عمر بن الخطاب اي ثينك برادر هاشم اونلي يوزز ات ان ان سندي اي وونت تو تيل يو ذس اي وونت تو تيل يو ذس عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله عنه وارضاه سد اذا ضربت اوجع اوجع اخي ابن حزم اكسبلين اوجع وين يو هيت وين يو هيت ميك ات هارد ميك ات هارد بين العقبه واحده I am used to brother Hashim and brother Mansoor and speaker Skorna I am very happy. 
They hit hard. No, no wonder you call yourself Al Farouk, huh? Keep us in your Brother Bashir, keep doing what you're doing. And inshallah, I will be in touch more with you guys, especially with the brother Hashim later on, inshallah. And brother Muslim. Sorry. Are those your kids, Sheikh? No, 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 no. no. So, oh, it's in Jazz Bay. Okay, no problem. They want, they want to take the dad away from us. They deserve it. <laughs> All right, uh, the straight part. They were, they were, they, 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 they were. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, I hope everyone is well. I just wanted to say, um, I love the fact that you guys keep bringing Bashir on. Um. Bashir, mashallah, is a, a good friend um, and he does excellent work. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to strengthen you brothers um, in your excellent work. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, my family is originally from Pakistan, where we used to live in Karachi. Behind us, the whole neighborhood was all Qadiani. And uh, they used to invite my grandmother over and show her, look, we read the same Quran, we do the same ibadah and everything, and try to convince her that you know they're on the correct path and she should also follow them but my grandmother my nanny she was very strong she's like no no but you guys believe in an additional prophet we don't believe in this additional prophet and uh, even locally some brothers they told me that he used to work in a bank and one guy invited him he was a high level executive to his house he invited him for dinner they had dinner and everything he introduced him to his daughters he said i'm looking to get my daughters married you're a nice young guy you know we're muslim you know and everything right and then a few weeks later, he invited him again and he went over again and he's like, you know, they went over the whole thing and he's like, you know, I just want to let you know one thing, you know, I want you to marry my daughters. You're a good guy. You're educated. You're doing a really good job, but we are Qadiani. So he's like, I never went back to that house ever again. So Bashir knows this. We did a podcast a few times. These tricks that they play, they're, they're used to playing these games. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and save us all and continue um, to strengthen all of you brothers and Bashir. Um, Jazakallah khair. So, what uh, are you? What's your background? You're you're Sunni, Alhamdulillah. Yeah? What is it? Uh, you're you're from a Sunni background, right? Yes, 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 absolutely. Alhamdulillah. What's it called? Um, from absolutely Sunni background. Right. What's your pod, what your podcast is? Uh, what do you normally talk about? We usually just um, I'm based in the US, um, so just talk about topics which people generally are afraid to talk about, um. In the United States, we're not like the UK. We're not. Um, we don't have that same level of rough and tumble, you know, scholarship. So we're sort of behind on that, to be honest with you. So you know, I just sort of keep it open, and answer the questions which people are afraid to answer. So I, I like to bring on shiuch and ulama um, to answer those questions most of the time, and specialists like Bashir when we're talking about Qadianis. Mashallah. What's What's your name? Asad. My actual title and name is Hafiz Asad, but I refer, prefer not to go by that because people, my Syrian brothers and sisters, get scared. Oh, I see. Uh, yeah. It's not only that, he's, he's a Nusayri, you know, even Shia says that they are Kufar. <laughs> <laughs> so, Asad, Asad yeah. is a lion, so yes. you're yes. a lion of Islam, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Yep, and I've, I've known the brother for a few years. We've, we've done a few podcasts and uh, done some pretty good work together. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. No, keep, on keep on the good I work, inshallah. Keep on the good work. Try to include uh, MTS by as well if you guys can. Okay, we yeah, inshallah. To, We're we planning on doing something soon. So, this, uh, so yeah, try to keep in touch with him and uh, include him in your in your inshallah. podcast. Uh, by the way, I think MTS by just needs maybe ten more subscribers to reach a thousand people. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, help him out, inshallah. Yeah? Inshallah, <laughs> when, uh, I'll get his channel from Bashir, and inshallah, we'll work on that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we have got his channel here. If you want, it's called, okay, it's called the dialogue with MTS. Okay, yeah. okay, inshallah. And yeah, those who haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to his channel. Um, he's one of those gems which we haven't actually found the full potential yet. 
Inshallah, Inshallah, we will. Now we know him. Okay, Bashir, boy. Uh, we're going to close now. So, any last words before you guys go? Uh, I'd say my uh, um, last words are, uh, you know, um, learn. Yeah, I wanted to ask you, why did they not turn up today, the missionaries? What did you ask them? <laughs> I, I I think they they they've been getting you know in, in Desi language we'd say the chapel pretty bad uh, you know you know they sure getting, they got more than just a chapel yeah <laughs> and, and and see we we took them out of Isa Islam and prophethood and brought them to colonialism and they all didn't know anything all of a sudden right <laughs> so they they only know a few little arguments that they've memorized if, if you ask them to be open about history and colonialism and all these other parts of Mr. Glamama's life, they're not going to be very happy or be very good at it. So so maybe they've been banned and stopped. You know, they were banned and stopped from Speaker's Corner. And so this was the last thing that we had left. So, you know. You know, Razi is the... We lost it, Ashik. I've been told that he does... Uh, oh, sorry? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. yeah uh, okay. Uh, Razi does uh, does a stream every day, and now he's he's going he's doing a tour uh, around the. Uh, he picks up like he picks up uh, Sheikh Asim, Sheikh Haytham Al Haddad. He keeps mentioning me all the time. Oh, you mean like and a reaction that... video? No, 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 no. He does a stream, but all no, always on the stream he does like a reaction to them. Uh, who? Yeah, um, pretty much, pretty much, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the kind of a thing. So he keeps mentioning, he mentions me, and then his his stream, it's always about the death of Isa. And I'm and I'm sick up to hear. Wallahi, it's uh, that's why I'm going to do a 10 it's, minutes. It's like video. the last straw, the thing they got it? Wallahi, they... I'm going to do a 10 minutes video, 10 minutes video, inshallah. inshallah. But I'm going to go into details with it, yeah? I'll give it to you, inshallah, and you 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 put it both yeah, the brother in tears and uh, on dawa wise, yeah. yeah so that way, these guys they they keep bringing all these things up, but when we invite them and have a proper dialogue, you know, they don't want to do. They go waffling, like uh, Nanbai says, they go all around the world, you know, on a world tour. <laughs> I mean, but that's keep it straight. If you think you got the hack, you know, bring it forward. But that's what I said. It's like it's like as I said, if we take if we take just the language. Just the language, they are finished. Yeah. But someone comes and starts telling me no, but this I think is... they had been finished a long time ago. They are just by hook or by crook trying to but, keep, them, but, keep themselves. But you, know, yeah. but you know what? I ask the the Qadiani community to open their heart <laughs> and their minds and just read subhanallah. It's so straightforward. You look at the life of Mirza Ghulam. Read the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't want you to compare between the two. Please do not compare because the comp there is no comparison. But just read and with open heart and really ask yourself, is this man really should be a prophet? Like Brother Adnan says, he's not even qualified to be a decent man let alone a prophet from Allah Jalla wa ala, that he gets revelation. None of this. And then read the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's like the other day somebody came, oh, but Quraysh said about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his kadab, his sahir, his this. Yeah, but that's, but look before what he, he used to say to him about him, al-Amin, al-Sadiq. None of this. It's only when he said prophethood. But let's look at the character of Mirza Ghulam before the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never ever uttered a vulgar word. Never ever. Look at Mirza Khanazir, Awlad al Bagaya. Even the wife of his brother, he called her Baghi, harlot. Walad al Haram. Yeah, um, and you know what? I have got this. I know they're going to ask for the reference. I have got the reference. I just I haven't got it in front of me. You know that he he said once, and Brother Imtiaz will confirm this, and Brother Bashir, that if he says that he's a Nabi, 
that may Allah Jalla wa ala put his head in the toilet. And on another time, one of his uh, one of his uh, uh, murids, one of his followers, asked him if he can give him allegiance. Bay'a. He said to him, "Do not give me bay'a. For for the one the people that takes allegiance are the ones that clean the toilet." And then what happened? He started taking allegiance. You know certain things about him, and then to say that he is he gets he gets menses and they try to find the metaphoric thing then he says that he is he he, he had labor pains and then they start you know they talked about ibn rumi ibn rumi was a poet he was a, a kind of uh, even it's him he, he was making an analogy he was saying that like there is a isa in every in every muslim just you know in a in a poetic way but uh, ibn rumi when he quoted the verse, he didn't say for and the the, 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 the the labor pain came to him. He quoted the verse that is in Surah Maryam. That's it. Now we're gonna we're going to start and then subhanallah making Allah Jalla wa ala that he, he looks like an octopus. Allah Jalla wa ala looks like an octopus. You know, let people just, yeah, just. I think the more we, the more we dig in, the more it'll get exposed. But uh, our our aim, Sheikh, here is to open the eyes of the people no, who I'm have not, not read his I'm books not. and to I'm show not. him the reality which has been hidden from them. You know, and, you know, we pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah give them hidayah. I mean, I mean, to the I right mean you know, you know, you know, uh, I've sent you uh, actually uh, a, cl uh, a picture of their website uh, on their library. They always tell you, you have to go by the electronic version hmm. because the hard copy version, it's been, uh, it's been uh, examined. It's been kind of uh, re-edited and all these things. And they want you to go to the electronic version why because once you go to the electronic version you'll never find what you what, what you're what you're looking at uh, what you're looking for and this is a big problem so it's only whatever literature we have got from a long time it is subhanallah may allah Okay, when we when we had the steam, Alhamdulillah, uh, my wife and my daughters they were Alhamdulillah trying to you know do some Alhamdulillah khair. So they made these two Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know they, they knew calligraphy. Did they learn calligraphy? No, Alhamdulillah, they're just inshallah trying to learn something, inshallah. Oh, but it's good, it's good. It's so great, Allah. Allah. Mashallah, may Allah give them. Uh, so, uh, brother, Allah, uh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh, Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless you, may Allah reward you for your and time. My brother, and for right. you. Brothers, I'm not just saying this, Alhamdulillah, from the bottom of my heart, I am deeply grateful to the panel of Dawa Wise. I have said in the past as well that no, no, no matter how much research I did. But at the end of the day, Alhamdulillah, Dawa Y is the platform for people like myself and many other people in the past as well. They gave them the opportunity to share that khair with the other people. And I always like to quote the hadith that Man lam nas, lam Allah. If you are not thankful to the people, you can never be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Alhamdulillah, Hashim Bai and all the Dawa Y panel and Shaykh you as well for your guidance. Wallahi brother Bashir as well, inshallah. I am grateful to all of you. And I want to mention on the public platform, Alhamdulillah, I had my reach, but now, because people know we're doing the streams, so now during the stream, sometimes people are sending me the references, okay? So now in this, Alhamdulillah, I'm not by myself. Now the entire team, Alhamdulillah, they are watching the stream, and whenever something comes up, I don't even need to look for the reference. Now, now they send us the references. I want to thank all of those people, especially... One of them is a Zafar Bhai. I want to thank Zafar Bhai as well. Mashallah is a very good brother. They have a WhatsApp group with the very expert people in the field. And uh, Alhamdulillah, you know, Abashir is laughing because he knows them maybe. So, Wallah, you know, all the time, 
wallahi those people mashallah are so dedicated you send them something now within minutes you get the reference that i want on this thing so may allah bless all of them it is not one man show wallahi brothers it is a team work and like i said before alhamdulillah we are alhamdulillah we already started to work on this one to create a global team of dua because we need to understand that which topic we need to discuss with the qadian is what they want is they want to engage all of us on prophethood is continued isa has died etc etc guess what these are not the topics the topics are to be honest i, I i'm sorry i need to use this word the filth the filth which is in the books and i am using the word filth very carefully if any of the murabbis if they think this world is very harsh i have one reference ready okay please invite me i will put the ref on the screen and then i will let the people vote honestly is it filth or not so may allah guide the common ahmadis as we always say we do not we do not promote any kind of disrespect any violence against anybody as an individual or community we all we want alhamdulillah our hearts are filled with the well being of all human being may la guide all the ahmadis even the murabbis as well because we have no animosity against them we have nothing personal against them it is all about the beliefs they are propagating and defending and they are misguiding the common people so may la guide them and after guide us may la keep all of us on a sirat al mustaqim amin ya rabbal alamin amin i mean may allah accept amin. our humble efforts uh, our amin. humble channels and um, all you know i can only say that this uh, team effort which has uh, garnered from this streams alhamdulillah may allah give khair and barakah in that uh, for many many years so amin. yeah i mean um, brothers and ustad uh, mohammed imtiaz there are only seven subscribers required to make it to a thousand so it's, it's gonna, gonna be six effect. inshallah it's gonna be six inshallah <laughs> inshallah <laughs> Only, only six or seven. So please do no, subscribe. No, no. Um, um, uh, uh, count me. It's gonna yeah. be only six. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna be six on your channel. You know, I don't know. You know, not me. Not me. Should, not me. I'm saying. Seven. I'm saying. By the time I, sub I, sub I subscribe to his, it's only. It's only gonna need six. Okay. You know, you know, Sheikh. Why you're have you not subscribed yet? Because I, he, he didn't send me. I, I just. I've just seen it now. <laughs> I've just seen it now, Subhanallah. You need to have a word tomorrow. <laughs> I expected you to be one of the first ones to subscribe. No, he was away. He was away. You know, we didn't speak for a, for a, for a whole week. Yeah, we just spoke yesterday. He didn't speak yeah. to the sheikh. <laughs> no, no, I was only asking by. He was away. He was I away. He was away. Just kidding. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Again, nearly seven hours. We didn't expect that, even without the missionaries. So Jazakallah khair brother Bashir Ustad Imtiaz and Sheikh Ibn Hazm until next time Barakallahu fiik Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Nahmu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar